Hallelujah. Can we please give God a clap of rain all over this place? Can we add a shout of praise in this place? Can we add a shout in this place? Oh, oh, oh. Is this all you can do for God? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Clap your hands, all ye people. Clap your hands, all ye people. Celebrate the Lord. Hallelujah. Pelia, Pelia, Pelia. Let Pelia come on. Pelia is going to lead us in a time of praise. Hallelujah. We want to, we want to sing and dance to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Pelia, please come, come. Let's sing and shake ourselves a little. Let's shake ourselves a little. Still praising the Lord. Still praising the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. God is good. And all the time, God is good. All the time. Are you sure he's why you are here? Are you sure he's the reason? Oh, Pelia, please come. Let's, let's lift him. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Glory, we want to give a great shout unto God one more time. Give it up to Jesus. God is good. We thank God greatly for grace and the strength. So we just want to praise God. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Sing on to say, 
sing on to the Lord. Oh, sing on to the Lord. Oh, sing a holy song. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, sing on to, sing on to the Lord. Yes, sing on to the Lord. Yes, sing a holy song.
It looks like this part of the church is dancing and this part is just singing. No, we don't want to do that. No, 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 no. So we need you. Oh, tell your neighbor, we need you. We need you. We need you. We need you.
Great Jehovah, you are wonderful. I will lift up your name. Great 
Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, what do we say to the man of God? God bless you. Hallelujah. I, I, can, I can see some people are up now. Hallelujah. The Lord is worthy. Praise God. Hallelujah. Please, the car numbers, if you came with this car or you are the owner of it, GS4358-19. And GG1975. Twenty-two. Please attend to your cars right now. The the owners of these cars. Please attend to your cars right now. Hallelujah. We are we are still pressing on. And we are going to enter another session. And I know that we are going to leave this place imparted. We are going to leave this place blessed. Hallelujah. I want to ask that if you are far off, please try to come closer a little so that we can, the man of God can feel us with him. So please, please try to come closer. Let's come closer. We are those who are here. So let's, let's, let's make it count. Hallelujah. Please, please, those at the back, kindly, kindly please come. I'm, I'm, I'm really pleading with you. I know when we come around, many of us have our own sports that we, we, we like, but I, I beg you, uh, sometimes to fulfill all righteousness, you must permit it to be so. Permit it to be so. Please come forward a little for me. Come. So the man of God does not feel we are far off. He has a way of involving you in the service. Kindly, please come forward. If there is a seat in front of you, come. Come and occupy it. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. I'm, I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting. Please come. 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 If there is a seat in front, please come. 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 There, there is no visitor here. There is no visitor here. So don't say that you are a visitor. No. Come. Please come. The, the two sisters, please come. Come. Yes. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. By the time we are through with this session, I know you would say it was good you came forward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can, can we please pray in the Holy Spirit? Please close your eyes. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Tell the Lord to speak a word to you. Tell the Lord to tell you something in this place before you leave. Tell the Lord that you don't want to go back the same. But you want to be brought to the place of his revelation. Please pray to God for understanding. To lay hold of his word. Speak to us Lord. Speak to us Lord. Speak to us Lord. Speak to us Lord. Speak to us again, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Let's receive the man of God, Eli. Eli is coming up. Uh, oh, you, you'll be blessed. You'll be blessed. Put your hands together and receive the man of God. Oh, what a blessing. What a blessing. Still in the spirit, let's just keep praying. Let's just keep praying. Let's just keep praying. I want us to just keep praying. Just, just five minutes. Just keep praying. Stay in that place of prayer. Stay in that place of prayer. I'm about to share certain things with you that might challenge your beliefs on faithfulness. So I just want you to just stay in that place of prayer. Just two more minutes. Just, just be praying that you have that open-mindedness, that readiness to learn. Because sometimes when people are sharing certain things with you that conflict with what you already know or what you believe that you already know, it's very hard for you to accept it. You become like that stony or thorny soil that can receive the seed. 
So just one moment, just pray that, Abba Father, whatever, whatever you have known about faithfulness, the faithfulness of God, whatever you've known about it, that is not true. When you are faced with the truth this morning, may it uproot, may it take away, may it go out and the truth remain in your life. Just 30 seconds more, just 30 seconds more. Stay in that place of prayer, praying for open-mindedness, genuine honesty and curiosity. Come with an expectant heart, ready to receive something from God. Abba Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for everything that you're about to share with us. We know that you are speaking through us. We know that your work is taking hold. So we say thank you, thank you, thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen? Are we here? Amen? amen. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, we can take your seats. You can take your seats. You can take your seats. So, anyway, can you hear me loud and clear? Can you hear me? Awesome. So, my assignment for this morning is very simple. I am going to focus on the fact that God is incapable of lying. And then we'll tie that back to God's faithfulness. And then finally, we'll look at some practical applications to really broaden our awareness of God's faithfulness in our life. Amen? Very good. So our journey will start us from learning that God is incapable of lying. We'll look at that very quickly. Then we'll look at the four motivations for lying. Why generally people lie and why God doesn't have any of these motivations for lying. Then we'll look at the immutability of God, which is simply known as his unchanging nature. We'll just dive a little into that. Then we'll look at eternally consistent, why that is a big deal in terms of God's faithfulness. Then we'll look at aspects of God's faithfulness. So his identity, his holiness, his unchanging love, his justice. All of these things to really drive home that God is consistent. He is consistent and he's consistent. Then we will look at why a lot of people find it difficult to believe that God is faithful. We look at those things. We'll look at a couple of things. Break it down over there. Then finally, we'll talk about the three operating principles of faith. Even though I'm talking about faithfulness, as I said, sometimes we have misconceptions. We might think that is the same thing as faith. But there's a very big difference. But I'll dwell a little bit on faith because it has to link back to faithfulness and how we interact with God. Then we'll do what I call a faithfulness audit. We'll go through the various domains of our life to come to the truth, the reality that God is not that he's about to be faithful. He's already faithful. And when we do that genuine audit in our lives, we realize that mm, God has been faithful. He is faithful and he will continue to be faithful. Amen. Very good. So I'm really looking forward to the faithfulness audit, faithfulness audit. Then I'll just give you one simple assignment. You know me, I like assignments because yeah, it's very important that we apply the things that we learn and then we'll pray. Amen. Are you excited? Are you excited? Very good. So let's start off at the very beginning. Why God can't lie or he's incapable of lying. So I'll just share a short story. So I walk back Three friends decided that they were going to hang out at a new hot shawarma joint that had popped up in their area. Apparently, they served the most expensive and most delicious shawarma that anybody could think of. So these three friends go to this place. It's called Extra Spicy Electrifying Shawarma. My God. So they get in there, and the, the new friend among the three said, you guys, this, this thing better be worth it, because I've not seen a shawarma this expensive. 350 Ghana cities for one shawarma. <laughs> it better be worth it. Other than that, me, I'm not paying. So they bring the shawarma. He unwraps it. He takes a bite. Mmm, this is so good. This is the best shawarma I've ever had in my life. So he, he's like, no, but, but what's in this shawarma? What, what's in the shawarma? And just then the delivery guy is passing by. He says, bro, bro, boss, boss, come, come. I, what, what's in the shawarma? So oh, boss, me, I don't know. Me, I, I just started working. I just delivered the food. Maybe you should ask the waiter who served him. Then he called the waiter. Waiter, sister, sister. But what's in the shawarma? It's, it's so amazing. So me, I'm just a waitress. So I just take the order from the counter and I deliver it. Maybe you should ask the restaurant manager. Should I get him for you? So they call the restaurant manager. He comes, a bit concerned, wondering what's going on. 
So excuse me, uh, gentlemen and ladies, how, how can I help you? I heard you are looking for me. So oh, yeah, yeah, this, this shawarma is, is amazing. It's the, the best I've ever tasted. But what's inside? The restaurant manager, not wanting to look like not, he's not aware of what's going on in his restaurant, starts guessing a couple of ingredients. Oh, I, I think um, there's a bit of tea bread in there, and then there's some tomato paste with some uh, goat meat, and then uh, some contumbre leaves. And then at this point, he realized that, Charlie, and fa, so he says, you know, honestly, I, I really don't know what's inside. Um, let, me, let me get the chef. You know, he's the one who put it all together. Maybe he's the best person to speak to. So they go to the back kitchen and they get the chef. The chef concerned that they have probably found a cockroach leg inside, cautiously approaches them. So, oh, hello, good evening. Um, I heard you are looking for me. Is there anything with, wrong with your meal? He goes, oh, no, 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 no. It's, it's, just, it's the best shawarma I've ever had. I just want to find out what you used to cook it. Well, chef Relief says, oh, <laughs> this shawarma, oh, it's, uh, we use Lebanese bread. We use a bit of, we do our own ketchup. And then we add some mayonnaise with steamed meat, beef, and then some cabbage. You can see that the ingredients he gave is very different from what the restaurant manager gave. Now, what's the moral of this story? Where am I going with this? You realize that the chef is the one who puts everything together. He knows the contents of the shawarma. He knows the ingredients of the shawarma. So he has no reason to give false information. He has no reason to lie. And that's how it is with God. He knows everything because what? He created everything. So nothing passes his gaze. He has no reason to lie. Are you following me? It's a very simple fact, but once you get this, it changes your whole relationship with him when it comes to, is God telling the truth or he's lying? Because once you realize that he knows everything because he created everything. Everything is under his knowledge. Everything is under his purview. Nothing misses his gaze. It's very, very important. Other than that, you really struggle with what it means that God is someone who can't lie. Amen? I hope I didn't make some of you too hungry. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, with that mindset, knowing that God can't lie because he created everything. He's knowledgeable about everything. Then you start to ask yourself, okay, so what happened in the very beginning when it seems like God's plan didn't go as planned? We talk about Adam and Eve. You realize that God had a plan in the form of Jesus. When things were some way on the earth, Noah, God had a plan. Abraham, God had a plan. God always, God always has a plan. And if you look at these scriptures, it should bolster your faith that things don't catch God by surprise. It's not that he's there. It's like, oh, oh, I didn't see this coming. What do I do next? And then he starts figuring out the next step. The book of Psalm 37 verse 23 tells us that the steps of the righteous are ordered by God. And if you take time to really study that verse, the, word, the root word over there means they are predetermined. So it's not like you start walking and then God is trying to plant your, your footsteps as you go. You take a left step and God is like, okay, I didn't see that one coming. Uh, what should I do now? Let me see. I have like three options. Okay, let's pick this one. No, 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 no. Everything is predetermined by God. Amen. 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 Very good. So I just want you to have these things at the back of your mind as we are speaking. Because knowing that God can't lie, because he knows everything, he created everything. That your steps, wherever you are right now, it's not a coincidence that you are here. Everything is predetermined by God. You start to see God's faithfulness in everything and everyone. Amen. Amen. Very good. So now we know that God can't lie. But then sometimes some people might say, okay, Eli, yeah, I get that God created everything. I get that he knows everything. But he can still choose to hide some information from me. Right? So, hiding of information is known as what? Lying. But here are four reasons why God won't lie. And I'm going to tie that to the four motivations for lying. So, there are four reasons why people lie. Whenever you catch yourself lying, just pause and ask yourself, which one am I doing? God, please forgive me. I repent. And then tell the truth. So, the very first one is the fear of consequences. The fear of consequences. So imagine that you have, let's say, a little cousin who is staying with you over the vacation. You tell the little cousin, don't play ball in the hall. Don't play ball in the hall. If you want to play, go outside and play. So you leave for town. You come back and you realize one of the most expensive glass vases in the hall is broken. So you call him. Kojo. Yes. He comes. Who broke this vase? Now he has three options. He can either tell the truth 
that I was playing in the hall with a ball. I hit the glass and it burst on a burst. He can either lie and say, I don't know what happened. I'm now finding it myself just as you. I'm as surprised as you. <laughs> or he can tell a half truth or a half lie that I was playing in the hall. But the ball hits the thing. It didn't break. I checked. It didn't break. And I took the ball and I had to play outside. So there's a bit of truth in there. There's a bit of lie. And why is he doing this? Because he's afraid of the consequences. He doesn't know what will happen. If he tells the truth, whether you're going to give him a good spanking on his, of his life, or you're going to say, next time, play outside, I've told you, and then you let him go scot free. So because of his ignorance of the outcome, he's withholding the truth. So how do we look at this in terms of God? God knows everything. He has nothing to hide. It's not like he's going to say, and, and if, a truth of the matter is, what can you do to God? Yeah, what can you do to God? Just think about it. So he has no motivation to be fearful of the consequences of telling the truth. That hey, if I tell my children this thing, they are going to take this thing and then they are going to do this thing that I didn't expect. No. He doesn't have that fear of consequences. So that's the first motivation. Immediately you see that God is not motivated by that fear of consequences to lie. The second reason is the desire for personal gain. That's the second motivation. Why people lie. The desire for personal gain. Now, you might or might not have experienced this thing in your life where a colleague or you yourself have to add a zero to a, a figure to falsify information. Now, why would somebody do that? Personal gain. They add an extra zero. They can get to pocket some money. They go to the client. They tell the client, this is the invoice that we agreed on. The client pays the money. They pocket some and they move. Once again, everything belongs to God. What can you give him that he doesn't have? Are you seeing why he really doesn't have any motivation to lie? What can you give God that he doesn't have? That's why I like the song that we sang this morning, that everything is him. You see God in everything, and everything is him. So he, he, he owns everything. He has no reason to, to falsify information, to gain anything. The third motivation for lying is protection of self or others. Protection of self or others. Now, you might have an elder sibling or cousin, and it's around 9.30. You see them sneaking out of the house. The plan was not to get caught, but you see them, and they tell you, shh, keep quiet. I'm going for all night. Meanwhile, the way they are dressed, they are not going for all night. And you can see her boyfriend's car parked at the entrance. So she'll tell you, hey, don't tell anybody. Don't tell mommy. When mommy comes, tell her that I've gone for all night. Okay, so you two, when it's your turn, I'll cover up for you. All right? So, yeah. Then you score some points. Does God have to score any points with us? He doesn't need to score any points. He doesn't need any favoritism. He's good all by himself. So that's the third reason. God doesn't need anything from us. He's not trying to protect us or trying to protect himself from the truth. Unlike how our friends and our colleagues will try to let us cover up for them simply to protect them. The fourth motivation for lying, the fourth and final one is manipulation and control. Manipulation and control. Now, sometimes when people are vying for leadership position, they tend to falsify the information change the information because you know that when I tell these people the truth, don't vote for me. They will definitely not vote for me. They'll go and vote for the opposition. But once again, we need to really step back and understand who God is. God is the creator of everything. He's the creator of you and he has your best interest at heart. Why would somebody create something and put things in place, lies, misinformation to destroy the beautiful things that he's created. It doesn't make sense. Imagine that you cook jollof and you put an ingredient in the jollof and that ingredient causes the, jol the jollof to spoil within 30 seconds of taking it off the fire. Would you continue to put that ingredient inside? No. So that ingredient is sin. That's why God has put measures in place to make sure that sin doesn't abound in this world. So coming back to this misinformation and manipulation, God doesn't have to manipulate us because he has your best interest at heart. He genuinely has your best interest at heart. And I know sometimes it's very hard for us to believe because you might be going through something in your life and you are thinking, mm, is this truly the God who loves me, who really has my best interest at heart? 
then why am I going through this episode in my life? But I can guarantee you that all things work for the good of those who he loves. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Very good. So those are the four motivations for lying. And our Abba Father doesn't have those motivations. So immediately, if you've ever thought that, okay, it's true, Eli, I believe you. God knows everything. But he can still hide the truth. It's debunked. Amen? 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 Amen. Very good. So now let's talk about the immutability of God. The immutability of God. Now another term for God is incapable of lying. I'll proof for that, which is very important because we live and die by scripture. Let's turn our Bibles to Malachi 3, 6a. Malachi 3, 6a. And I read, For I am the Lord, I do not change. I am the Lord, I do not change. Then put this one down to Hebrews 13, 8. Hebrews 13, 8. Some of you might be familiar with that. Who knows what it says? Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Then Deuteronomy 7, 9. Deuteronomy 7, 9. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, the faithful God, which keepeth co covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep he, his commandments to a thousand generations. Then please put down 1 Corinthians 1. 1 to 9. 1 Corinthians 1, 1 to 9. God is faithful. God is faithful. By whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his son Jesus Christ, our Lord. And finally, please pen down 2 Timothy 2, 13. So just have these verses run at the back of your mind as we continue on our journey. So 2 Timothy 2, 13. If we believe not, yet he abided faithful. He cannot deny himself. And this is very important. When I get to the latter part, and I'm talking about faith and faithfulness. Faith and faithfulness. That he cannot deny himself. He abided faithful. Now let's switch and talk about eternally consistent. That God is not just consistent within a certain period of his existence. He's eternally consistent. So I need to define what eternally is. Now we usually confuse eternity with everlasting. There's a difference. Eternity or eternal means that he has no beginning and he has no end. Have you got that? He has no beginning and he has no end. Human beings are everlasting. We are not eternal. Everlasting means that you have a beginning but you have no end. Now, when eventually you check out from here, so when your body is separated from your spirit, your spirit is going to be everlasting. It's either going to stay in heaven or in the place where I'm not going to mention because nobody is going there in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Very good. The people who are responding understand the other place. Very good. So eternally consistent means that from his very existence to wherever, which will never end, he has always been the same. He is consistent. It's not like human beings that you meet a friend. And I'm sure most of us have faced this thing before. Maybe you had a friend in JSS who was very calm, very chill, very relaxed. You meet them now after uni and they are very rowdy. They've, they have several piercings and tattoos. They are in gangs. They're like, ah, I never ever thought that this person would become this way. Because the person is not eternally consistent. Or you might have the reverse. You might have somebody who was always causing trouble in school. Punishment. The person is always there. And now you find the person, and the person is the leader of a fellowship. Like, hey. Human beings change. But God is always the same. Amen? So now let's look at the aspects of God. The aspects of God to really understand his faithfulness. So the very first thing that I want us to look at is his name. His name. Usually people don't look at that. We look at all other things, but we don't look at his name. And why is his name important? So now imagine this scenario. You come for a day with him. And then you talk to this lady, maybe for about 45 minutes, 60 minutes. And then before you leave, you say, oh, sorry, I didn't get your name. Um, what's your name? So my name is Sewa. My name is Sewa. So, okay, okay, Sewa. So I'll see you next month, right? Okay, cool. I'll see you next month. Next month comes, you see her. Hey, Sewa, what's up? Sewa, who's Sewa? 
ah, aren't you Sarah? No, I'm, I'm not Sarah. Ah, my last mother, no, I'm Sandra. Sandra, oh, okay, 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 sure. You know, so you start thinking, okay, it's been a month, so, you know, and the S, maybe you got to confuse, okay, Sandra, sorry, okay, then you talk for about maybe 15, 20 minutes, okay, I'm going inside to worship, so I'll, I'll see you around. Then you see her the next day with him, so that's three months. You see her, hey, Sandra, what's up? Sandra, are you, are you talking to me? I say, ah, yeah, aren't, aren't you Sandra? No, I'm, I'm not Sandra. I say, ah, Last, last month I met you and we spoke and you said your, your name is Sandra. I, said, no, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know who you are talking about. Said, okay, so, so what's your name? I'm AC Nam. It's AC Nam. Like, it, they are not even related like S and then Sandra and so like, AC Nam. Are you sure? I said, yeah, I'm sure. My name is AC Nam. Then she takes out her, her, one of her bank cards and you see her full name over there. AC Nam. Mawuto Nyalemegbe. Hey. So before that, you, you, you probably start thinking, no, I think this girl, a couple of screws are loose in her head. <laughs> Glory. But after she showed you the evidence that, oh, no, no, she even shows you her Ghana card. Isinam, Mauto, Nyalemekbe, boldly written over there with her picture. Then you just walk away quietly. You, you'll be wondering, ah, what's going on? Am I okay? I, this is the very same person I met. She told me her name was Sewa. Then maybe I got confused. She told me that her name is Sandra. Now she said her name is Isinam. So the next day with him, so man four, you see her. So no, 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 I don't want to embarrass myself. You let me just pass another way. So that month you ignore her. Then the fifth month, you say, oh, I, I didn't really feel good the last time ignoring her. You know, as children of God, we shouldn't be doing these things. We should, we should, you know, we meet our fellow brethren. Let's approach them and let's talk to them. So cautiously you go. You don't lead with their name this time because you want to be careful. You just go, oh, hello. He says, hey, how are you doing? You talk for about 10 minutes. He says, okay, okay, good. Down. I'm going inside. It's in Nam, right? It's in, uh, who's it's in Nam? So oh, God, come on. I met you last, that's too much. You said your name is it's in Nam. Then all of a sudden, people around start wondering, ah, what's, why is this guy shouting, raising his voice? Ah, you, say, okay, you said your name was it's in Nam. You showed me your Ghana cards and everything. Okay, okay what's your name? You say, my name is Sewa. So come on, seriously. Can't you just make up your mind already? Today you are said, what? Today, in fact, I'm gone. I'm out of here. And then you leave. You see how that little acquaintance you have, the person so frustrating? Simply because their name is changing. Imagine that our God constantly changes his name. Today you come, he is this. Tomorrow he's that. He's, he, it's like you don't even know where to point your prayers to because the address is always changing. But thankfully, that is not the case with our God. Amen? His, his name is consistent. I am. I am. Consistently, you'll find it in scripture. And it's important. Because I'm sure the little drama I've showed you, I've, I've showed you has shown how important that names and maintaining that consistency is very key. Because it can cause so much frustration. So, let's look at this. The authorized King James Version renders Jehovah, which translated the English means I am. In Exodus 6.3, Psalm 83, verse 18. So you can pen this down. You can do your study and see that mm, it's true. We serve a consistent God. Even in his name, he is consistent. Isaiah 12, 2. Isaiah 26, 4. And three times in the compounded form in Genesis 22, 14, Exodus 17, 15, and Judges 6, 24. Now I want to drive, drive home this point again about the, the, the magnitude of a consistency of the name. Now, his name, I am. I should say it one more time, sorry. Okay, let me say it one more time slowly. So, the authorized King James Version renders Jehovah, I am. In Exodus 6.3, Exodus 6.3, Psalm 83, verse 18, Isaiah 12.2, Isaiah 26.4, and three times in the compounded form in Genesis 22, 14, Exodus 17, 15, and Judges 6, 24. Serve a consistent God. Now, one thing that I love about the consistency of God's name is that if you look at Exodus, when God revealed himself to Moses, which probably I think that's where we are most familiar with when God says, I am who I am. 
You fast forward to the book of John, when they were come, they were come to arrest Jesus. And then they came and they said, we are looking for Jesus. He said, who? Jesus of Nazareth. Do you remember his reply? He said, I am he. What happened immediately after that? The people who had come to arrest him fell down as dead. Now, you might quickly just read through and be like, okay, okay, they fell down and then they came back, blah, blah, blah. But I want you to pause for a moment and ask yourself, why should the revelation of somebody's name cause people to pass on or, or fall back as if they were dead? So I was curious. I started to study that scripture. And apparently the original King James translation, the manuscript, doesn't have the he over there. So the he was actually added. So if you look at your Bible, it's, it's italics. That means it was not in the original translation. So what Jesus actually said was, I am. So literally, God manifested in front of them. They couldn't contain the glory. So you can see that the, the, the consistency is amazing. That Jesus truly is God in the, in the form of man. Amen? Amen? So if you've ever had any doubts, just, just go to that scripture. That simply, so it's like simply saying, oh, my name is Eli, and then people pass out. Like, hey, what kind of name is this? What kind of name is this? So our God is consistent even in his name. Now, you might think that, okay, the name is good. I am. But still, I want to stay on that name. I want to stay on that name because his name is not simply a label. But it is an attribute of his self-existence and his unchanging nature. Because if somebody calls you right now and says that, uh, where are you right now? You say, oh, I am at App City. You are at App City presently. Person calls six months later. Oh, where are you right now? I am at App City. 60 years later, I am at App City. 600 years later, I am at App City. That means what? You are not changing your location. You are consistently at the same geographical location. So that means our God's name is bearing true to his consistent, unchanging nature. Has it ever hit you before? If it has not hit you before, I just want you to just dwell on that. That even in his name, it bears true to his unchanging nature. His faith, his unfailing love. His unfailing love. Let's turn our Bibles to Psalm 136 verse 1. God's unfailing love. Psalm 136 verse 1. Very good. One, three, six, three, three. One, three, six. The two is supposed to be a three. Very good. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for his mercy is good, for his mercy endures forever. Not for a thousand years, not two thousand years, but forever. Forever. Let's turn our Bibles to Jeremiah 31, 3. Jeremiah 31, 3. And it's very important that you have these verses top of mind. When I'm getting to the end, I'll, sh I'll share with you why it's important to have these verses top of mind. So simply have them ready. As you are going through life, life will happen. I said what will happen? Life will happen. And you need to have these verses. Other than that, hmm. Jeremiah 31, 3. The Lord has appeared of old to me, saying, yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. Amen? Amen. So consistently from Genesis, we can see that these are the acts of a God who loves his creation, who loves his children, doing everything possible to restore that relationship back to the way it was. If God didn't care about us, he wouldn't come in the form of man to come and die for us, go through all of this pain, shame, and agony just to restore a relationship. True or false? True or false? So constantly you can see that he's making every effort, every effort to get this relationship back. You know, this, 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 this God loves us. It cannot be simply that he wants to just rule over us. It's coming from a place of love. It's coming from a place of love. Now let's look at his consistency in form of his holiness. His holiness. So we are looking at the various aspects of God's character to see that he is consistent. It's not that, oh, his love is consistent at this part, but then all of a sudden it changes. Or his holiness is consistent at, at this portion and then it changes. It's consistent. So with his holiness, let's look at Isaiah 6, 3. 
Isaiah 63. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Consistently drumming home. Not only one holy. Three times. Holy, holy, holy. The Lord of hosts. Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Peter 1.16. Please, I hope we are writing these things down. They are very important. Very, very important. Have these scriptures ready, ready. 1 Peter 1.16. Because it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. Not that I was holy, not that I will be holy, but I am holy. Consistently, he is holy. Amen. Amen. Now let's look at his justice. His justice. So God's justice is seen in his righteous judgment consistently. Through the flood, through Exodus, you see that justice of God taking place. God is not showing favoritism. His justice is consistent. Now, some of you might probably be listening to me and go like, okay, Eli, I've heard everything you've said. It's very exciting. It's very interesting. It's very entertaining. Yeah, thumbs up. You've done well. But I, I still don't buy it. Like, I don't, I, don't, I don't see God's faithfulness. It's very hard for me to grasp it. Good. So we're going to look at one, not one, but I'll share the major reason. Then we'll look at a few reasons why certain people struggle to grasp the fact that God is faithful. And if you are guilty of one or more, repent. So the very major one, the very first major one is this. So let me give an example because I think most of us can relate with this example. Let's say you are praying to God that he helps you pass a paper or to help you do well. And then you've been praying, so God, you are faithful. You said that if anybody lacks wisdom, they should ask you, you give generously without holding back. You told us that in Proverbs 4.13 that, oh, we should always remember what's learned. Our education is our life. Like, you, you've prayed, and then eventually the paper comes, and then you get an F. F for faithfulness. <laughs> and now you're looking at the paper, and then you're looking at yourself. You can bodily see yourself. You are present. You can touch yourself physically. You can see the paper you're holding with the F in red over there. And you start wondering, okay, this person I prayed to, I can't really see him. But me there, I am real. I can touch myself. I can touch this paper. But the one I pray to, I can't see him. So maybe I am the real one. I am the existent one. But maybe this God that I pray to is not the existent one. Are you getting it? So we, we play that thing through our mind very quickly. But sometimes we don't step back to realize that, ah, this is what I just did. I ruled out the existence of God simply because I cannot see him but because I can bodily see myself. But we pray that after today, it will not be your case. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Very good. So let's look at some other reasons why certain people struggle with coming to terms with that God is faithful. And if you find yourself there, just say a short prayer for forgiveness. So the very first one is unanswered prayer. Unanswered prayer. Now sometimes we might go through life, we are praying to God about something that you know, he heals somebody or he comes through in a certain way. But because he doesn't come through in the way that we expected, we say that, oh, God is not faithful. God is not faithful. So the very first corporate is unanswered prayer. But I want to put it to you that God answers prayer. He is the same God. So if, if you are struggling with that, you need to come to terms with the fact that God is consistent. And probably you had a false expectation of what answered prayers looks like. So that's the first thing. The second thing is cultural, religious upbringing. Cultural, religious upbringing. Now sometimes people's upbringing comes from a place where they see God as judge. That's, that's the only way they know God, that God is judge. That if you do bad, God will punish you. You go to hell, you burn forever, you gnash your teeth, you have worms eating you and all of those unpleasant things. That's, that's all they know about God. That's all they know. So they've grown up in that kind of setting and they find it very hard to come to terms with the fact that we serve a loving God. It's like they, don't, they don't see that. All they see is God as judge. They, they, when you say God as far, God as far, God as what? 
they, they, don't, they don't even see that. All they know is God as judge, God as prosecutor. He has a shovel. He's shoveling the, the bad people into hellfire to burn forever. But you need to have that change of mind. Other than that, you will struggle to experience the faithfulness of God. Now, the third thing is misinterpretation of circumstances. Misinterpretation of circumstances. Now, we'll all go through this. Some of you are probably even going through this right now. You're going through a very unpleasant, difficult episode in your life. And you're finding it very hard to see how God's hand is playing in your life. You've been praying. You've been fasting. You've been meditating on the word. You've been fellowshipping. You've been coming for a day with him. You've been, you've been doing all the things that you believe that you should do. Yet, you are in this place of contention. You're in this place of stress. The classic example I can give to you is Job. Job did everything right. In fact, he was even making sacrifices for his children. That's serious. With them. He has overcovered himself now. He has so much that he's covering his children just in case his children sinned. Yet see what happened to him. But we know what was going on in the background. So you can see that as a Christian, you have to genuinely believe that you are on a path that God has predetermined for me like we spoke in the beginning. And that everything is happening for your good. Amen. 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 Very good. I hope you are unwinding certain things. The fourth reason why people struggle to come to terms with God's faithfulness is intellectual doubt. Intellectual doubt. Now, unfortunately or unfortunately, some of us educated people, we get to the point where we figure God out of existence. We think that we have become too smart. We put two and two together. We say that, ah, that's the reason why he doesn't exist. I figured it out. Nobody has figured it out. I think I should write a book and publish my ideas. No. Never get to that point where you think you've got so smart. You've become so intelligent, so knowledgeable that God doesn't exist. That's why sometimes it's easier for people who are not educated, sorry to say, to just take God as, as he is, at his word. So please, if you find yourself putting your philosophical ideas together, ruling out the existence of God, I want you to come to terms with the fact that, see, people have done this for centuries. Atheists have written books. They've written books to prove the, 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 the absence of God. But time and time again, our God has proved his existence. He has proved his faithfulness. He has proved that he's working through everything. Amen. 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 The fifth thing is comparison with human relationship. Comparison with human relationship. And this is a very tricky one. And I think we all fall into it. Now, when we are all growing up, the very first people we come into contact is usually our parents or our siblings. Now, sometimes our parents want us to do certain things. And now, since by the grace of God, I'm a father, I have to also be very careful about this thing. You try to portray yourself as all-knowing so that you get them to do the thing you told them to do. Because if they do not see you as all-knowing, as the final authority, then they will rebel. So from the very infancy, your kids start to see you, in quotes, as God. That this is the person who knows everything. Because he's, he or she is physically bigger than me. They seem to know the answers to almost every question I ask. They are the ones who feed me, who clothe me. So they, they, yeah, maybe they are God. But then eventually you get to a point in your, your adulthood. And you realize that that's why a lot of teenagers are leaving the church. Where they start to ask tough questions that these adults themselves have asked but never got the answer to. So what they tell the children is they keep quiet, sit down, and then go to your Sunday school. And then these kids have this question, and they are wrestling with it. Eventually, when they become so rebellious, then they tear chain and they leave. So you realize that from the infancy, we start to compare our relationships with God with our human relations. And it becomes like an example. But our relationship with God and human beings is very different. So you realize certain people even struggle to see God as father because their relationship with their father has been very poor. Maybe some of them never even had a father. Maybe their father disowned them. Never, they, never, they, they don't even have a picture of him because their mother got pregnant and the father said, it wasn't me. So they don't even know what father is. Are you getting me? That's right. Are you sure you're following? That's right. Are we here? If you're here, let me see your hands up. Immediately I'll catch the people who are sleeping. Okay, so there's slow people who are the ones who are sleeping. So that's the fifth thing, comparison with human relationships. So I want you to ask yourself, have you ever gotten to the place where you are struggling with a certain issue with God 
simply because you are comparing it with a human relationship. I want you to do that. I realize that our God is not a human being. Our God is not a human being. So if you have struggled with the faithfulness of God because you've been comparing him to a human being, please, today is your last day. Amen? Amen. The sixth thing, so there are seven things I'm sharing with you. So the sixth thing is lack of spiritual nature. Lack of spiritual nature. Now, sometimes some people get born again and they've not read their Bible. They've not prayed. They've not meditated on the word. And then they want to part the Red Sea. <laughs> they've not taken time to grow up in Christ. So they try and part the Red Sea. It's not parting it. So then God doesn't exist. <laughs> Why is it so amusing? You know, they try and do something radical that our fathers of faith who have worked with God for several decades were able to do and then they don't do that and they say, oh, then God doesn't exist. But you've not taken time to realize that it is a journey. It's a process. It's a process of pruning that God has to take you through before you can start to command certain things to be and then they start to be. So if you are a Christian, you are, you are new in the faith and then there are certain expectations that you are having, you need to pause and ask yourself, have you taken time to grow as a Christian? Have you taken time to really study your word? What does God say about this thing that you are causing to manifest, but it's not happening? What has he really said about it? Then the seventh and final thing is spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare. That sometimes, truly, some brothers and sisters over here might have certain people in their families or friends or settings who are actively working against them. Actively. The, the little uprising they have, they want to take them down. The little success they have, they want to take away their shine. And it comes from a place of envy. Place of envy, which is very sad. That's a topic for another day. But then, I just want to come to that place that no, no amount of spiritual warfare should shake your understanding and your place of God's faithfulness. No, no witch, no wizard can shake God's faithfulness in you. Amen? 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 So now let's look at our faith and God's faithfulness. Our faith and God's faithfulness. So, hearing about God's faithfulness, and I'm sure many, no, I'm sure, in fact, many amazing ministers and women of God will take this stage and delve deeper into the faithfulness of God. Now, some of you might be thinking, okay, that's good. That's interesting. That's nice. The Greek and Hebrew origin translations, wow. But still, I don't know if I can partake of this faithfulness of God. Now, it's like you saying that there's a party going on. You've heard that they're playing loud music. You see people holding takeaway packs. They're putting thank you on it. And they're enjoying themselves. But you're standing at a distance. And you're not partaking of it. And you're still feeling angry. That why is it that I'm not getting takeaway pack? But you're not going there. So that's how it is. You are here about God's faithfulness. But you're not putting yourself in a place to partake of it. Are you following me? Very good. So I just want to talk very quickly about faith. Quickly about faith. But our, our topic is not about faith. It's about faithfulness. But I just want to talk quickly about faith to just join some two things together with God's faithfulness. So there are three operating principles of faith when it comes to faith. Three operating principles. Now the very first one is that faith is based on an object. So faith depends on its object. Now here's the thing. Breaking news. You can't have more faith in faith. I'll say that two more times. You can't have more faith in faith. I'll give an example to explain. Now imagine that you have two relatives. You have an auntie and you have an uncle. Every year, the uncle will say, oh, you're going to school, right? Semester is starting. Send me your account number. I'll pay your school fees for you. I'll sort you out. The time comes... You send the account number. Hello, uncle. Uh, please, you said I said I said the account number. I've sent it. Oh, okay. okay. I, I'll pay. I'll, I'll put two and two together, and then I'll sort you out. Two days pass by. Bang. One week. Bang. End of semester. Nothing. He's been doing this thing for the last five years. Every time he sees you, hey, how are you doing? You're still in school. How's school going? Oh, okay, 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 okay. Send me your account number. I'll sort out your school fees for you. Eh? Last five. He's been doing this thing. Now you have an auntie. 
Dante sees, oh, how are you doing? Oh, school, oh, that's wonderful. You know something? Send me your account number. I'll pay half of your school fees for you. And truly, truly, when you send the account number, in less than 24 hours, bang, bang, alert, she has paid half. Consistently, she's been doing this for the last five years. Now, last year, 31st night, you went for family reunion. And you saw the two of them. You went to greet them. So, oh, hello, how are you doing? Say, hey, you have grown big, oh. How are you doing? So, oh, I'm wonderful, uncle. So, ah, you're still in school, right? Oh, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm going to my final year. Oh, good. You know, send me your account number. I'll pay the school fees for you. He said, okay, sure, I, I'll send it to you. Then you move, you go and greet the auntie. Say, hey, how you doing? Oh, you're looking, you're looking amazing. School is doing, it looks good on you. So send me your account number, I'll pay half of the school fees for you. Now, of these two, who do you believe will pay the school fees this time around in 2024? The auntie. Why? Because she has consistently shown that she's reliable. So now you realize that your faith is not the, if you can't have more faith in the uncle, it won't change whether he'll pay or not. Are you realizing it? But the auntie will pay because she is faithful to her word. So now you understand why you can't have more faith in faith. You can only have faith in an object or somebody. So now the question is that, who is your faith in? Because everybody on the surface of the earth has faith. Everybody. Everybody believes in something. And based on their belief, they behave in a certain way which produces certain results. Are you following me? Do you get it? Very good. So the very first thing is that, what, what, what is your faith based on? Or who is your faith, your faith based in? The second operating principle of faith is the measure of faith. The measure of faith. Now, certain Christians might think that they were trusting God to be faithful in a certain prayer point, And he failed. So God is insufficient or he's not faithful. But I want to put it to you that in order to, for you to get more faith, you need to know more of God. Simple as that. Your faith is dependent on your knowledge of God. We've already established that your faith is dependent on an object or somebody. So if you are struggling with your understanding of faithfulness of God, check your Bible study plan. Check it. When was the last time you actually blocked out a month to study about faith? When was the last time that you looked in Hebrews, the hall of faith, to look at these men and women of God who walked faithfully with God? When was the last time you did that? So now you are, you are disturbing God. God, why are you not coming through on this thing? You don't understand God. You don't understand his word. So it's like forcing the uncle to say that, oh, I want you to pay this semester and next semester. Hey, the uncle already is not paying one semester. I see that you want him to pay two semesters. So your faith is based on your measure of faith. Now there's something very important that I want to highlight here. If you don't take anything away from my talk today, I want you to take this thing away. It might come as a shock to some of you. But God is under no obligation to humankind. He's only under obligation to what he has said. His covenant and his promises. I know it didn't sit well with some of you. So I'll say that one more time. God is under no obligation to humankind. He's only under obligation to what he has said his promises and his covenant, what he will do. Did we get that? Did we get that? Wonderful. And the last thing is that faith is an action word. Faith is an action word. So short story. Somewhere last year, I was having a discussion with my lovely wife. And then she was like, Eli, you know, a lot of prophecies have been said about you traveling and training thousands and thousands of people of all over the world. But you don't have a passport. I was like, eh, that's true. I don't have a passport. So if right now an opportunity comes and I can't travel, I said that God has not been faithful. But I realized that there was an action that I had to take. So immediately I advised myself, wisdom will tell you to apply. So I applied for a passport. <laughs> And then this, this year, February, uh, January, I went for the, the interview process. Just aside, but it was an interesting discussion. I got there, and the gentleman didn't want to believe that I, don't, I didn't have a passport. I said, well, I don't have a passport. 
So you, you speak so well. You speak so eloquently. I, I couldn't believe you, do, you don't have a passport. I said, I don't, I don't have a passport. I said, are you sure? I said, yes, I, I get that a lot that I speak well. He was looking straight into my eyes. I said, hey. <laughs> I, I said, I don't have a passport. He said, okay. And then he stamped my thing and we moved on. So the whole story is that faith is an action word. Faith is an action word. So my same lovely wife told me that when Joseph was called to interpret the dream of Pharaoh, immediately Pharaoh took action. He didn't say, oh, okay, that's, that's, that's a nice dream. Okay, you let's wait more and let's see how things will. Immediately he took action. So faith is action. So if certain prophecies have been said about your life, God has placed certain things on your heart that he said he will come through in your life in a certain way. Know that there might be some action required of you to take. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Very good. So I'll do a quick recap, and then we'll do the faithfulness audit. We'll pray, and then we'll wrap up. So we talked about God being incapable of lying because he knows everything. He knows everything because he created everything. So nothing misses his gaze. Then we moved on to talk about the four motivations behind the lie. That people lie because they are afraid of the consequences. People lie because they desire for a personal gain. People lie because they are trying to protect themselves or others. People like to manipulate people because they know when they tell them the truth, they'll behave in a certain way. However, our God has none of these motivations. Zero. He's not motivated to do any of these things. Then we talked about the immutability of God. That means the unchanging nature of God. Then we move to talk about he's eternally consistent. So it's not that he's unchanging within a certain period. He's eternally consistent. From his very beginning to whenever we've known him, He's eternally consistent. Then we looked at the aspects of God's character to prove his consistency. We looked at his holiness. We looked at his justice. We looked at his unfailing love. And then we dwelt a lot on his name. His name. Then we moved on to talk about why a lot of people struggle to come to terms with the fact that God is indeed faithful. And that is because they can, present, they can see themselves presently, bodily. So they think that, oh, they are robot. God isn't real. Then we moved on to talk about why sometimes unanswered prayer, cultural, religious upbringing, misinterpretation of circumstances, intellectual doubts, we become too smart for God, we compare our relationship with God and other people, lack of spiritual nature and spiritual warfare causes us not to believe that our God is indeed faithful. Then we looked at the three operating principles of faith, that faith is based on an object, that your measure of faith is based on how much of God you know, and that faith is an action. So now, we're going to stand up for just 30 seconds because we're about to do a bit of an action exercise. So can we please just stand up just for a few, few seconds? Humbly, please respectfully stand up. Thank you so much. You can stretch a bit. Let certain bones shift to certain locations. Very good, very good. So the action exercise involves our fingers, a pen, and then a, a notebook. We'll be writing down a few things. So let's humbly take our seats. Open our notebooks and let's do this exercise very quickly. Now, I want to put it to you that it's not that God is now about to be faithful. I'll take my time and say this because it's very important. I want to put it to you that it's not that in 2024, now God is about to be faithful. He has always been faithful. He is faithful and he will always be faithful. But a lot of us are, are struggling with that. So the purpose of this exercise is to heighten our awareness of God's faithfulness in our life all the way to this present moment where we are. So we're going to go through the various domains of our life. The three major domains of our life. We'll go through very quickly. And for each one of them, I want you to just write down one thing. One thing, just one thing. That you see that, mm, definitely, this is the hand of God in my life. He has been faithful in this thing. At the end of this exercise, it will be very hard for you to see that God is not faithful. Do you know why? Because the thing you are writing, you were there when it happened. I was not there when it happened. You were the witness, first witness, when that thing happened. So for you to say that God is not faithful, is to say that that thing, you were not there. It was recorded and it was played for you. So I go to do that very quickly. I'll give a few examples here and there to guide us. So the very first thing is 
our spiritual growth. Our spiritual growth. Our spiritual growth. So, sometimes people call me a software pastor and I laugh in my head. Because I know where I'm coming from. Let me put things in context for you. So, back in university, for the whole semester, I'll probably go to church maybe three times. And at that, that one point was at camp point. And it was because... You know this thing where the whole school, I think they meet, I think at our time they called it uh, is it SCC or so, in tech, university, uh, they call it SCC, so that everybody meets. It's not non denominational that, So that's when I'll go, because all my roommates are going. I don't feel left out, so I'll join them. So to see God's faithfulness in my life, to see where he has brought me in terms of my spiritual growth, sometimes it brings me to tears. So I want you to write down, maybe it's your Bible study, you used to struggle to to, to study. Maybe you even struggle to pray. Or your consistency in church it was lacking. I just want you to pen down how far God has brought you. That some years back you told God, God, I want to grow. I don't know how. But you said that if we come to you, you are faithful and just and you would help us grow. I want you to pen it down. Just 30 seconds real quick. Please do this exercise. It will really help you. It will really help you. Cast your mind back five years ago, seven years ago. Where were you spiritually? Now look at where you are. Hallelujah. Now the second one, very quickly, your health. Now some of you might have gone through an episode of a very health, maybe a health scare, a health challenge. You were this close to checking out. By the grace of God, you are still here. Yes, you might still bear some one or two scars here and there, but by the grace of God, you are still here. You are praying to God for healing. You are praying to God for God to take you out of this thing. And he did. Maybe it took time. It took longer than you expected. So all of a sudden, you've ruled out God's faithfulness. Cast your mind back. Malaria, malaria that we talk about, it has taken some people it has taken some people. So don't take it for granted. You prayed when you were sick that, God, you said, you said by, by, by the, the stripes of Christ we are healed. Please give me healing. In Jesus' name, amen. It took longer than you expected, but you are healed now. Don't rule out God's faithfulness. Don't rule out God's faithfulness. So please do that for me. Very quickly, 30 seconds. We'll be hard pressed to find somebody here who has never fallen sick before. So please, everybody should do this exercise. Hallelujah. The third thing, very quickly, our emotional maturity. Our emotional maturity. Now, some years back, I used to really struggle with anger. You might see me very calm and chill now, but I used to get into a lot of fights back in junior high school because I had a serious anger issue. And I prayed to God about it. I said, God, this thing, I don't like it. I don't, because... The thing I don't like, actually, is that I have to go back and apologize. And that's the part I don't like. So I said, in order to avoid apologizing, let me get some restraint on my anger. So I said, God, please help me. Like, I don't like this thing where the least thing, then I just lose it. And the next thing you know, no, hey, fight, 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 fight. And the teacher comes, hey, where are the poor fighting? Eli, and then Kweku, come, kneel down. Then after 30 minutes, pa, 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 pa. Then I'm, I'm, I'm bored the whole day. So God has been good. The same thing. Look at your life. Maybe you worry, used to worry a lot. You used to be anxious a lot. Maybe you also had anger issues. Maybe you found it very difficult to have joy and peace in your life. And you prayed about it. Maybe just once. Maybe some three, four years ago. And now you are living that prayer. Cast your mind back. God is faithful. Please write it down. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. The fourth thing, academics. Academics. I think from the look of things, most of us are still in school or most of us have recently left school. Academics. So, this might be hard for some of you to believe, those of you who know me. But I actually barely made it to senior high school. Yes. Somebody has opened her mouth. Please close it before a house fly enters. That's because I performed very poorly in my BEC. But by the grace of God, some of you who know me now say, oh, this guy is a smart guy, intelligent guy, sharp dude. Yes, it's the grace of God. It's faithfulness. And I'm very thankful to that. So, the same thing for you. Maybe you were praying to God for something. Yes, maybe that, that semester your GPA didn't go as high as you did. But that paper that you thought you'd get an F, you got a C. God has been faithful. Please pen it down. Pen it down. Write it down. Let's not take these things for granted. Sometimes time makes us forget. It's the one of God, Christiana was sharing about ingratitude. Ingratitude. Like God has been faithful, but some of us are like, oh, no. What you're saying, I can't relate. But God has been faithful. Sometimes all you need is just 30 minutes. Cast your mind back. Hallelujah. Very good. Now let's move on to the next domain. Talking about relationship. Relationships. So somewhere in 2014, I went to get my heart broken. Hey. And I genuinely believe that I will not find love again. I didn't want to move out of my room. I didn't want to do anything. My roommates were laughing at me, but they didn't know what I was going through. But God being so good, here I am today. Married to a lovely wife. God is faithful. So yes, you might not be married yet. But then you might have gone through a very nasty breakup. And you thought that that pain, you would never heal from it. It's been so long. You realize that now you see the person. And okay, God has been faithful. God has been. People, people have had hard breaks and they've taken their life. So please don't take it for granted. People have had hard breaks and they've never ever attempted to go into a relationship before. People have had hard breaks and because of that, they've decided to roll with the same sex. Because they've realized that, oh, this other gender, they will break my heart consistently. After these people, I know my people, so I'm going to move with them. So please pen it down. God has been faithful. Maybe you've never gone out before. Maybe you've never been in a relationship. But the faithfulness of God will show. Amen? Maybe you are trusting in God for marriage. The faithfulness of God will show. Amen? So please pen it down. Pen it down. Hallelujah. Hey, now I have a smiling so much. Uh, you, you went down some memory lanes, eh? It's good. Glory. The next thing I want us to pray for is parenting, our relationship with our parents. So I used to get into trouble a lot when I was young because I was stubborn. I, I didn't understand why certain rules were there. I wanted to go out when I wanted to go out, come back whenever I wanted to come out. And I realized that it was causing a lot of friction at home because my two siblings ahead of me, they, it's like they are angels. So the least thing you do, you are the, you are the, black, the black child. And I got to that point and said, oh God, I don't like this thing. I don't like where it's like every day, back and forth, every day shouting, it's like every day tension. I don't like this. I just want to be at peace with my parents. And thankfully to God, I am at that place now. So sometimes it, 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 it amazes me when my dad comes to me and he's, he wants advice on something. And I just pause and say, hey, me, pa." That he's asking for advice on what to do now. I was the one that was rebellious, who, who, who didn't want to conform, who was always like, sometimes I felt like, <laughs> sometimes I felt like I was adopted, honestly. And my two siblings used to play that trick on me too. They used to tell me that I was adopted. But I, the baby pictures are there. I know I was not adopted. So I just want you to pen that down. Maybe you are in a place where you're having a difficult relationship with your parents. 
And maybe things have gotten better. They are not there yet. It's not all rainbows and sunshine and unicorns and candy. But it's better. You prayed about this thing that, I don't like this tension at home. God, please help me. Help me to come to some form of peace in this household. Please pen it down. Please pen it down. Maybe you're not there yet, but I still want you to pen it down as if it will happen. Because it will happen. Why? Because God is faithful. Because God is faithful. Because what? Because what? God is faithful. Amen. Please pen it down. Pen it down. Your relationship with your parents. Your relationship with your parents. Next, friendship. Friendship. Now, some of you might have been at a place where you woke up one morning or in the evening and said, I don't think I have friends. I don't think I have friends. You felt very alone. You felt very lonely. And you said, God, if you even bring me one friend, just one person, I'll be grateful. You prayed about that thing two, three years ago. Now you probably have five very close friends and you don't realize it. I want you to cast your mind back. Give God some gratitude and just pen it down that God, I'm thankful. That you might even have just one friend, that one friend you prayed for, but at least you know you have a friend. You know you have a friend. Don't take it lightly. Don't take it lightly. You know, apparently in, in, in prison, right, the hardest punishment they can give somebody, do you know what it is? It's called solitary confinement. They will separate you from everybody in the general population of the cells and they will put you in a separate room. It's the most torturous form of punishment, cutting you off from civilization and humanity. It's not a joke. You don't see anybody. When it's time for you to eat, they'll open a shutter, they'll throw your food in, they'll close it. When it's time for them to take your loo, they'll open another shutter, the bucket, you throw it, and they close it. It does something to people. So please, let's not take it for granted. You might have friends, so you don't, you don't know how it feels like not to have friends. Please pen it down and just be thankful to God for that. God is faithful. God is faithful. Hallelujah. The Lord. All right, we are wrapping up. We're wrapping up. We're wrapping up. Next, career. Career or career. Work. You might have been praying to God for work in a certain place. You've not gotten there yet. But you have work. You know there's some people who don't have work. Or maybe you don't even have work yet. But you're still able to take care of yourself. God is faithful. Don't take these things for granted, please. Pen it down. Wherever you are in your career, in your terms of work, pen down something to be grateful for. Pen down something. Don't say that, oh, I don't see how God has come through in my career. It's a fat lie. Please write down something. Write down something. Write down something. Maybe you've even gotten a promotion, but the promotion delayed. So you don't think it was the hand of God. Please, it was the hand of God. God is faithful. Pen it down. Hallelujah. Praise God. So I'm going to move on to another interesting one, which I'm sure most of you have not thought of. But once again, as I said, God has been faithful in certain areas of our life that we've not given him credit. Our hobbies. Our hobbies. You might be thinking, ah, Eli, what, what hobby? Most of us, when we were young, and they asked us, what is your talent? What is your gift? What is your hobby? He said, I don't know. 
But you don't realize that because of that singing that you sing, that drawing, that cooking, that gardening, whatever thing that you do that helps you to relax, because of that thing, you don't end up going to do drugs like other people. Because certain people have resorted to see that I don't have anything that helps relax me, so I'm going to do drugs. I'm going to drink alcohol. That is how I, I wind down. And we take for granted that God has given us a hobby or a gift, a talent, whether it's cooking or singing or dancing, something that doesn't end up destroying us. And we take it for granted. I, I can see the look of surprise on your face. Most of you didn't realize it. You didn't realize it. But God gives us these things to help us relax and wind up. Because sometimes we are always running, we are always tensed up. And because of that, you realize that the least thing, they become provocated. God gave us these things to help us wind down. Because if you look at nature, nothing is consistently at a high or at a low. The sun comes up and it goes down. Your heart, the valves close and they open. It gives you life. The waves, they come close to the tide and they go back. You look at nature, you consistently see that things go up and they come down. So if you're a human being, you are constantly up, you break down. Or you are constantly down, you break down or go further down. So let's write these things down. Don't take it for granted. The hobbies and the gifts and the talents that God has given to you. You sing in the shower for five minutes, it helps you calm down. You just take it for granted. Please spend it down. God is faithful. God is faithful. He's giving you a healthy outlet to discharge stress. A healthy outlet to discharge stress. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then finally, the big one, money. <laughs> finances. I don't know where you are in your finances right now. I don't know where you are with your money situation. But I can guarantee you that God is faithful. You cast your mind back, you will find out that God is faithful. God is faithful. Write down something about your finances, about your money. God is faithful. You've been praying for a breakthrough. Maybe some money came. It was not the exact amount you wanted. But money has come. Please write it down. God is faithful. You prayed about this thing. Somebody paid your school fees. You don't know who the person was. You gave one testimony in church and you've completely forgotten about it. Please write it down. God is faithful. God is faithful. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Very good. So that brings us to the end of our little discussion. We are not done yet. Hey, relax. We are come to pray about the things that we've written down. Commit it into the hands of God. So today I'm not asking you to do seven things or five things or even three things. I'm asking you to just do one thing. Just one thing. At the end of every day, I just want you to write down one thing before you go to bed. Just write down one thing that you are thankful to God for that happened that day. Just one thing. Just write it down. Trust me, it will change your... <laughs> it's amazing. It's an exercise that my wife and I used to do and I told her that we have to bring it back. Because what it does is that because you know that at the end of the day you have to write down one thing that you are thankful for Throughout the whole day, you are constantly on the lookout for things to be thankful for. You are constantly in a, in a mode of gratitude. It's a beautiful place to be. Trust me. You can just try it for one month. Just try it for one month. Just tell yourself that at the end of the day, I'm writing one thing I'm thankful to God for. So in the morning, you wake up, you are constantly looking out for it. It could be that the mate didn't cheat you. He gave you a 50 pesos change. Yeah, write it down. Thankful to God for that. It could be that the car that you got out from Immediately you left, you saw it hit another car. You were sitting at that place. 
just, just have that heighten your awareness to the faithfulness of God constantly happening in your life. So that's the one thing I'm asking you for. Can we all do that? Right. Can we all do that? Right. Just one thing. Just one thing. Even if you are going to give up, you give up after one month. Just write down one thing that you are thankful to God's faithfulness that has happened to you in that day. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. So I want to wrap up with this last quote that I want us to dwell on and then we'll pray. And that is that the revelation of truth, it doesn't lead to transformation. The revelation of truth doesn't lead to transformation. But it is the repetition and the application of the truth that leads to transformation. So I'll say it one more time. I'll give an example and it will enter into a, 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 a time of prayer. It is not the revelation of truth that leads to transformation. But it is the repetition and the application of that truth that leads to transformation. So, example, somebody might go to the hospital and be diagnosed with a disease. They've revealed to that person that this is your ailment. If you don't start jogging 10 minutes every day, three times a week, next year by this time, you'll not be here with us. They've revealed that truth to the person. The person knows that truth. But until the person starts to repeat that truth and take action on that truth and starts exercising, it will not lead to the transformation of that person. Are you getting me? Yes, so they will reveal to you the truth that this is where your cholesterol is. This is where your blood sugar is. These are the things you need to do. This is the truth. But until you start repeating the truth that hey, it's true, if I don't cut down on sugar, if I don't cut down on salt, if I don't stop eating junk food, this thing will happen to me. Therefore, I'm not going to eat this thing. You realize that your behavior does not transform. So all the things that I have shared with you today, all the things that I have shared with you today, if you don't consistently repeat them and apply the truth you've gotten from them, it won't have any effect in your life. It won't have any effect in your life. Amen? So are we going to pledge to put measures in place to repeat these truths that we've learned today? Can I see your hand up for those who are going to do that? If it's that, you're going to set a reminder on your phone that every evening, one thing, you write it down. Just repeat these truths in your life. Soon it will be so hard for the enemy to come into your life and tell you that you don't amount to anything. It will be so hard for the enemy to come to and tell you that God is not faithful. Because you've repeated several times in your life that God is faithful. God is faithful. So you're going through life and something is trying to shake you. You've already repeated three times, five times, ten times in the day before that thing is coming that God is faithful. It will be very hard for that thing to shake you. Are you following me? That's right. But if the whole day you've been in a state of anxiety and now something happens, you're like, ah, that is it. Then your vim is gone. And it's so amazing that, do you know the most highlighted verse in the Bible? Philippians 4, 3. Do not be anxious about anything. That's the most highlighted verse in the Bible. It tells you of the state of Christians. And they're constantly in a, in a place of anxiety. So please, let's rise up on our feet. Let's rise up on our feet. And let's pray. We've heard about God's faithfulness. We've heard about God's faithfulness. We know his faithfulness exists. We know it. It's not that he's now about to be faithful. So we are praying for that awareness, that, that, that broadening of awareness that God, I, I, I know your faithfulness exists and I want to embrace it. I want to embrace it. I want to embrace it. Let's pray. Let's pray, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. Kasha i antava kasala daba antava la daba. I pala brantele de bosa i kandele de bosa la da daba. Bala brantaba kasala daba antava la daba. I padu shada da brantele de. I kandaba kasada da daba antele de bosa. Abba Father, we are praying that as we are we are listening to words of faithfulness, we do not live here the same. We do not live here the same. I kandaba kasala da daba antava kasala da daba antele de. You have told us that you have no motive for lying. You have no motive for hiding the truth from us. You are a truthful person. When we interact with you, we are speaking to someone who speaks truth. 
Foundational to 
God see it, but trust me, if you are in a relationship with somebody who you believe doesn't have your best interests at heart, it affects the entire relationship, it affects the entire relationship, so if you are struggling your relationship with God, trust me, that part of it is that you do not believe that he is honest with you, part of it is that you believe that he is deceptive, part of it is that you believe that he is somebody who manipulates you, who simply has his way, that is all powerful and does as he pleases and doesn't care about you, so trust me, you need to pray, that you need to come to terms with the truth, that you serve a God who doesn't lie, so pray, 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 it is important, it is important, don't just brush it aside, please don't just brush it aside, Pray, 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 pray. Come on. Seek the face of God. Seek the truthful face of God. That your faith will be made a right. To the truth. The truth. The truth is that we serve a truthful God. We serve a truthful God. We do not care what our circumstances say. We do not care what our feelings say. We do not care what the world has said. We serve a truthful God. 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 We pala branta bakasha iyan telede. Pala branta bakasha dada banta pala daba. Pala branta bakasha iyan daba kasa la daba. Pala branta bakasha dada ba. He has no motives to lie to us. 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 God has no motives to lie to us. He has no motives to lie to us. We serve a truthful God. We serve a truthful God. We serve a truth to God. We pala branta bakasha la da banta la da ba. We pala branti le ianta bakasha la da ba. Our God is faithful. Our God is faithful. Our God is faithful. He does what He said He would do. He does what He said He would do. He's only obligated to what He said He would do. He's only obligated to send me to the church. I am pala da ba. Kala branta bakasha ian telede. We pala branta bakasha la da ba. God is faithful. 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 Shabada bran tabaka shayan tabaka shaladaba. Pala bran tabaka shayan tilidi. Pala bran tabaka shaladaba. Pala bran tabala da ban tilidi. Whatever misconceptions, whatever beliefs you had about God that are not true, that are not consistent with His nature, or being consistent, self-existing, unchanging God, we break it in the name of Jesus. We are put it in the name of Jesus. It will not become our belief. We did not leave this place with that same misconception. We serve a truthful God. Our God is faithful. Our God is faithful. What God says is true because it is true. What God says is true is true. It is true because God says it is true. It doesn't matter how we feel. It doesn't matter what the facts say. It is true because God says it. No matter how crazy it may seem. No matter how unbelievable it may seem. It is true because God said it is true. We serve a faithful God. 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 
Bala Brante de Devosa, the Andele de Abba Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you for bringing us to this place. We thank you for bringing us to this place of truth. Because if we live our lives outside of truth, we are destined for distraction. We are destined for a life of frustration. We are destined for a life that doesn't bring you glory. So, our Father, we say thank you. Thank you for bringing us to this place that you are a faithful God. No matter what our circumstances say, no matter what the report says, no matter what the specialist, the expert says, we will take your word because your word is true. Your word is true. It will always be true. Thank you. Thank you. We will live in the truthful God. We will live with a truthful God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Jesus. You want to lift up your voice wherever you are. And begin to bless the name of the Lord. And lift up your voice wherever you are. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Are there some believers in this place? You want to lift up your voice? Thank God. Father, we bless you. We give you glory. Oh, knowing that he is faithful should draw us to that place of thanksgiving. Lift up your voice. Thank the Lord. Father, we are grateful. Oh, from the ages past. Oh, Malene Mai. You've proven yourself faithful. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, for the many battles you won. Oh, Malene the many times you came through for us. Oh, he is the one that called for light out of darkness. Scripture says that darkness was upon the face of the deep, and he said, Let there be light, and there was light. Oh, let them die right from creation. He has been faithful. Oh, he had a plan. He had a plan right from creation. He had a plan for humanity. Oh, the great architect. He began to put everything in place. Finally, male and female, he created them. To have dominion over the earth. And all the things on the earth. Oh, what a faithful God. Along the line, men missed it. Along the line, oh, we began to move on our own pace. Along the line, man began to move by his own syllables. Oh, Adam, where are you? He said, that, Lord, I am naked. And he said, Who told you? In the midst of it all, he clothed man, he clothed man, it reminds me of a scripture that even when we are unfaithful, he is faithful. Oh, 
father for the many times that we cheated on him our rabbi he remained faithful you want to lift up your voice bless the name of the lord that is all that we are trying to preach to us today knowing that he is faithful should bring you to a place of thanksgiving knowing that he is faithful should bring you to a place of thanksgiving mama let I oh shada da 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 a letter a lemon a man a ma a shada da 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 a ya da 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 a rapaya a yen tell a pie oh shada da 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 a rapaya nai a ratai a rantai you want to arise on your feet let's pray a rantai thank God father I'm grateful a ratatata a rantai a ya da 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 a ya balabada a ya da 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 a ya da 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 a ya balaba a ya balaba a ya da 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 oh sha da 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 a rantai that's what the devil sought to do oh and in our time that is what he has been seeking to do also to give us a wrong picture of our God to give us a wrong picture of our God did he really tell you that don't eat the fruit of this tree did he really say so a malama pie oh lena menaya a rapayate a la da 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 a rantala nai he set men he set humanity into a, a, a place of confusion he brought us into a realm of confusion believing what our God is not oh my God a la ta 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 a ye payama pie a rantai a rantai along that journey along it all God was, was, was still with men God was still with men so it was recorded that there was a certain man oh who decided that he will live a different life there was a certain man who decided that he will be peculiar he is called Enoch that's why he began to have a walk with God a lama pie such that the world couldn't harden him again so he was not a lama pie oh sir a lene nene nene oh la na 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 throughout the generation of humanity a rabbi he has been faithful he has been faithful when the sons of men were messing up when the sons of men were dishonoring him he raised a man called noah a rabbi oh sir da 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 a ranta na 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 the noah build an ark build an ark a rabbi oh sir in the course of it he still in his faithfulness a lama nai stretched forth his hand unto humanity bidding men come bidding men come bidding men come oh men were still disobedient men were still not interested oh my god a rabbi a lantai such a faithful god said that when, 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 when men were, were, were abandoning him when men were dishonoring him he decided oh to keep for himself a remnant a remnant who will fill the earth again after the flood of mayanai so even regarding every bed of the land a rabbi every animal he called them in pairs a lampire a ratatai so this is what we call a rescue plan this is what we call a faithful god a rabbi in our ruins in our corruption he still has a plan for us in our corruption he doesn't abandon us oh he stays to us Amelia, ella da da da, a shada da da da, a male menaya, a rapai, a yapai, oh shada da da da, lift up your voice, thank God, He is a faithful God, oh lamai, when the when 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 the psalmist say that from the ages past, that is what he means, right from creation up until our day, He has been faithful, male de de de, kola nama shada ba, oh. I am Pala, I am Tala, I am Tala, I am Tala, I am Bada 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 
I am Paul. Oh, Sada, I let it I am da 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 da. Can I talk to you about a certain man called Abraham? Oh, my Lima, the man that is referenced Allah to be the father of faith. Amenity. Oh, Sada, this man trusted God. Oh, to the last minute, a lapaya, a ratata, a yapai, a yapai. In his old age, God proved himself faithful. The promises of God unto Abraham came to pass. The promises of God unto Abraham came to pass. God said unto him, Oh, look, as far as you can see, I will give it unto you. A melapaya, he is a faithful. God and you promised and you fulfilled it. Oh, Melaneta, oh Sada, oh Melala. Isaac came out of this promise. Isaac came out of this promise. Allah Paya, Arampa, Alemai. God still caused, called Abraham, Amelia, Arampai, oh, to sacrifice this one and only begotten son, this one and only son, Isaac, Amayata, Aletete, knowing that God is faithful, he made a step, he went on, he went on, and God said, it is now I know that you love me, it is now I know that you love me, Amayata, his ways are not your ways. Our man am I. His plans not our plans. Alapaya. He moved in his own pace. Alapai. But I can talk, I, I, I can tell you that he never changes. He never changes. Alapaya. Oh, Sidibai. Amama Leme. Arampai. We are talking about a faithful God. We are talking about a faithful God. We are talking about a faithful God who led Moses and the people of Israel through the Red Sea. Amaya Mai. He's the one we are talking about this morning. Arapaya. Oh, Nalema. Kola Masada Dada. Elepeloa. Imaya. Arantaya. Arapa. Oh, Sada. Emandala. Arampa. Arampa. He is the one. Oh, that led Moses and the people of, the, of, of Israel through the Red Sea. Allah, Papa, I am Papa, I am Papa. Not that all, all of the Israelites believed in what God was doing, but by virtue of his faithfulness, he, he, he proved himself mighty in the lives of his people. Oh, Malapai, Allah, Papa, I Oh, Shadada, I am Maya, Allah, Paya, I am Paya, I am. Empire, I am Paya. Can I talk to you about a man called Joshua? A little, who didn't know his left from his right? Oh, Malama, who had to, who had to take the mantle? Oh, Amala, who had to take leadership from Moses in Lapai. Oh, he held on to the word of God. We said, be strong and courageous, I'm Empire. Oh, let me know. And upon this word, he began to arise. He began to arise. Hey. Knowing that he is faithful, he began to arise. Allah manama, Allah manama, Allah by the people of the, uh, the, the Israelites said, Allah manama, whatever you say, we will obey. Only that the God of Moses will be with you. A mama letai, a shada dada, Allah by, Allah by. Oh Saba, come Allah by, Allah belate, come Allah ya, Allah by. Oh Sada, Allah. I am pie, I am pie, I am pie, I am pie. Can I talk to you about a man? Oh, at a church, a church called Samson, a rampai. In his time, in his time, oh, Ramai, a rampapa, a ranai, a rampai. He has strength beyond what men have. He has strength, a supernatural strength, not because he had heavy muscles, not because a manipai. He was high in stature. Oh, but the faithfulness of God played out in his life. Kamayapa, Ayapa. Even when, even when, even when he allowed himself to be corrupted. Apelai, 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 Apelai. Oh my God. Apelai, Ayapai, Arampai. God still came through for the man of God, Samson. And 
the man, oh my God, that had an affair on the corner. Wait, 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 somebody's wife. In my mama, a sagada, a letter, in my lower, in my eye, a pella. Upon this all, oh, through it all, through it all, God said, a man after my own heart, a man after my own heart. God's promises, God's faithfulness, oh, they are always here. On the lie, even when we are unfaithful, even when we are unfaithful, our mama, mama, I apply, I apply, I apply, I apply. I found my servant, David. I found my servant, David, in Mambea. Oh, Sheila, I apply. Kolima, a sada da da, a rapaya, a rakala, a sada, a yeah. He's the faithful God from ages past. In lampaya, a rampaya, a yampaya, a yampaya, a yampaya, a yampaya, a yampola, a lampela, a rada da, a yadala, a lada, a yapa, a yapa, a yapa, a lada da, a melada, a yadada da, a yam. Palua, Elantala, Elantala, I am Pala, I am Tala, I am Pola, Eladada, a Rapa, I am Pella, a Rampa, Comilla, 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 a Sadaba, a Sadaba, King of the King, King of the King, King of the King, being corrupted, being corrupted, a Madama, oh, one King after the other, oh, oh, being corrupted, Kamayepa. Still, the faithfulness of the Lord was still with Israel and Judah. Oh, Melamaya, a Peloa, Kometai, a Sila, oh, Mele, Melama, a Shadadada, a Palana, a Pilai, oh, Sipa, a Lapa, a Rapa, a Yapa, a Yapa, a Yapa, a Lata, a Yapa, a Lapa, a Lata, a Mapa, a Lata, a Rapa. I am Tataka, I am Melamana, I am Papa, I am Papa, I am Palama, oh my Lamana, I am Dada, I am Palama, God, they sought after my life, they are seeking my life, they are seeking my life, they have killed all your prophets, I am the only one left, I am Melapa, and they are seeking after my life, oh Messiah, I am Papa, I am Melai, I have 7,000 prophets who have no power to bow, amen. A city I seek to present unto you a faithful God. Oh my God, a lapai who sticks to his plan, who sticks to what he what he knows how to do best. A manamai and delivers Kamaya such that the limitations of men, oh my God, do not limit him. The limitations of men do not discourage him. A melapai, this is the God I seek to present unto you this morning. A mamale. Letia, oh Mikai, a rapa, Melatete, a shada, a yapa, a yapa, a yata, a yapa. Men lift on, men lift on through the chronicles. Josiah, a milata, a milata, oh Shada, they all lift on. A Messiah, a letter, oh this man, a Messiah. He did what was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a perfect heart. A lata, a shade, oh my oh in the midst of all, in the midst of it all, God was still faithful to the land of Israel and Judah. A mimipai, a tete, oh my kai. There came a time, there came a time, everything scattered. There came a time, it seemed as though nothing could ever happen. A mata, it seemed as though everything has gone down. Oh Sada, I am I am I am Oh King, oh King, oh King, hear ye the word of the Lord, hear ye the word of the Lord, Amapai, put your house in order, put your house in order, you are about to die, Amapai, oh my Sada, Amapai, Alamai, Ayepe, the man of God, the Amalai, Alamai, Ezekiah, began to engage God, Amepe, oh my God, Amapai, the prophet of God turned back and said that thou say the Lord I've added 15 more years all to your years on earth here 
Oh Shada, he doesn't forget like men do. He doesn't forget like men do. He doesn't forget like men do. Oh Mama Pai, oh Sapaya, and let me go say in my pie and rent my man. Go live by a Shada, I a pie, I a tie, a matai, in the mind, a mapai. Oh Jerusalem, it's a ruins. Jerusalem is in ruins. Oh, Melete, Apaya. And God raised the man. Oh, Makaya. Who didn't know, never knew that he's a builder. A papa. Oh, Nehemiah. Nehemiah. A mama. Melete, a city. Oh, Melana. A mama. He began, oh, Messiah, to lead this the people of the Lord to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. A pillar. A mama. I miss all, I miss all, all the oppositions, I miss all the oppositions. God proved himself faithful, God proved himself faithful. Emale, Emale, Amala, who said, Amala, Amala, you will fail. Who said, God's word concerning your life will fail. Who said, Amapai, you will not fulfill God's mandate upon your life. Who told you, Amapai, this morning, put your praise on it, thinking and knowing that your God is faithful. Amapai, oh my God. Melete, and it reminds me of a scripture in Psalm 127 in my pie. Oh, except the Lord builds the house, the builders build, but in vain, except the Lord watches over the city, the watchmen watch, but in vain, in my mama pay. Oh, said I, a mama, a rampa, a rampa, a sada, a yapa, a yapa. Oh, said I, a man, when the enemies thought that they the they, 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 they so have Jerusalem in captain a mama pie. Oh, the man of God, Ezra arose, Ezra arose, men, a mama began to come in, began to come in. Everyone held from each side, held from all sides, from the east, from the west, from the north, from the south. Oh my god, our papa, our shada. If you are sudden, you provide help. If you are sudden, you make provision. Have you forgotten that he is over Tyra? I'm a pie. Hey, today I seek to present to you a faithful God. I'm a pelai, a shatai. Oh, from the ages past, a latata. Ayapa, whose word to Ezra did not fail, whose word to Nehemiah did not fail in my pie, a rapapai, a sulemai, a lengote, in my eye, Ayapa, Ayatai, Ayapa, Ayatai, Ayapa, 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 Go to your people, go to your people. Go to your people, I'm a pie. Oh my God, a pie. Go to your people, my, my, my children, our little children. When would they grow? Even to marry you, I'm a pie. Oh, this were the words from Naomi, I'm a pie. To root and offer, I'm a pala, a city. Oh, my pie. Oh, my mela, a pie. I am pie. I'm a pie. Don't force me to go away from you, I'm a pie. This is the decision. That I have made, oh my God, that your God shall be my God. Your people, my people, when you die, I also in my pay in La Papa, a Nepelemai, a Rokome, a city, a Yapapa, a Palai, a Palai, a Yapa. Little the roots know that God was arranging a poor. For her, a man, a man, a yapa, a yapa, a redeemer, a miloa, a bella, a yapa, a yapa, a letter, a ya, colama, a sala, a yapa, a yet, colama, a yama. Men are saying that when will we, when, when are we going to plant? When will we plant? A mapai, oh, for it to grow, a mapai, a yapa, a yapa. God's ways are not our ways. I'm a pie. I am pie. I am pie. I am pie. He is the faithful God. I'm a yama. He is immutable. He never changed. I'm a pie. I'm a pie. I'm a pie. Situations may change. 
circumstances may change, years may change. Oh my God, locations may change, but same God. I'm a pair, I let I, I'm in a lap, I am 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 Open, open, I'm a pair. Oh my God, thank your mother. Thank your mother, a shabai, a rabai, oh my life, for making this decision, a belai, oh my God, a mile, a silai, a mapai, a meme, a melai, a yadai, a yabai, a yabai, a yabai, a yabai, a yabai, a yabai, so anything good, come out of Nazareth, so anything good, come out of Nazareth, oh my God, a me pain. Melamai, Ayapa, Ayapa, Ayapa. In the times when feminism was never a, 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 an issue, in a time when feminism was never a topic, God raised an Esther, a Mepai, Olete, a Shama, a Mana, a woman, all oh, upon her shoulders, rested a nation, a Mepelai, a Lokoa, a Silai, a Mayale, a Palota, a Memete, a Labalaba, a Sandala, a Mela, a Meloa, a Sala, a Pile, a Yamai, a Yamai, a Lamai, a Yamai. If he has said it, he will do it. If he has said it, he will do it. A Malama, a Yapai, a Yapai. Oh my God, he shall arise and his enemies be scattered in my Alepe. When he arise, that's what happens to our enemies. Alepe. Oh Salah, hey man, thought that he had a plan. Hey man, thought that he had a plan. Little did he know that he was signing his own death sentence because the word of the Lord concerning his people. Oh, he is, he is a faithful God. His words will not fail. So it had to come to pass. Ametai, Amenama, Olema. Who can stand against the Lord? Who can stand against the King? Amamama, Oh, Silea, Ekokote, Imali, Meseta, Ashabalebai, Arantai, Arampai, Ayampai, Ayampai, Kapai, Apai, Apai, Aya, Apai, Aya, Aya, Apai, Aya, Apai, Asai, So, can't go and die. So, can't go and die. Amemena, Asite, Oh, my Kappa, Arapapa, Aya, Pai. Oh, the latter part of Joseph's days were better than the former. Amapa, Ayapa, 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 because God is faithful. Because God is faithful in my name is I a kakapa a rapapa. Many are those that said of my soul, there is no help for me. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, and the lifter up of my head, a palai, a yapai, the faithful God. He is the lifter up of our heads. He is the faithful God. He is our glory, a male, he is our shield, a lapa. Are you thinking that you miss your providential way? Are you thinking that you are going to miss it? Are you thinking that nothing will work out? Are you thinking that you miss your way? I present unto you, oh, the Lord is my shepherd. Alapai, Alapai. And guess what he added? I shall not want. I shall not want. Alapai, 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 Alapai. That is the secret to our abundance. That is the secret to our abundance. Oh, my life. Do you want to stay in abundance? Do you want to come to a place where you will never lack? Oh, look unto him who, who has promised faithful. Look unto him who has promised faithful. A pillai, a sate, a mapai, a yapai, a yatai, a yapai, a yatai, a yapai, a yapai, a yapai, a yapai, a yatai, a melemai, a pella, a yatai, a sate, a malaba, a rapa, a yapalabalaba, a yapai, a rapa, oh, sadadada, a yapalabalaba. Melendebe, Ayapa, Alemenama, Ayabalaba, Ayabalaba, Ayadada, Amala, Asela, Rapapa, Alemene, 
No disease came to Jesus untackled. No disease came to Jesus left unattended to. Amepai, the dead were coming back to life. All the sick were healed. Amelai, the lame were walking. Oh, my lama, the blind are seeing. And this is what you should tell John the Baptist. Amapai, Ampayai, Alete, Emayo, Esela. Let John did we know that that Messiah, all through him, would understand. Amepe, Arapai, how to pray, how to pray. In Mapea, in Latai, he told us that we are the light of the world. And truly, his word is true. So we are signing. We are signing just like was said in Isaiah. So we've arisen, uh, we've arisen, and we are signing all oh, because we are the light of the world. Our madama, our rapoa, a lane, a paya, a letter, a mama, a yaba, a yaba. Are you the one? Or we should expect another. Thou art Peter, thou art Peter, oh my God, and upon this rock I will build my church upon this rock. I will build my church upon this revelation. I will build my church. Alapai and Peter denied Jesus three times. Alapai, oh my lenneme, Alpelai, oh but the way so stands. Thou art Peter upon this rock. I will build my church upon this rock. I will build my church. Alapai, oh so Peter said in Acts that men and brethren should we choose to listen to you or to God, Mama Pai, the audacity of the spirit and the bitter, oh my God, Rapapai, Elamai, the disciples went about healing the sick, raising the dead, Arapaya, Arapaya, Ayapaya, Arapaya, the word of the Lord, Amelai, is true, the word of the Lord, Amalai, is true, Apalai, Ayapai, Melebe, Asada, Amelama, Ayapaya, Aratoa, Elame, Elatai, Asada, Elamama, Arapapa, Ayapala, Ayentela, O Melesaya, Ekandole, Emalente, Osa, Arapapa, Elemene, Ayapala, Ayapa, 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 So, So. So, so, breathing, oh, metro stretch against the people of God. And my eye, oh, my Bella, told Agabus, is it about binding? And my Bella, I am ready, oh, to die for the sake of the gospel. And my mama, pa, I am pie. Who told you that this is the end of your life? Who told you that it is all that would happen to you? My God. My God, I seek to present to you this morning, oh, a God who is faithful from the ages past. A pella pa, a me me, oh, sila, a paya, a pella, a yapa, an apostle was raised in this man. A mela, a yama, a yapa, a yapa, a yapa, brethren. Brethren, ah, melepa, oh, melete, ayapa, ayapa. This morning, you want to find yourself in Him. You want to find yourself in Him. Ah, pelaba, ah, malaba. For in Him we live, remove, and have our being. In my pela, ah, rapaya, ah, rapa. The moment you step out, that is when the enemy begin to paint a different picture of your God to you. Oh, palepa. E mama mama a sulemaya e ratalo o sipe e rapai ayapai. I miss this all. A mama me 
Kapaye, O Lama Nama, Ayapa, Ayapa, Ayabalaba, Ayapa, Ayapa, Ayapa. I was going through your cities, Amelaba, Alaba, and I saw, Oh my God, Amelaba, Alabalaba, Ayabalaba, Amelebe, Arabalaba, with one tongue, Arabalaba, Ayabalaba, name to an unknown God. To an unknown God, it is this God on which I pray to you. And it is this God to him I pray to you. Paul said, Arabai, oh my lama, the sick were healed through Paul, the lame were walking through Paul, many were being saved through Paul. I miss it all. He said, It is the Lord that worked in me both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Amen. As though he was done, he continued. Oh my life in chapter 4 and said, Abelia, a rabbi, I can do all things. I can raise the dead. I can heal the sick. I can the blind can see. Oh my life. I will get that scholarship. I will get that contract. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Abai, Amai. That faithful God who strengthens me, a paella, a lapeo, a mapa, a yapa, a la la la, a yapala, a yapa, a yapa, a yapa, a la pa, a yapa, a la la, a yapa, a long man, a man, a la la ba, a la ba, a roko maya, a sile, a pila, a rapa, a yapa, a yapa, a mela, a lantela, a rapa. The Spirit of the Lord is separate. The Spirit of the Lord. Oh, Malemanama. He searched all things. Yea, even the deep things of God. Even the deep things of God. What you are saying? Oh, it's on the surface. Go deeper. Can you put your praise on it? Amelio, O Pelaya, Arapala, Arapa. He said it all things. So what makes you think that he's not aware of what you are going through? What makes you think that he's not concerned? Amelai, Apeye. He said it not some things. He said it not some things. All things. All things in Palapa, a Melaya, a Rapa, a God. He was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Oh, Malapa, the latter part say, Alema. He has given us the ministry of reconciliation that we should reconcile the world back unto himself. Look at us when we were lost, prosecuted, and degraded. He came to rescue us and gave us. A trust, a, a trust, oh my God, that we mortal men, we corrupted men in our flesh, oh my God, we should represent God here on earth. Amapai, Ayapai, what makes you think that if He can trust you with a God kind of life, what makes you think that He will fail you? A Malaya, a Peloa, a Site, a Matai, oh Sabadabadaba, a Rantalaya, a Meme, a Letessa, a Lomena, a Rapa, a Yapa, a Yapa, a Yabalabalaba, a Yabalabalaba, a Yabalaba, a Yadada, a Yapaya, a Rapela, a Yapa. Oh Sarah, she considered oh him who had given the promise to be faithful. He who had given the promise to be faithful. That is how come oh a record was set, a record which was never recorded. In the Guinness Book of Record was set a mapai. Oh, Meleme, two couple, a couple, a couple who were advanced in age a pelai. That is how they were able to conceive. Oh, she considered, she considered, she, he who had given the promise faithful a mama, mama, not a melabai, because they were conscious that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And forever, oh Belemaya, Arapai, this morning, 
I want you to arise, a melamai. I want you to arise, a pelai. Oh, melai. I seek to present to you the God from the ages past, a palepai, a letter, a mayapa, a lonea, a maya, a yapa, a yapa, a yapa, a yapa, a la 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 la, a sadadaba, a solaba, a rapa, a yapa, a yapa, a yapa, a yapa, a yapa. Ayapa, ayapa. All this world we taught, all this world the world told us that marriage, marriage, marriage is about all oh, two people who are met and have decided to live together. Oh, go to the court, sign, and stay together. All this world we thought marriage was all about sex. We thought marriage was all about making babies. Oh, but Paul said, I speak of a great mystery. Oh, Amala, and I speak of Christ and the church. Hey, Mamale, Amalama, have you thought of it? Have you thought of it? That there are mere men like us, mortal men. God can express his beauty in us. Can express his beauty in us. I am talking about a faithful God. Oh, my life, who do not lie, who do not fail, whose promises are yea and amen. A malemaya, a selepa, a piloa, 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 a meleba, a yapa, a yapa. As we begin to end the scriptures, a rabba, as the bad as the Bible has written, all was being ended. A rabbiya, a rabba, a revelation was birth. A melai, a rabba. Expect churches, churches who were going astray, who were corrupted in their acts, in their act. A melai, a paloa, a Oh my God, Jesus still reached out to them. Jesus still reached out to them and told them, Oh, that remember your first love. Do the things you used to do. Apaya, which God is this? That when we are moving away, He that doesn't abandon us. When we are coming away from Him, He doesn't leave us. Oh, He stick to us and He take the walk with us. Mama lapa, ayotela, erapai, imolai, arapai. Listen to what He has to say. Oh, malama, ayapai. He said, malama nama, ayapai. The Spirit and the pride say, come. The spirit and the bride say, Come, all this while we thought that the spirit, oh, he was going to do it all. We thought that the spirit was going to stand into the affairs of men and do it all. But here comes the scripture, the spirit and the bride say, Come, oh, we the bride, we the bride, we got to partner with the spirit, oh, and we cause things to shake, we cause things to move because things to tremble a mama ma a lepe a yapa a yapa capela ma a yapa a yapa a rapa a lemene a rapa a yete a yapa a lapa there is power in our inside a rapa oh sir there is so much in us a rapa God, a melai, oh melada, decided to do this with us. He has partnered with us. He has partnered with humanity. What makes you think that he will fail you? In my mama, oh rapper. Kola madaba, rapa, arapa. Oh, malene, alepa. This morning, I seek to present to you a God, the God from the ages past. Oh God, I cannot speak. I am but a little child. Oh, melama, Jeremiah said, amelebe, oh likapa, arapa, ayapa, ayapa. Mela, Ayapa, 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 oh Lenneme, Elelebe, a Solema, a Rape, a Lale, oh Lima, a Lecabella. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 
on and on. But my words are not enough. My vocabularies will fail me. But permit me to cry out in my own. Iba oh, Iba. Iba oh, Iba. Iba oh, Iba. Yeah, Iba oh, Iba. Yeah, Iba oh, Iba. I can go on and on, on and on, on and on. But my words are not enough. My vocabularies will fail me. But permit me to cry out in my own. 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 Blessed are thou, son of David. Mm. Blessed are thou. Of JC, blessed are thou, son of David. Oh, blessed are thou, root of JC. You are eminently glorious, immaculately beautiful. I can go on and on, on and on and on. I can go on and on, on and on, on and on. I can go on and on, on and on, on and on. But my words are not enough. My vocabularies will fail me. But permit me to cry out in my own. Iba oh, Iba. 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 I can go on and on, on and on. I can talk about John Wesley, but I can go on and on to Billy Graham, on and on, on and on. I can go on and on, on and on, and on. I can go on and on, on and on. On and on, regarding your goodness, I can go on and on. On and on, regarding your faithfulness, I can go on and on. On and on, what you did in the lives of other men, I can go on and on. Hey, on and on, I can go on and on. On. The men that were, that, 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 that were killed for the gospel. Oh no. I can go on and on. Oh no. I can go on and on. Oh no. The men that were murdered because of the gospel. We can go on and on. Oh they all, they all, they all, they all, they all, they all, they all trusted the one who is faithful to be rescued them. No. John Haas. Yeah, I can go on and on. Oh, no. Men that stood for the word of God unto the last end. I can go on and on. No, no. I can go The apostle and news, we can go on and on, on and on, and on. Yeah, I can go on and on, on and on, on and on, on and on. We can go. Oh, 
you eminently glorious, immaculate and beautiful. We can go on and on, on and on. How you expressed in the lives of these ones. We can go on and on, on and on. We are told that we are now I am We can go on and on, on and on. You know, we also told that we are Go on and on. We are we now here. We are we now here. Let you hear from me. We can go on and on, on and on. I don't need your me. I own your me. We can go on and on, on. I'm a friend or two for we can go on and on. Oh, the Lord. I see prayer. We can go on and on. Oh, the Lord. Take a call from where we can go on and on. Oh, the Lord. Some call you my we can go on on. Oh, No one. 
one who owns and is to come, left and forevermore. He's the one who owns and is to come, he is left and forevermore. He is the one who owns and is to come, he is left and forevermore. He's the one who was and is to come, left and forever. Your yam kanidi, your yam kanidi. Yeah, oh no, now I say your yam. Yeah, you can eat it.
Find his expression in him. What makes you think that he has promised that he will fail? Knowing that he is faithful, you should move around. You should go about your business praising him. The knowledge of his faithfulness, oh, must bring us to a place of thanksgiving. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh 
took me from the merry clay, set my feet upon the rock, standing in his righteousness. Oh, he took away my sin and shame, gave me a brand new name. It's been love that we did. How we stand. Glory to me. I will worship you forever. This God is too I will worship you So mille, mille, no, no, fe, oh, mille, mille, no, no, fe, oh,
Praise the Lord, family. Praise the Lord. Can we please continue to speak in the language of the Spirit? I can see some of us are tired, but we know that he who speaks in the language of the Spirit edifies himself. Can we lift up our voices and bless the name of the Lord? Can we speak in the language of the Spirit? Men ought to pray and not faint. We have come here to pray and to praise and to worship. We cannot be tired. We want to lift our voices and pray. We want to speak in the language. Language of the spirit, my yonder as winter a dose, keep a lava lava lava, Rasazazaza, my Yoska Pandali, my Yapa Lava Lava, my Zada Dada, Irandoska Yanda Lava, my Suska Zeda Dada, Rapa Pados, he must Zazaza, he Palenda Lava, my Libra Doska Zada Dada, he Yapa Lua, my Zazaza, he Palaba Lava, he Palaba Lava, he Rasanta Dada. Ipa yonda ra da da da, ipa lava, ipa lava, ipa lava, raba ba dos, raba ba dos, raba ba dos, ima zunta randali, ma ya kadiswa, hola ba doski, raza da da da, ipa lunda ra pandali, ma zenda la ba la ba, ya palava, palava, raba ba dos, raba ba dos, ma ya palua, palua, ma. Zada da 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 da, he has never ever ever. Mazunta randa da 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 da, he under the Badoski, my Yakadisha. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord, family. Can I please request that those of us at the back come in front a bit? Let's, let's come in front. I need your energy to help me. Amen. Can we please come in front? My assignment here is, is very serious. We want to pray for a special group of people. We want to pray for a group of people who are under so much attack. But then we think that it's not time for us to introduce them to the things of God. We want to pray for children. Amen. Amen. We'll read a few scriptures and then we'll zoom into prayers. Can we please go into Psalm, Psalm 8 verse 2? Can I please have the Passion Translation? Psalm 8 verse 2. You have built a stronghold by the songs of children. Strength rises up with the chorus of infants. This kind of praise has power to shut Satan's mouth. Childlike worship will silence the madness of those who oppose you. I read it again. You have built a stronghold by the songs of children. Strength rises up with the chorus of infants. This kind of praise has power to shut Satan's mouth. Childlike worship will silence the madness of those who oppose you. From the scripture, we can see that children have so much power. No, I've gone far, not children, infants, people like Eliana, people like Charles, they have so much power to shut the devil up, to oppose the madness of those, those who oppose God, to shut up the madness of those who oppose God. And because these children have so much power, there's so much attack on them. There's so much attack on them. Sometimes we feel like scripture is meant for just adults, but I believe everything written in scripture also relates to children. In 1 John 2 verse 16 to 17, can we please have it? I read from the Easy English Translation. What are the wrongs that belong to this world? People want to do bad things to make themselves happy. People want to have things that they see, even bad things. People want to show other people how rich they are. 
These ideas do not come from God our Father. They are thoughts of people who belong to the world. We know the scripture as um, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. I want to talk about these three things and how they relate to children. The lust of the flesh. I don't know if you've ever worked with children before. You've been in a room with children for one hour. They want what they want when they want it. They have no self-control. They just want what they want when they want it. The lust of the eyes. They see someone holding something and they want it. They, they might not even want some. They just want all of it. The lust of the eye and the pride of life. I work with children in a school. I've worked with children for some time now, Sunday school. And then for my national service, I was with children. The pride of life. I don't know if you have seen a child trying to tell another child the job of her mother. My mother is a doctor. My father is a lawyer. What does your father do? I don't know if you have experienced that. There's so much pride when they speak about their parents. And you might think that this scripture relates to adults, only adults. But even children walk in this scripture. Now... Because children are under so much attack, there's something that we can do. Can we please go into Psalm 1 to 7, verse 1 to 4? Psalm 1 to 7, verse 1 to 4. A lot of people try their strategies. A lot of parents try doing what they were taught when they were growing up, doing what they have learned, but sometimes it doesn't work. You try all your energy and your child is still going wayward because it's really not our strength. I can say our strength because now I'm a parent. It's not our strength. We can't really do anything if God doesn't help us. A lot of times when we read Psalm 1 to 7 verse 3, we know that it's about children. But I believe from verse 1 it's about children. Please, let's, let's stick to verse 1. From verse 1 it says, Unless the Lord builds the house... They labor in vain who build it, unless the Lord guards the city. The watchman stays awake in vain. Verse 2. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he gives his beloved sleep. Verse 3. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Verse 4. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. This scripture tells us that unless the Lord builds a house, the builders build in vain. Unless the Lord watches over a house, the watchmen watch in vain. We cannot depend on our strength to do anything. You might think that you are doing something. I'm, I'm buying books for Azaria. I'm teaching him Bible. I'm, 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 I'm doing things on my own. But scripture is telling us that unless the Lord, unless the Lord, Paul will tell us that in our weakness, his grace is made more manifest. His strength is made more manifest in our weakness. So there's so many things that we try to do on our own. This passage is telling us that you can't do it on your own. You need the grace of the Lord. You need the Lord to come through. And it, it, it's so evident in raising children. You need the Lord to come through for you if you want to raise children. So this, this morning, this afternoon, I want to continue in prayer. I want to pray for children. I wish that all the children would be around. We want to make them a point of contact even as we pray. Amen. Can we please rise on our feet even as we zoom into prayer? I want to lift about four prayer points. The first prayer point is that these children will be set apart. We are making them a point of contact for your own children, for the children of your sister, for that child you teach in school, for that child you teach in Sunday school. You want to pray that the Lord will set them apart. In a world where there's so much negative, there's so much strainness, if that's a right, where so many people are going astray and we are looking at it in the light of Gen Z and allowing things. We want to pray that these ones will be set apart. This week, or yeah, this week, Ija has been teaching us about Samuel, Eli, Eli's son, Samuel's sons. We learned that in, in, in 1 Samuel 2, Samuel was living with Eli and Eli's children. But Eli's children were so way off, wayward, 
but then Samuel was right with the Lord. He ministered before the Lord. We want to pray that same grace over these children. We want to pray that same grace over every child that you come into contact with, that they will be set apart. They will not conform to the standards of this world. When things seem right in the eyes of men, but it is actually death, it will not walk in that path in the name of Jesus. Let's lift our voices and pray that these sons will be set apart. They will be set apart unto the Lord. They will be set apart for good work in the name of Jesus. Mazada da da da, ipa leba leba leba, radoshka panda lira basunta, rayanda leba leba leba, makoshka yada da 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 da. Lord, we pray for every child we come into contact with that they will be set apart onto good ways. They will not conform to the patterns of this world. My Yoshka Penda Labelebe, my Yandera Zazaza, Yakados, Rada da da, 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 my Pelabelebe, my Pelabelebe, my Pelabelebe, Yurazada da 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 da, my Sutteranda Labelaba, my Yoshka Panda Laba, Yurazutera Zadada, my Yapalua, Rakadisha, set apart, Lord, set apart, Lord, set apart for. For you, my lover, lover, that these ones will be vessels of honor. He must enter da 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 vessels of honor. Made of gold, my lover, my lover, Raza Zaza, Ipayonda Razun Taranda Lava, Maya Palua, Maya Kadishwa, Ipalaba Lava Lava, Mazun Tarada Dada, Ipalaba, Mama, 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 Honda Razun Taranda Lioka, Maya Kadishwa, Hola Badoski, Razun Zaza Zaza, Iapalaba Lava, Iapalaba Lava, Iapalaba Lava, Iapalaba Lava, Rada. Radadados, 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 When they go to school, they will not be influenced by what they see. They will not be influenced by their friends. Oh, my dad, 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 dad. They are set apart. They are children that walk in the light of the Lord. They walk in the word of the Lord. Rabba, 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 Rabba,
Thank you, Lord, that these ones are set apart. Thank you, Lord, that every child that I encounter, they will be set apart. They will be set apart unto good works. They will be set apart. They will walk in your way. They will walk in your life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for these ones. In the name of Jesus. Maybe you don't have children yet, so you might not see the essence of what you are doing. But you're going to have children someday. Amen. And I believe in prayers that are made now for the future. And I also believe that you have people around you who have children. So I, I plead with you. This is the only help we can give to them. All these noise about gay, lesbianism, LGBT, something, something. This is the only way we can help them. Because they are coming so hard at our children. They're coming so hard in schools. And we know that unless we lift vo um, voices of prayer for them, all our humanly standards, all our humanly help might not work. So let's lift voices of prayer for them. I want to pray a second prayer. I want to pray that every child that you come across will be an example. Can we please read 1 Timothy 4 verse 12? 1 Timothy 4 verse 12. Then we are reading Acts 16, 1 to 3. And then Matthew 18, 3 and 4. 1 Timothy 4 verse 12. This is Paul speaking to Timothy and he says, Let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. Let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. Can we please look at Acts 16 verse 1 to 3. Acts 16, verse 1 to 3. Then he came to Derb and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there, named Timothy, the son of a certain Jewish woman who believed, but his father was Greek. He was well spoken of by the brethren who were at Lystra and Iconium. Paul wanted to have him go on with him, and he took him and circumcised him because of the Jews who were in that region, for they all knew that his father was Greek. Let's dwell in the verse 2. I'm going to read different versions. The verse 2 says that he was well spoken of by the brethren at Lystra and Iconium. In the Amplified Version, it says he had a good reputation. 
in the easy version, it says, all the believers said good things about him. In the TPT, the Passion Translation, it says, he was well known and highly respected among all the believers of Lystra and Iconium. This is Timothy. Research shows that he was about 16 years then. He was about 16 years. Today, if you don't take care, if you lose God a little, the 16-year-olds that you find, they will amaze you with the things that they can see, with the things that they know that you don't even know. You want to lift prayers for these ones that they will be an example. Can we go to Matthew 18, verse 3 and 4? Matthew 18, 3 and 4. And said, and said, surely I say to you, unless you repent and become like little children, trusting, lowly, loving, forgiving, you can never enter the kingdom of heaven at all. Whoever will humble himself therefore and become like this little child is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. You'd wonder why would God or Jesus tell the disciples or the people that they have to become like little children because the little children we know some people even call them kids and we know kids are what baby goats and we know goats are what fools so why would jesus want us to be like little children before we can enter the kingdom of heaven it shows us that there's a standard that jesus has for children there's a way of life that Jesus has for children that many of them are not walking in now. We want to pray that these ones, every child that you come across, your sister's child, your, your pastor's children, the children here, they will walk in that standard. A little research I did show that God, God or Jesus Christ mentioned that we have to be like little children because little children have a sense of innocence. Ideally, they shouldn't know sin. But unfortunately, you and I will tell them, say, when there's a knock on the door, but you are there. So we are the ones introducing little sins to them. But ideally, children have a sense of innocence. Children are simple. They don't worry themselves about so many things. When I said the word worry, Martha and Mary came to mind. Martha was just so worried about cooking for Jesus and so many other things. While Mary held on to what was necessary. Children are simple. They don't care about so many things. And today, what dress am I wearing? What makeup? It, they don't care. They don't care. And that's the standard of a child. Children are frank. Like I mentioned earlier, there's a knock on the door. Go and tell them I'm not there. A child will go and say, Me papa se membe kancho o se mi niho. They are just that frank. They can tell you things. Ah. There was a time when I had acne, like, I had really bad acne, and I used to teach Sunday school. Some of the children would come to me, Auntie Abba, what is that on your face? Like, adults will not say that. They know that it's not, and yet my pet say I have acne on me. But a child, she has seen, she has to say, she has to say it as it is. Why do you have acne? I don't know acne on your face. Children have the power to wonder. There's something that Ija teaches us all the time, that we shouldn't lose our wonder. We shouldn't lose our wonder, and children have that. They want to know what this is, what is going on. This is amazing. Like, they have the part to wonder. And this is how God wants us to be, to come into the kingdom of heaven. Children have the part to forgive and forget. You shout at the child one minute, five minutes later, they are running back to you. They've forgotten everything. That's how God wants us to be as well. Children are supposed to be obedient. Now I repeat, this is a standard that God has for children. We might not see so many children living like this now, but that is why we are praying, so that those around us will live like this. They are supposed to be obedient. Children just enjoy anything. You, 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 you show them a little experience, a little ad adventure, and they're like, oh my God, what is this? And adults, you want to go through so many things before you enjoy. But children just enjoy little things. The last one I'm going to say is that children trust. They trust very easily. Like if, if a child 
I says, um, their mother for a bicycle. And mommy says, I'll buy it for you in five days. They are so certain mommy will buy it in five days. They are, before mommy goes to work, they are knocking on the door. Mommy, my bicycle. They really trust that mommy would buy it. And this is the standard that God has for these little children. We don't believe in saying, saying, Kolad, you are stubborn, son, or mote, you are stubborn, son, or mote, that bain on besisa. We are not waiting for them to get to a place where it's going to be hard for them to change. It's going to be hard for them to know Jesus before we start. We are starting now. We're starting now. So we want to pray again that every child that you come into contact with will actually be a, an example to the believer. Will be an example in their way of life, in their purity, in their faith. They'll be an example in all these things that I've mentioned. They will trust. They'll be obedient. They'll have that sense of innocence. They'll have that power of wonder in the name of Jesus. We are praying that these children will be examples in the name of Jesus. Let's lift our voices and pray. <laughs>
In the name of Jesus, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, family. Hallelujah. I want to ask us a question. Let's assume we are all criff. I'm just, for lack of better words, let me use that word, we are criff. How many of us can say that we've been criff from home? We started when we were children. We, we were walking in the ways of the Lord. We actually knew the things of God right from home, right from our parents, right from our parents. How many of us became like this from school? How many of us became like this from SHS? How many of us became like this from the university because we met some people who helped us? The hands that went up for those who started from home, I think I saw about two hands. Because it's very, unfortunately, it's very rare. Because when we start, some of our parents think that almost 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 but we are allowed to watch certain movies above 18 years. But when it comes to the things of God, they just tell us that almost Even as we are praying for children, we want to pray for parents. This week on, on Thursday, Aja was teaching us about Eli and Samuel. How Eli was a priest. He would pray and then Hannah would have children. Samuel was living with him. Samuel was doing well in the things of the Lord. But his own children were so wayward. Then unfortunately, in 1 Samuel 8, we see that the Israelites are saying that Samuel's sons are not walking in the way that Samuel is walking. What could have gone wrong? What didn't they do? We want to pray for parents or else we'll be there and we will hear again a 10 year old telling us that God does not exist because it's just me and my mom and my mom is the one who provides for me. So who is God? Where is God? We want to pray for parents that they would have the grace to nurture these children in the things of the Lord. You want to pray for any parents you know. 
you want to pray for yourself because you are going to be a parent. I keep prophesying this and you people are quiet. You want to pray because you are going to be parents yourself. Amen. You want to lift voices and ask for grace for every parent. You want to ask for grace for every parent to know how to nurture children in the things of the Lord right from beginning. We don't want to wait until the end. I want to read a quote for you. There's a doctor, Dr. Paul David Tripp. He says, God never calls you to a task without giving you what you need to do it. He never sends you without going with you. As parents, God will not give you the task of parenting without giving you the grace and all you need to make it work. So I want to pray for every parent that the Lord will grant them grace to, to be good parents. The Lord will grant them grace to nurture children in the things of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Let's lift our voices and pray.
I got a Thank you, Lord, for grace. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord, family. We want to, want to read a scripture and then we say our final prayer. Can we please go into Luke chapter 1, verse 12 to 17. We want to pray this prayer over every child. We want to pray this prayer even over every unborn child. If there's somebody online who's pregnant, if there's anybody here who's pregnant, we want to pray this prayer over your child. 
Luke chapter 1, verse 12 to 17. This is when the angel appeared to Zechariah. This is what he said. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. And you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. He will also go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Can we please take it again? I pray you are listening to this, this word of prophecy over an unborn child. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. And you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. He's not going to be a child where people will say he's stubborn. Why are you bringing so much pain to your children? Some parents even name their children because of some of the, the behaviors they are working in very, very horrible names. But this is what we are saying about John. He's going to have joy and you're going to have joy and gladness and many will rejoice at his birth. Verse 15. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. I don't know if anybody wants their children to be drunkards, but we are holding on to this word. Our children will not drink either wine nor strong drink. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. I think I was, I, I, I got filled with the Holy Spirit somewhere on campus. So let's just say maybe I was 20 years. It's so the whole 20 years of my life. I was working in the flesh. To be honest, I was working in the flesh. But we are praying for the children that from womb, They'll be filled with the Holy Spirit. What I lost for 20 years, they would have it. From womb, they'll be filled with the Holy Spirit. From womb, from their mother's wombs, they'll be filled with the Holy Spirit. Verse 16. And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. You are prophesying this over your child. He's going to walk in purpose. He's going to turn people to the Lord. They are going to evangelize. They are going to walk in Ephesians 4 verse 11. Amen. Verse 17. He will also go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Even as we've been talking about we being prepared for the second coming of the Lord, we are being told that John is supposed to prepare people for the second coming of the Lord. We are praying for the children that these ones will prepare people for the second coming of the Lord. Amen. So we want to lift our final prayer. We are praying that Every child, every child right from womb will be filled with the Holy Spirit. Every child right from womb will be filled with the Holy Spirit. I want to add more to this prayer point, but I don't think there's a need because there's a lot that happens to you when you are filled with the Holy Spirit. Everything about the flesh is canceled and you walk in the Spirit of the Lord. So we are lifting this last prayer point. That every child that we have come across, every child that we are expecting to be born, will be filled with the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Oh, <laughs> 
in the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you for your love for these children. We thank you for your word that says that suffer not the children to come to me for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Father, we present these ones to you. We really can do nothing unless you help us. And we are grateful for we know you are present help. And so you will help us to bring these ones up in the way that you delight. We pray that as little children, they will encounter you. We pray that they will be filled with the Holy Spirit. They will be set apart. They will not conform to the patterns of this world. We pray that they will be examples to every believer in the name of Jesus. We even pray that you keep them safe and they are going out and they are coming in even as they go to school. We cover them in the blood of Jesus that no harm will befall them in the name of Jesus. We shut their minds and their thoughts to anything concerning gayism and lesbianism in the name of Jesus. These ones will walk right with you. At a tender age, they will walk right with you. And they will continue in it. They will not stray off and come back later. Forever, oh Lord, they are kept under the shadow of the Almighty. Thank you, Lord. For we know that you have done it. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, I, I believe you can do it better for Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We, we bless God greatly for this privilege. We thank God for this uh, privilege to, to engage him and to engage his spirit. Uh, standing before you, I can only say that this is one of the proofs of God's faithfulness. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. And we bless God so much. Um, I want to kindly ask that if we could maybe come in front, fill the spaces in front of us. It will be a great blessing. Hallelujah. So please kindly maybe move forward. Just fill the spaces in front of you. It will be a great blessing. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Family, please if you can come forward a bit. It will be great. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want to close our eyes briefly. I want to close our eyes briefly. I want to close our eyes briefly. We have come before him, the Lord of all, and want to once again ask him to open up our hearts, even as we engage him. We want to pray that our hearts will be like the womb, open to receive. 
the incorruptible seed of his word. And this would stir in us a drive for engaging his word. And it would help us in knowing him and in walking with him. In the name of Jesus, I want to, want to make this prayer. I want to make this prayer. Thank you, Jesus. God of glory, God of power, your ways are consistent to the setting of day when we follow to know you. We escape all corruption. I will hide in you. God of glory. God of power. Your ways are consistent. To the setting of day. When we follow to know you, we escape all corruption. I will hide in you. When we follow to know you, we escape all corruption. I will hide in you, Elohim, eternal one, Elohim, you never change, come before you, the faithful God, we have come that we may know of this dimension of yourself, that you are the faithful one. We pray in the name of Jesus that our hearts, body, soul, mind, spirit be yielded to you, that Lord you would have your way in us. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God, that you would help us, that you are in our midst, and you would open us up to this truth, 
that will reap of your faithfulness, Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Bele farga dili kesh gevele ne men de vrege deli eshele de barra da basha da va raka dala haigesh el behetem deve bova vili ke berge dile kesh keve edombra hada stara vala ombra teste vele koba lige eliman da val haigele elegete barra dala va rana basha da va evele konomate ele mendo barkis de ele menje liva hai abarata agash ala hada ala no Emenon fratele kopara gatini valone ejene emendo bombon fande gonde vendingendo ratai kalagadai jalmai hadam valige o barata dalige shelene berrede bede rada bashele galiete ele non da farra kadala bai kadali ashkalanai o beline de ferme ningo shkalade berrede dali Dele brega dele yatele dele yatele brega dele yatele. Rada bashala manda bara na ba pili adala va. Rada bashele dele de. Rada veli ga dele yatele de. Rada dele ka dele veli ga shele de de. Rada ba pili yashele brega dele yatele brega dele yatele. Rada ba pili adala va da bara na ba shele de. Rada ba pili yatele ya vele ga dele ya shele de. Rada ba Dili brega dili ya tele brega dili ya ne rada ba shala na ba rada ba bele na ne te in the name of Jesus thank you Lord we give you praise in Jesus name hallelujah praise God hallelujah hallelujah oh praise God we we bless God greatly this afternoon my assignment is simple I'm also touching on God's faithfulness. On, on the truth that God is faithful. Hallelujah. And I would attempt to help us come to this place of knowing that God is willing as far as what he has said in performing what he has said is concerned. God is willing. You know, I realize that many times the question has been that sometimes we believe that God is capable. God is able to do it. But is God willing to do it for me? Is God willing to fulfill his word in my life? Perhaps he might fulfill it with other people. But for me, perhaps God is not willing for many reasons. Maybe I'm not praying enough. Maybe I'm, I'm not a pastor's son. So... You know, I have not attracted God's favor in the light of he being willing in fulfilling his promise. And is the, are these promises even for us also, for you and I? Hallelujah. I want to read a scripture from the book of Isaiah chapter 46. I'll read from verse 9. We'll, we'll read the verse 9 and verse 10. Isaiah 46, verse 9 and verse 10. So... By God's grace, we would attempt to look at some former things, the ways of God in times past, and how willing God is to honor his promise over our lives, how he has done it over the past. So, Isaiah 46, verse 9, he says that, Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me. Verse 10, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. Hallelujah. My counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. He speaks about we remembering the things of old and coming to this place of knowing that he is God. And there is no other like him. And he says that he has declared the end from the beginning. And when the man of God, Eli, was speaking, he, he made a profound statement. He said that God is not trying to be faithful. God is faithful. And 
concerning whatever promise God has given, he has actually delivered. Hallelujah. As we go on, we would realize that God has fulfilled all his promises. He has, he has delivered them. Hallelujah. So he says, he has declared the end from the beginning. There's nothing that, that is ahead of us that God has not foreseen and has not, you know, pronounced a statement on. There's nothing that takes God by surprise. So he says, from ancient times, things that are not yet done. So things that from, from the past we had not seen yet, God had declared them already. He had, he had made those promises already. He had declared them. And we, for us, we are seeing it as something in the future. For God, he has seen it all. Hallelujah. Praise God. And, and that's, that's one important thing we need to be conscious of to help us uh, uh, understand God's faithfulness. And he says that his counsel shall stand and he will do all his pleasure. I seek to also present to you that God's promises are the expressions of God's pleasure. Hallelujah. Every promise of God is just an expression of God's pleasure. He, he, he does what he desires. He does things that, that can be captured as his pleasure. So the promises he has given you, they are things that are his pleasure. In Isaiah 46, 10, he says that he will do all his pleasure. So please have it in mind that in Isaiah 46, 10, he says that God is willing. He has this desire to do all that he has said. He will do them. So he's willing. Hallelujah. But we'll journey through the pages of scripture to see if truly God has been able to fulfill some of the promises he has made. And if truly what scripture is saying here is consistent with the, the, the character of God and what he has done in times past. Hallelujah. So speaking about faithfulness, one of the things I, I came across as far as faithfulness is concerned is that faithfulness is actually an expression of a dimension of God's personality and his character in his relationship with men. It's an expression of a dimension of God's personality and his character in his relationship with men. Faithfulness, I say again, is an expression of a dimension of God's personality and his character with his relationship with men. Hallelujah. So when it comes to God's faithfulness, Essentially, I'm saying that God's faithfulness is an expression of his personality. One. And number two, it's an expression of his character. God's faithfulness. It's an expression of his personality and it's an expression of his character. How? You know, when we are talking about personality, largely we are speaking about what es essentially makes you you. Hallelujah. So when we see you, like, usually, you, you meet someone and you are saying that, oh, this, this gentleman, he's calm, he's, he's reserved, he, he's not outspoken. No, usually, you, you see him and then he's in his corner and all that. It's, it's a description of a certain quality of that person, certain traits we found about that person. So, the, the essence of that person. So, when you, when you think about that gentleman... The things that come to mind is that he, he is calm, he is reserved, you know. There are other people to, you, you say that, oh, for this lady, she's outspoken. And also, it's essentially what makes you, you, your personality. Essentially, what makes you unique from every other person. And what gives you a particular description, which makes you, you. Hallelujah. And I'm saying that God's faithfulness is an expression of his personality. So that faithfulness is an essence of God. Essentially, God is faithful. Essentially, God is faithful. And we'll, we'll see that in the pages of scripture as we move on. 
essentially is faithful. Let me give another example. Essentially, God is a spirit. Essentially, God is a spirit. So, when, when you're thinking about God, God is not, you know, an object. God is not a building. God is a spirit. If you want to know who God is, you must understand that God is a spirit. Hallelujah. Essentially, God is love. God is love. So, if you want to understand who God is, you must know that God is love. That is how come you would, you would see him express whatever he, he does. You will see him express himself in love. Because essentially, God is love. So, there is a certain a link between one's personality and one's character. God is a spirit. That is why he bears fruit as spirit. So, the fruit of the spirit is the character of God. But the personality of God is that God is a spirit. So, because he's a spirit, whatever fruit he bears is called the fruit of the spirit. Because he's love, whatever fruit he bears, we call it love. He says the fruit of the spirit, Galatians 5.22, the fruit of the spirit is love. So, essentially, God is love. So, by character, God is also love. Whatever he does is just an expression of his love. Hallelujah. Praise God. And we must understand that when it comes to the personality of God, it is unchanging. Even when it comes to the personality of men, it is one of the things that psychologists have suggested that they are uh, relatively permanent and they are stable, you know, across years. Like, it's, it's very, it's one of the things that does not change very easily, although men change. But when it comes to the personality of men, it's one of the things that do not change very easily. Hallelujah. But when it comes to God, his personality is that, like the personality of God is such that it does not change at all. Like God remains the same. The qualities of God, it does not increase or decrease with the passage of time. God does not become more God as time passes. God does not become more loving as time passes. God was not more loving some years past than today. So we can't say that God loved some people in times past and today he does not love men as much as he loved men some years ago. Hallelujah. So the personality of God is such that it doesn't change. There are qualities of God that are ever abiding. They are unchanging. They remain. Hallelujah. So it's like uh, the scripture we read in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8. Scripture says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And scripture was speaking largely about the personality of, of God, Jesus. Like, he doesn't change. His qualities, that they don't alter. They are ever abiding. So you realize that maybe there might be uh, certain dynamics with how God meets men in certain generations and all. But essentially, the love of God is not altered in any way. Essentially, God's uh, um, faithfulness is not altered in any way, irrespective of the generation we find ourselves in. Hallelujah. So they are ever abiding, they are permanent, they are unchanging. The faithfulness of God or the personality of God is such that it never changes. Hallelujah. But we want to read a scripture from Deuteronomy chapter 7. I will read from verse 1 to verse 9. Deuteronomy 7, verse 1 to verse 9. When the Lord your God brings you into the land which you go to possess, and has cast out many nations before you, the Hittites and the Gigashites and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Perizzites, and the Hivites and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than you. Verse 2. And when the Lord your God delivers them over to you, you shall conquer them and utterly destroy them. You shall make no covenant with them, nor show mercy to them. Nor shall you make marriages with them. You shall not give your daughter to their son, nor take their daughter for your son. For they will turn your sons away from following me to serve other gods. 
so the anger of the Lord will be aroused against you and destroy you suddenly. But thus you shall deal with them. You shall destroy their altars and break down their sacred pillars and cut down their wooden images and burn their carved images with fire. For you are a holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for himself, a special treasure above all the peoples of the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love on you, nor choose you because you were more in number than any other people, for you were the least of all peoples. Please take note of this, the verse 7. But because the Lord loves you, and because he would keep the oath which he swore to your fathers, the Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of bondage, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Verse 9. Therefore, know that the Lord your God, he is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love him and keep his commandments. Hallelujah. Now, in, in this scripture, Moses is writing to the people of Israel and maybe just um, paraphrasing. My emphasis is on verse 7 to verse 9. He's speaking about this, this God who is faithful. He tells them how that God would not have them, you know, intermarry. God would not have them have pity or mercy on the people he wants to drive out of the land he was giving to the Israelites. And then he comes down to talk about God's faithfulness. And he begins by saying that God did not choose them because of their numbers. God has not chosen them because of any speciality of, of this or anything that is peculiar about them. But it is out of his love and his desire to fulfill or perform what he had said. His desire to honor the oath he had given to their fathers. That is why God delivered them with a mighty hand. And then he has brought them to the land that he had, he had promised them. And he says that God, therefore know that the Lord your God, he is God. And realize that Isaiah speaks about the same thing. How God said that I am God and there is no other like me. Moses also says that realize that and know that the Lord, he is God, the faithful God who keeps covenants. He says, God is faithful and he keeps covenant. Anytime we are speaking about the faithfulness of God in scripture, one of the things that we would uh, not be able to do without is covenant. Um, the man of God, Eli, said this in his presentation or in, in, uh, in his time when he was sharing with us how that God cannot lie. He said that God is not obliged to any one of us, to, to, to men. He is actually obliged to his promises and what he has said. And that is true. God only honors what he has said, not what our fears are, not what our, uh, our anxiety brings us to, not what our desires are, in quotes, like our desires to satisfy, you know, fleshly ambitions and all. God is, is not under any obligation to satisfy them. Hallelujah. Or to honor them. God is obliged to, in, uh, uh, to honor what he has said. So anytime we are speaking about God's faithfulness, please, your mind must quickly go to God's covenant. What has he said? What he has said is what he honors. Hallelujah. Praise God. But there are two things that I would want us to look at as far as faithfulness is concerned. And I call them maybe two determinants of, of faithfulness or of being faithful. And one of it is worth, worth, or ability, or capacity. And another is will, will, worth and will, or ability, capacity, and will. Now, a man, as much as he desires to do a thing, 
cannot stay faithful to what he has said if he does not have the ability to. Hallelujah. So maybe as I stand here, if I promise you that I can give you eternal life, as much as I desire that maybe, maybe like Paul, I could be accursed so that you would inherit uh, eternal life and all. As much as I can talk about all that, like I don't have that ability to give you eternal life. There is one who has that ability and that's Jesus Christ. Or better still, as I stand here today, although I have millions of dollars, but in my pocket right now, if I tell you that I'll give you one million dollars, like in as much as maybe I am willing to do that, I don't have that money in my pocket right now. Hallelujah. So, even if I say that I cannot stay faithful to what I have said because I don't have the ability to. Hallelujah. On the other hand, I can tell you that I would give you a million dollars and I may have the money with me right now. But if I am not willing to give it to you, like I may have said it, but I wouldn't give it to you. How many of us have had many people promising us and truly we knew they could deliver and, and, and honor their promise, but they never came? Like how many of us have, have had that experience? Like you have an uncle abroad and he says, I'll come and take you, you know. Like I'll bring you to, to London, to, to US and all. And then he said it when you were 18 years. You are now 28 and he's still giving the promise. Hallelujah. You know, some of them told you that, you know, I'll send you some dollars. And at that time, you were in class six. You have completed university, and the dollars are still on the sea coming. Hallelujah. So sometimes someone can say that I will do this, but there must be the, the, the will of the person must be involved in delivering it. So when it comes to faithfulness, a person must be able and must be willing to be able to remain faithful. Hallelujah. One must be able and must be willing to be able to be faithful. Hallelujah. And when we look at God, talking about God being faithful, the question now would be that, is God able to do the things that he has said he will do? And is God willing to do the things he has said he will do? Hallelujah. So two things. Is God able and is God willing? Hallelujah. Creator of the universe, what can't you do? What can't you do, Jesus? You're the maker of the universe. And what can't you do? What can't you do, Jesus? You are able, great and mighty God. You are able, Jesus. Is God able to do the things he has said? You are able. Great and mighty God. You are able. Jesus. You are able. Great and mighty God. You are able, Jesus. For only you can do what no man can do. Only you can do what no man can do. Only you can tell. Every situation around Only you can do What no man can do And Lord, only you are able So 
so so you are capable only you are able so so you are capable only you are able so so you are capable only you are able so so you are capable oh only you are able so so you are capable what has God said that he's not able to do Jeremiah 32 and verse 27 what what has he said that he cannot do what is impossible for God Gabriel said this that with God all things are possible why because he's able and he's capable he has the ability to do all that he has said he is the creator the man of God Eli shared with us that he created all things he has all things in his power he holds all things by the power of his word so God is able to do whatever he says in Genesis 1 we say that we, we see that God says and it happens just as he has said why because in him is the ability and the capacity to deliver whatever he had said so when there was nothing when the earth was in chaos God speaks and things begin to arrange what 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 a beautiful world we see God bring into bear why because he's able he's capable he's able to do what he has said hallelujah and I realize that for many times this is not very challenging for most of us maybe in a Christian faith you know because sometimes we hear testimonies of other people saying that God did this for me God did that for me you know in in in, in the midst of all uncertainties and all when all odds were against me I realized that God came through for me so sometimes we can appreciate it there are some of them we might not want to believe it because we have not been part of the story all this while. But for other people too, like, we have been with them. We have journeyed with, with them. So we can at least appreciate it a bit. But sometimes the issue is that, will God do it for me? Are these promises for me also? Is God willing when it comes to me? Hallelujah. And this is, this is what we want to attempt to see. In scripture if God is willing now I want to look at I said that when we are talking about God's faithfulness quickly one of the things that you should have in mind is God's covenant because he responds to his covenant he honors the things he has said he does not honor your fears he does not honor your fleshly desires or any such thing he honors what he has said hallelujah so let's look at some of the, the covenants in scripture and how that God handled these covenants. There are many covenants in scripture, but we'll look at a few of them, about five of them, and how that God has treated these covenants. So one of them is what we call the Noah, Noahic covenant, the covenant God gave to Noah and let me let me chip this in Pastor Benny Hinn speaks about covenant and then he shares this truth he shares how that every covenant has four things he shares how, how that every covenant comes with promises every covenant in scripture comes with terms every covenant has blood attached to it and every covenant has a seal so there are four things he speaks about concerning covenant promises terms blood and seal hallelujah but for the purpose for the purpose of what we are looking at this afternoon i'll dwell more on the promises 
concerning God's covenants. Hallelujah. So my, my focus would mainly be on God's promises in, in the covenant he has given. So when we look at the covenant God made with Noah, the key promise God gave to Noah was that he was not going to destroy the earth like he has done in his days with flood ever again. Hallelujah. He speaks to Noah and he tells him that he's not going to destroy this earth, all flesh, with flood like he did in the days of Noah. And he gives a sign of this covenant as the rainbow. Anytime he watches or anytime he looks in the clouds, he sees the rainbow. It reminds him of his covenant. So this like the, the, the uh, maybe the blood sort of as we are talking about in, in, in the things that relates to the covenant. So there, there's something that God looks on to to fulfill that covenant or that word. And we realize that true to God's word, God has not destroyed this earth with flood. Hallelujah. Like he gave this promise that he would not destroy the earth with flood. And as you and I live here today, I don't know if in your history books or anything, you've come across anything like the, the world utterly being destroyed by flood except that which happened in the days of Noah. Hallelujah. So God has honored this word up until today. The earth has not been destroyed with flood. Hallelujah. Now let's look at another covenant, the Abrahamic covenant. And this covenant has many things in there. So I think I would make out out list the scriptures when, when we go back we'll read them hallelujah so realize that god gives certain promises to abraham and as i said my focus is on the promises he gives certain promises to abraham so we see one in genesis chapter 12 verse 1 to 3 genesis chapter 12 verse 1 to 3 god speak, speaks to abraham and he delivers certain promises to him in Genesis chapter 15, verse 18 to 21. Genesis chapter 15, verse 18 to 21. We see God's promises given to Abraham also there. Genesis 15, 18 to 21. In Genesis chapter 17, 17, verse 1 to 8. We also see God promising Abraham. And as part of these promises he gives, he speaks about how that he will multiply him. He speaks about his seed and how by his seed the nations of the, the world will be blessed. He speaks about the land that he would give to his descendants and, and all that. In, lastly, in Genesis chapter 18, right from verse 1, he speaks about he giving him a son specifically. So I'm, I'm bringing a certain distinction between the seed he speaks about and the son, Isaac. Now, the seed he speaks about largely is Jesus Christ the son he promises is Isaac and he gives him Isaac and from Isaac he brings the nation Israel and all hallelujah so Isaac gives birth to Jacob Esau Jacob his name is changed to Israel Israel becomes the chosen people for God hallelujah but talking about his seed largely what God was talking about was Jesus Christ. It is out of Jesus that all nations are blessed. Hallelujah. Now I want to look at the fulfillment of these promises. The fulfillment of these promises. So the first one, Exodus chapter 1, verse 8 to 17. Exodus chapter 1, verse 8 to 17. In Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 10, God fulfills the promise of multiplying the seed of Abraham. So at this point in time, the people of Israel had multiplied in the land of Egypt. They had multiplied greatly in the land of Egypt. Hallelujah. And then in Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 10, Moses speaks about how that God had multiplied the people of Israel. God had multiplied them. So his promise of multiplying the, sea, uh, um, the descendants of Abraham, he fulfills. And we see this in Exodus chapter 1. 
verse 8 to 17. And Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 10. And again, we see his fulfillment of the promise of giving Abraham a son. Because Abraham asked God that what would he give him, seeing that in his house, the only one left is his servant, Eliezer. And it's like Eliezer was going to be the one who would inherit him. And God says no. Like he, he, would, he would honor his word by giving him a son. Hallelujah. And in Genesis chapter 21, we see Isaac come forth as a fulfillment of the word of God to Abraham. Hallelujah. And then again, we see in Joshua chapter 24 and verse 13, how that God also honors his word by giving the land he promised to them. Joshua chapter 24 and verse 13, he says, I have given you a land for which you did not labor. So God had given them the land and cities which you did not build and you dwell in them. So at this time, they had inherited the land and they were dwelling in them. So God had fulfilled this promise. And in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 16, this let's read that, and that will help my case of saying that the seed he was talking about was Christ. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He does not say, and to his seed, as of many, but as of one, and to your seed, who is Christ. Hallelujah. So the seed that was promised Abraham is Jesus Christ. And truly, God brings Jesus on the scene. And by Jesus, all the nations of this world are blessed. Aren't we blessed? We, we have been engrafted. We have been brought in because of Jesus Christ. We have been blessed to be partakers of the divine promises of God because of Jesus. Hallelujah. So God fulfills these promises he gave to Abraham. He made a covenant with Abraham and he has fulfilled these promises. Hallelujah. Now, let's look at, at another covenant God had with Moses. And that's the Mosaic covenant. And primarily, in this covenant, God sought to make Israel his chosen people. In this covenant, God decides to make Israel his chosen people. Hallelujah. So, how that he sent Moses into the land of Egypt to deliver his people and all, so that they will come and worship him. So that these people would be set apart for himself, for God himself. So, this is the promise God gave, that he is choosing Israel for himself. And we see this in Exodus chapter 19, verse 5 to 6. Exodus 19, 5 to 6. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my commandment, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people, for all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. So this is the promise that God had given Israel, that they would be a people for himself. And let's see the fulfillment of this promise. Second Samuel 7 and verse 23. 2 Samuel 7 and verse 23. God fulfills this promise. And who is like your people? So at this point in time, Israel is being called God's people. And who is like your people, like Israel, the one nation on the earth whom God went to redeem for himself as a people, to make for himself a name, and to do for yourself great and awesome deeds for your land. Before your people whom you redeemed for yourself from Egypt, the nations, and their gods. Hallelujah. So at this point in time, God was saying that, or Samuel was saying that, the people of Israel are, are God's own people. And God had given this promise that he's choosing Israel for himself. And around this time, we are seeing that Israel is called God's own nation. Now let's look at another covenant. The Davidic covenant. The Davidic covenant. The covenant God had with David. And we see the promise God made to David in 2 Samuel chapter 7. Sorry. Yeah, 2 Samuel chapter 7 and from verse 12 to verse 16. 
2 Samuel 7, verse 12 to verse 16. He says, when your days are fulfilled and you rest with your fathers, I will set up your seed after you who will come from your body and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father and he shall be my son. If he commits iniquity, I will chasten him with a rod of men and with the blows of the sons of men. But my mercy shall not depart from him as I took it from Saul, whom I removed from before you. And your house and your kingdom shall be established forever. So this this is what God is promising David. His house, his kingdom shall be established forever. Your throne shall be established forever. Hallelujah. And let's look at the fulfillment of this promise. First Kings chapter 6. We realize that Solomon steps onto the scene and he builds the house for God. He built a house for God. And we also see in Matthew chapter 1 and verse 1. Let's read Matthew chapter 1 and verse 1. Matthew 1 and verse 1. He says, The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David. So Jesus Christ is referred to as the son of David. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's, let's go to Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulder. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Verse 7. Verse 7. This, let's go to verse 7. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Hallelujah. So realize that he's speaking about Jesus Christ here. Being the one who is going to fulfill the promise of God to David. That his throne will be everlasting. His kingdom would see no end or will know no end. And this Jesus is truly born. This Jesus truly comes to fulfill this promise. Let's, let's look at Luke chapter 1 verse 32 to, uh, to 33. Luke 1, 32 to 33. Hallelujah. I, I know the scriptures are a lot, but it's a blessing. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. He says, he will, be, he will be great. So speaking about Jesus Christ, he will be great. And will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. So he's being referred to as the son of David here also. Verse 33. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. Of his kingdom, there will be no end. And truly, Jesus, the appearing of Jesus, the work of Jesus on the cross and all, is an establishment of this truth. That this promise has been fulfilled in the Son. Hallelujah. And lastly, we want to look at the new covenant. The new covenant. The new covenant. In this covenant, we, we see uh, being initiated or being spoken of in Luke chapter 24 and verse 49. And I call it largely the covenant of salvation and the gift of the Holy Spirit. 49, 24-49. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endured with power from on high. So there's a promise for the Holy Spirit to come upon us. That's the promise of the Father. The promise of the Father is to give us His Spirit. But before that, let's look at John chapter 3 verse 16. It's, it's a scripture we are, many of us are familiar with, if not all of us. John chapter 3 and verse 16. Please want to read it. Hallelujah. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So God promises everlasting life, promises salvation, and he promises it through his son that whoever comes to believe in Jesus, he would have everlasting life. Hallelujah. Praise God. And now let's, 
look at the fulfillment of these promises. Let's first go to John chapter 20 and verse 22. John chapter 20 and verse 22. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Verse 23. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. They are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Let's go to verse 24. Okay. I think verse 23 is fine. So, we see that in uh, John chapter 20, they received the Holy Spirit. He breathed in, uh, into them. And they received the Holy Spirit. And for many, many Bible scholars and all, they refer to this account as the new birth for the, the disciples or the apostles. As, as their new birth, they're being born again. So that it is on the grounds on, of this that they were able to go and wait for the promise of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So Jesus dies and resurrects. And then Jesus causes them to receive the Holy Spirit at this point. And remember that in John chapter 3, when he was speaking to Nicodemus, he says that, except one be born of water and of the Spirit, that person cannot enter the kingdom of God. So one must be born of the Spirit. And this account gives us a picture of the birth of the Spirit in the life of the believers or the, the apostles who were first to receive the salvation. And from them, we see that others also receive salvation and the Holy Spirit. So let's look at Acts chapter 2 and verse 41. Acts chapter 2 and verse 41. Acts 2 and verse 41. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized. One. And that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. So they were saved. So that promise of coming to believe in this Lord Jesus Christ. Peter delivers a message and they believe in the message. They believe in Jesus Christ. And scripture says that they were baptized and then they were added unto the, those who were already saved. That's why I'm saying that the apostles were saved. And then they preached the gospel and others are also saved. So God fulfills his promise of salvation in the new covenant. And salvation comes with many packages. We'll come uh, uh, to, to that. But it's, it's a whole package in its own. And they receive also the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 2 and verse 4. Acts chapter 2 and verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So this is the aftermath of they waiting in the upper room and then the Spirit comes upon them. The Spirit comes upon them. They are filled and they begin to speak in un unknown tongues. Hallelujah. And one will ask our question this question once again. Does God desire to keep his word? Does God desire to keep his word? You know, I'm saying that for many of us, it is not difficult for us to accept that God is able to do the things he has said. But for many of us, the issue is that we are not too sure that God is willing to do it. God wills that he will do it in our lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, is God willing to save men? There are many people, they are hindrance for coming to receive the gospel, to receive the salvation, is that they are not sure that God is willing to save them. So, they see many people in church and they are saying that these people are prim and proper. These people are fine. Perhaps we know that God is able to save. That's why these people are in church and they are, they are enjoying God and all. But for us, we are too filthy. So, I'm not sure God will want to save me or he's willing to save me. Hallelujah. I'm not sure God is willing to give me his spirit. I'm not sure God is willing to cause me to walk in abundance, in healing. But one want to find out if God is willing. Hallelujah. Praise God. Family, please, are you, are you with me? One want to read a scripture from Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 12. Jeremiah 1 and verse 12. Jeremiah 1 and verse 12. Then the Lord said to me, You have seen well, for I am ready to perform my word. I am ready to perform my word. So here we see God speaking by himself. So that if anyone tells you that God is not willing to do this for you, 
This scripture nullifies what the person is saying. God says that I am ready to perform my word. So has God said a thing? And are you thinking that God will not do it? Why? Because I didn't pray. No. God says that he is ready to perform his word. And it is not on the grounds of your prayer. And I, I would, would come there. It, it's not on the grounds of fasting. So, it is not true that people receive children because they fasted or they prayed. Like, it, it is not true that God gave them the children, I should say, because they fasted or they prayed. No. So that if someone fasted and prayed, that person, you know, influenced the will of God by his fasting and his prayer for God to release a child to that person. That, that is not the case. God's desire to, to fulfill his word, his will to fulfill his word, is tied to his personality and who he is. So it is tied to his faithfulness. Hallelujah. I don't want to move ahead of myself, so let's, let's keep pushing it. Hallelujah. So let's read from Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 10. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 10. Is God willing to keep his word? Scripture says that for God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love, which you have shown toward his name, in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. He speaks about how that God is not unjust to even forget your work, the work you have done. He is willing to reward every work man does. And he has spoken concerning reward for the work of men. And he's willing to fulfill it. So he says that he's not unrighteous. He's not unjust. Even to forget it. So his willingness is so much that he doesn't even forget. For some of us, we, we even say that maybe God has forgotten me. Hallelujah. But God does not forget his word. Hallelujah. And let's look at Philippians chapter 1 and verse 6. Apostle Paul also makes a case there. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 6. He says, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. So God, when he begins something, when he speaks about something, he performs it and completes it. So God is always willing to do what he has said, to do what he has planned, and to do what he has desired. Hallelujah. And in Deuteronomy chapter 7, as we read, let's read again from verse 7 to verse 9. Verse 7 to verse 9. So he says, The Lord did not set his love on you nor choose you because you were more in number than any other people. For you were the least of all peoples. So it's not something that is as a result of their merit. It's not their numbers. But he says, this is, this is the, the, the reason. But because the Lord loves you, and because he would keep the oath which he swore to your fathers. So God in himself, he desires to keep his oath. Much more than you are thinking he wants to. So sometimes you are thinking that you are rather desiring that God would heal. But God is willing to keep his word of healing. Much more than even your desire to see the healing. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want to look at this one also. Now, it's, it's the fulfillment of the word of God dependent on our actions or inactions. Or it's, it's the, the, the faithfulness of God, like so to speak. Is it dependent on our actions or inactions? So, as we read from Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 7 to 9. Realize that God is saying that whatever he did with the nation of Israel, it was not on the back of their numbers or whatever they did, but it was on the strength of his love and his desire to honor his oath. So realize that God's faithfulness is not tied to the one who prays more or the one you know, who, who is maybe from a Christian home and any of such thing. 
God's fulfillment of his promise is dependent on his personality and who he is. He is faithful. That is why he fulfills his word. Hallelujah. However, there are things that we need to do to benefit of the faithfulness of God. So, I can fulfill a word, but you will not enjoy the fulfillment of that word. There are two different things. Let me give this example. I can say that I'm sending you a million dollars once again. And I can send the million dollars into your account. But you can sit home and then you might have many needs that the million dollars can, can satisfy. And you would not have these needs satisfied. And the reason is that you have not gone to the bank to cash the money I've given you. So maybe you could have just gone to the ATM, take an amount of that money. You could have written a check and you take the money. But by reason of not going there, you will not enjoy the money I have given to you. But the money I promised was not on the strength of you having an ATM or an ATM card or you having a checkbook. So I did not uh, give one million dollars because you have an ATM card or you have a checkbook. I gave you one million dollars because I had the capacity and I was willing to give it to you. I decided to give you one million dollars. Your enjoyment of this one million dollars is on the strength of you also going there to cash the money and then you spend it on what you want to spend it on. Hallelujah. So his promise is not tied to your prayer. So you don't pray for God to say that because this guy has prayed uh, six months and he has fasted 50 years, I would give him a child. God has given, like by his, his promise, he has given a child. He has delivered that promise. But we need to engage these things by way of receiving and enjoying these promises. So you can have the money sit in, in the bank account, but if you don't go with your checkbook, it will sit there and then it will rot there. You will not enjoy it. But you're going there with your checkbook, your ATM card, is what brings you to the place of enjoying the, the, the money. Hallelujah. So his faithfulness is not necessarily in response to our actions. Our actions help us to benefit of the faithfulness. So he's not faithful because you prayed. He's not faithful because you fasted. He's not faithful because you are coming from a, 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 a home of pastors and prophets and all. He is faithful because that is who he is. By personality, he does not change. That is his character. That is his quality. He is faithful. Whatever he says, he does. And then he's faithful because it is his character. He expresses himself by doing the things he says. In Genesis 1, we see that he expresses himself by doing the things he says. He says, let there be light and there is light. He says, let there be a firmament and we see it and it is so. He says that let the, the waters bring forth fishes, bring forth birds and all. And it, it is so. We see it. He, he, he speaks about making man. And it is so. Hallelujah. So it is an expression of his character. That makes him faithful. It is not on the ground of, of any human action and strength. That makes God faithful. Hallelujah. So if that is the case. Does it mean that we shouldn't pray? Does it mean that we shouldn't study the word of God? Does it mean that we should sit there and wait because God is faithful and does not need our prayer to be faithful. No. What I'm saying is that if you fail in going to the bank with a check, you have the money but you will not enjoy it. If you fail to engage the Lord by his word and in prayer, you have the children but you will not see them. If you fail to engage the Lord in prayer by his word, in the knowledge of him, you have the healing, but you will not enjoy it. You know, because even in, uh, on the matter of healing, he says that by his stripes we were healed. 
He never said that by your prayer, you are healed. He never said that by your fasting, you are healed. He said that by your stripes, you were healed. You appropriate the, 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 the promise and the fulfillment of it by prayer. So James says that the prayer of faith will save. The prayer of faith will save. But it is not the prayer of faith that, that necessarily causes God to bring salvation. Salvation is there. But the prayer of faith helps you to access that salvation and enjoy it. Hallelujah. And this afternoon, I seek to bring your attention to the truth that God is willing. God is willing. God is willing to, to make you enjoy all the promises that he has, he has given. The promises of the new covenant, God is willing. The promises that are packaged in his salvation. So if you are asking that all this while I've been trusting God for marriage and I'm not seeing anything, God is willing. As far as his covenant is concerned, the new covenant is concerned, God is willing that his children will marry. Hallelujah. He's willing that his children will multiply. God is willing that if there is anyone who is looking out for healing, God is willing that that person receives healing. God is, is, is not, you know, waiting somewhere and wanting you to impress him so that he will become faithful. He is faithful. He has honored his word. And we, we just need an attitude of engaging these promises of God with the understanding that he's faithful. And that on the grounds of that, we engage the mysteries of God that helps us to benefit of his faithfulness. So how do we position ourselves to receive of his faithfulness? How do we position ourselves to receive of his faithfulness? And I think I've mentioned them even in what I have been saying in prayer. We position ourselves to receive of God's faithfulness. In prayer, we position ourselves to reap of this faithfulness, to see the fulfillment and the manifestation of God's faithfulness in our lives. As we engage the Lord in prayer, what we are doing is that we are, we are declaring that we believe that God is faithful. As we engage him in prayer, what we are doing is that we are coming to him because we know that he is the only one that can do what we are looking for. He actually has done it. And in the place of prayer, we engage him to see. So it's like, when you understand this, the way you pray will change. So it's not, it's not like you are going to God to ask for a child. You go to God because you know God has given you a child. And you are looking for the translation of that child in the realm of the physical. Hallelujah. You are looking for the tangibility of the child in the realm of the physical. So it's not like you are going to, you know, like caress God, ma like massage God, you know, stir God up in a way so that God would give you a child. God has given it. Your prayer is from the, sh uh, uh, from the angle of, of bringing what God has done into the physical, into the realm of the physical, working in a manifestation of it. And we need to position ourselves by engaging the scripture to know him. That is why we went through the covenants God had given and how he has fulfilled these covenants. If we come to the place of knowing this God, it helps us to understand that whatever he has said, he would honor it. So, Isaiah 46, 9 and 10, he says it, that remember the things of old. Remember the former things of old. For I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. He is God. Essentially, he is God. He has the ability. He has the capacity to do whatever he has said. There is nothing that is beyond his reach. And verse 10, he now comes to say that this, this is the will factor. He says that declaring the end from the beginning and from the ancient times, things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. And I said that the promises of God are the pleasures of God. God's promises are his pleasure. So God, God finds pleasure in fulfilling his promise. God finds pleasure in giving you a child. God finds pleasure in giving you marriage. God finds pleasure in, 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 in fulfilling every promise that he has spoken. That is his pleasure. His pleasure is to fulfill every promise that he has spoken. 
So as we engage the scriptures, what we do is that we come to the place of the knowledge of him and the knowledge of his character, the knowledge of his personality, the knowledge of his ways and how he fulfills his word. Hallelujah. And lastly, we need to position ourselves by way of obedience. When we look through all the men that God gave his covenants to, any man who reaped the covenant of God, you'd realize that he plugged in the card of obedience. And these three things I'm, I'm mentioning, prayer, knowledge of him, and obedience, you realize that every covenant that was fulfilled, it was on the strength of these three things. Noah, after being in the ark and all, he steps out and he builds an altar. When God had delivered he and his family, when he steps out, the first thing he does is that he builds an altar and he sacrifices to God. It signifies of prayer. It communicates prayer to God. He engaged the ministry of prayer. This man preached for hundreds of years or for hundred years and then he was still holding on to a word that God had given. I believe that this man, if he had not engaged God to know him that much, to know that he's faithful and he would do what he has said, this man would have given up along the line. But I believe that he, he had a certain knowledge of God's faithfulness. He knew that so far as God has said a word or he has spoken a word, it comes to pass. So for 100, of, uh, for 100 years, the man kept at it and he was pushing it. And he saw the fulfillment of God's word as he had spoken. And we see that Noah obeyed. He built the ark. He put in the things that God wanted him to put in the ark. He did it according to the very pattern that God gave him. He plugged in these three things. And, and we see the promise of God fulfilled in his life. We see Abraham. God calls him out of his, his family, out of the land he was living in, out of his kindred, out of every other thing. And calls him to, to a place that he had no, no knowledge of. But this man follows God, obeys God, and God honors his word over his life. This man built altar, built an altar with every encounter he had with God. He lived up prayer to God with every encounter he had with God. This man engaged God to that point of coming to know of him and walk with him. And we see the promises of God over his life fulfilled. We see Moses and we can say the same of him. This man would go, climb up the mount and then would engage God for, for days. He would engage God. This man, he, he was giving the lively oracles. This man was giving this word of God written. He was giving them and, and he, he held on to this word. He, he kept reminding these people of the word of God. He kept bringing them to the knowledge of the word of God. He kept pressing on at, at, at the place where they were faced with a challenge before them and behind them. He still remained with what he knew about this God. So when, when Egypt was after them and when the Red Sea was before them, he still looked up to him because he had a certain knowledge of this God. And whatever God told him, he asked him to be still and see the Yeshua. And this man obeyed. Maybe in our generation, if it were us, we would have started consulting engineers and thinking about how we construct a bridge over the, the sea. But this, this, this man obeyed God. And for many of us, that is the challenge. So we don't position ourselves to reap of the, the blessings of God's faithfulness. So sometimes we are misrepresenting God and thinking that God is not faithful. We are misrepresenting God and thinking that he's not willing to do it for us. But today and this afternoon, we have seen in scripture that God is willing. God is able. We, we cannot say that God is not able. We cannot say that God is not willing. Unless what you are looking for is not what God has said. But has God said it, certainly he will do it. Hallelujah. Can we, can we rise to our feet? Briefly. Can we rise to our, our feet briefly? We want to pray. From age to age. You remain the same 
Adonai, we praise you from age to age. You Proofs that he still remains the same, he's faithful from age, from age to age. Yeah, you remain, you remain the same. I don't know. Can, can anyone lift a case in scripture? That God promised someone, God gave a covenant, and he failed. If anyone can lift just one, one proof of that. Many people have said that God has failed them. But can we, can we even find one example in scripture? Where God gave a covenant, and he did not honor it. From the time of, 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 of Noah, from the time of Moses, from Abraham... He has remained the same. He says a thing and he does it. He speaks a word and he honors it. He says it and he does it. You remain the same, Madonna. I we pray. be out of here. We want to pray to him. We want to pray that we have come to see that it is not true that God is not able to do what he has said. It is not true that God is not willing to do what he has said. So in your case, what God has said concerning you, it is not true that God is not willing to do it. So we are praying that in the name of the Lord Jesus, the Lord would give us that desire, that consciousness that holds on to his word. You know, Peter speaks about a certain expectation of his coming. He says that we must be in, in earnest expectation, a certain eagerness. And we are praying that with this understanding, let it be that, let, let, let it be that we come with this attitude towards his promise, a certain eagerness and a certain expectation in, in looking out for the fulfillment of his promise in the name of the Lord Jesus. We want to lift our voices and make this prayer in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. The steadfast love of 
the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. New You can. 
carry me when some carry the God. You feed me, Lord, when some feed the God. Lord, you fight for me when some fight for the God. Jesus, you know they use me play. Na, 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 na. You know they use me play. Destiny helper, mountain mover, Jehovah, you're my covenant keeping God, life giver, say, life giver, life changer, life changer, Covenant keeping God, covenant keeping God, the city helper, the city helper. You're the mountain mover, mountain mover. You're the covenant keeping God, oh, oh, oh. Jehovah. You're the covenant keeping God, my covenant keeping God, covenant keeping God, oh, covenant keeping God, oh, You know they use me, little. Na na na, na 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 na. You know they use me, little. Na 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 na. You know they use me. You carry me when some carry the God. Father, you feed us, Lord, when some feed the God. You fight for us, oh, when some fight for the God. Jesus, you know the Jesus believe. Na 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 na, you know the useless I put them all in you. My trust is in you. I put them all in you. My trust is in you. I pull them all in you. My trust is in you. Hey, Lion of Judah. My trust is in you. Ancient of days. My trust is in you. I put them all in you, say, I put them all in you. My trust is in you. Hey, 
I put them all in you. My trust is in you. I say I am up to die. My trust is in you. Ancient of days, my trust is in you. Lord, I put them all in you. My trust is in you. For your faithfulness, Lord, I put everything all in you. My trust is in you. My going out, my coming in, I put them all in you, Jesus. My trust is in you. I know I'll make it, I know I'll put them all in you. Because my trust is in you. I put them all in you. My trust is in you. I put them all in you, say, I put, I put them, them all, all in you. Oh, my I trust is in you. I am up to die. I am up to die. My trust is in you. Ancient of days, my trust is in you. I put the morning in say I put the morning in you My trust is in you I put the morning in you My trust is in you I put my faith in Jesus My anchor to the my hope and strength foundation he'll never let me down i put my faith in jesus my anchor to the ground my hope and faith foundation he'll I put my faith in Jesus Oh, my anchor to the ground He's my hope and firm foundation You'll never let me down Great is your faithfulness to Great is your faithfulness to me From the mountains to the mountains I will stay your name Say great is your faithfulness to me Thank you. 
from the rising of the sun, from the rising sun to the setting sun, I will praise your name. Great is your faithfulness, sing. great is your faithfulness, sing to me. We are not you, we are not you, we are not you, Lord. We are not you, we are not you, we are not you, Lord. We are not you, Lord. We are not you, we are not you, we are not you, Lord. We are not you, Lord. We are not you, we are not you, we are not you, Lord. We are not you, Lord. Are not you we are not you we are not you Lord we are not you Lord we are not you we are not you we are not you Lord that's all we are not you Lord we Bye. 
sovereignty of God with, with my friends for some time now. I see how God doesn't need your permission. Whether you will be good or bad, like Osof was telling us this afternoon, to be nice to you. In his sovereignty, he chooses to show you mercy. He chooses to show you love. He chooses to fight for you in your complaints, in your doubts. Sometimes, I'm sure that sometimes you get amazed. You complain about the situation, you doubt. You cry about it, you, you become hopeless and then God answers it. And what's your response? God, in His sovereignty. God, in His sovereignty. He can do anything possible. It will not take you. It will not take your prayers. I, I'm so, I, I was so blessed. Also for Saki, God bless you so much. It won't take what you are doing to get him to be who he is. In you I trust. 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 I sit down and I think about Abraham. God says, present your first son, the promised child. But God has gone ahead oh, to make preparations for the sacrifice. Abraham goes anyway. And the faithful God shows up. I'm the same person that said that I want us to sacrifice your son, but I have made provision. In you I trust. In you I trust. In you I trust. In you I trust. I am glad, oh, I am glad. My heart is calm. You are my. 
my peace I can't be moved by Zion's knees My feet are still I am glad my heart is calm You are my peace I can't be moved like Zion's knees you my own, you are my peace. Cause you are my God, you are my God, you are my God. You are my God, you are my God, you are my God. In you I trust, in you I trust. about tomorrow. Tomorrow would think for itself. Why would he say that? Because of who he is. He's faithful. You are waiting for the allowance. You are waiting for the salary. So something when it delays, how do you still survive? But you realize that salary or no salary, you still eat. Salary or no salary, you will get the transport to go for the wedding. Faithful is he. Faithful is he who has called us. He has proven himself more than necessary. In you I trust. In you I trust. In you I trust. Cause I am glad my heart is calm. You are my peace. I can't be moved like Zion's news. My feet are still. To the one who feels like things are not moving so fast. I am glad my heart is calm. You are my peace. I can't be moved like Zion's hips. My feet are still. We won't try to help God this time around because you are my God. 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 And you I trust for. In you I trust, 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 in you I trust. I met a friend that told me how he has planned his life and how God has just changed things. He's planned that by this age, he should, be, he should have attained this, attained that, attained this, attained that. But he realized that all that he had planned was not the perfect will of God. And you see, he sat down to write all these things. He said when he was 13. And he planned it. But when he compares his, the plans he wrote down and where he is now, you are my God, 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 you are my God. Sometimes we feel like we know better. Maybe when I get a master's, I can get paid very well. Or maybe when I marry, you know, things will be fine. And then when you have sat down and you have planned your own things and things are not happening, then you go to God and tell him that. So can't you see that things are delaying? 
But God never turns his back on us. Say, say, I'm a man in a bar because I call it when you saw the idea. I'm a person, me, your mom. But God doesn't do that. He still has his plan intact for you. You, you will go circles, you will run circles, go up and down. It will you will still come back to the plan. We are serving a God that says, I know. I know the plans that I have for you. These plans are good. They are of good and not of evil. They are plans to take you to an expected end. An expected end is sure. You are my God. You are, you are my God. God. Some of us want to feel that. I think some of us think that when I have 100,000 CDs in my account, that's when I can, I can say that I'm financially sound. Financially okay. It's not about those things. So. It's good to have money. You should have money. You should have money. So when somebody, when you, have, you, you, you are chatting with your friends or you are you are having a good time and then they open their wallet and there's Visa card, there's this card, there's this card, there's this card, there's this card. And yours is just Momo wallet. <laughs> you think God is not faithful? Still faithful. You are my God. 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 You are sitting here. You've gathered some amount of money. And God says, sow the money. Sow it as a seed. And you don't believe that, hey, if I give all this money, I can get it. Faithful is he. I don't know what I'm, I'm saying someone's story. The money is there. God says, don't touch it. Send it. But you feel like if you send, that's your last. So you won't touch it. You won't obey God. But I want to remind you of the faithfulness of God. Send that money. Send it. Send it. Faithful is he. In you I trust. 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 I am glad. My heart is calm. You are my peace. I can be moved like science is. My feet are still. You are my God. You are my God. You are my God. Yes, in you I trust. In you I trust. In you I trust. You are my God. You are my God. You are my God. In you I trust. In you I trust. In you I trust. There's this song that I've been singing in church. And one day when I said, when I sang that first line, God said that, Kaka, I'm not just occupying space. Oh. Because the song says that, you are God, you are not just big, oh. You are not just large, oh. You are a great God. The one I sang, he said, Kaka, look, I want to tell you, I'm not just occupying space. That's how maybe like when, when you think about something is big, it's big, it can occupy. I'm not matter that I'm occupying space. I am God. You are God. 
You are not just people. You are not just without you. You are a great God. You are God. You are not just people. You are not just like you. You are a great God. You are big, 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 big. Large, 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 large. Great, 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 great. You are a great God. You are big, 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 big. He says, in this whole universe, he sees you. You are not just people. You are not just large. You are a great God. You are God. You are not just people. You are not just large. Hey, you are a great God. You are big, 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 big. Large, 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 large. Great, 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 great. You are a great God. Pray that today. <laughs> as we sing about the faithfulness of God, as we talk about Him, as we pray about Him, you receive a new dimension of faith to trust God. I pray that it will not just be the singing of the songs. When you say reality dawns on you, I hope you remember the faithfulness of God. You see that thing that we do? Chale, chale, eh. And you grow, masa, masa. Yanka, real life. I pray that when you say that, you remember the faithfulness of God. I pray. I pray that you remember. I deny it, ding, ding, ding. It's become tough. I pray you don't say that. Let's try and do something. Let's try and help God. I pray you remember that God is faithful. He won't lie to you. He won't lie. He won't. He will never lie. Large, 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 large. Great, 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 great. You, you are, are a great, great God. God is not man that he should lie. God is not man that he should lie. Whatever he says, he will do. Whatever he says, he will do. God is not man. That he should lie. God is not man. That he should lie. Cause whatever he says, he will do. Yes, whatever he says, he will do. This song reminds me. God tells Moses that you are going to deliver the people of Israel, but doesn't tell him how he will do it until they get to the Red Sea. What are we going to do? 
But the word is, you will deliver the Israelites. God is not meant that he should lie. God is not meant that he should lie. Because whatever he says, he will to do. Yes, whatever he says, he will do. God is not man, God is not man. That he should lie. God is not man. That he should lie. Because whatever he says, oh, he will do. As whatever he says, he will do. So I, bet I, 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 I can ask you a question. I don't know what this month you've been asking God for. But first of all, let's take it from what has God said about this man for you. It's, it's just, it, it probably would just be one word. Maybe it's hold on. Maybe it's trust me. Maybe it's wait. Maybe stand still. That one word. That one word, wait. Stand still. Just that one word. <clears throat> Pick it. Pick that word. He says, wait. They are all journeying ahead of you. He says, wait. That's the word. You see, it's not defined what he's going to do. But the word is what? Wait. How he will plan it, how it would come to fruition, you cannot see it. But whatever he says, he will do. So if he's asking me to wait, I won't help him. Whatever he says, he will do. Whatever he says, he will do. Whatever he says. He will do whatever he says. He will do. I finished my national service and I'm thinking that I'm going to look for a job to do. And I go to church and God says that the next move is go, go and further your education. And Master's Day, you know that it's 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000, 10,000. So in my mind, I'm like, hey, my siblings are still in school. How are we going to do it? But the faithfulness of God. I put money together and then I buy the admission, the, the admission forms, fill the form. Not knowing how, when the money will come. Then admissions are in. I'm admitted. Yenchia school fees. You know that I didn't have to sit down to cry that God, you said I should come. Now I've applied and what are we doing? I'm sitting nice. I'm sitting in in the in the I think I was in I was still at Saba. Yes. And I received a call. <laughs> and the woman parks her car, says, Kaka, come and sit. And says that I'm coming from a meeting. And God says, I should bring you this amount of money. And it's the exact amount of my school fees. He will do whatever he says. I didn't. Ah. He will do whatever he says. He he will do whatever he says. He, he will do. I start the year 
And I challenge myself. 2023. Last thing. I said, God, I want to pay this amount of tithes in the church. I want that by the time the year ends, I would have given this amount of money as seeds. As I, as I was saying, it's not as if I had some dollars in my account. I did have some money, but like the target I had was way above. When they gave me my tight card the end of the year, whatever he says, he will do. Whatever he says, he will do. You see, sometimes eh, we, we don't, you, you've been giving offering five CD. You've not challenged yourself. If you remember the faithfulness of God, eh, you can, you can take some of these faith journeys and it will happen. You see how God will show you how faithful he is. When I calculate the tithe and the money that are, have come in, oh, God is not man. That, you see, I want to say this. Let me say it. Church people, let, let's, let's talk. So you, how long has it been? Five years that you've been giving 10 CD. You know why you're not moved forward? You don't think that God can move you from 10 CD to 50 CDs. You don't think so. You don't think it's possible. That's why you have not changed your mind. That's why you have not changed your, 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 your offer tree. I'm not fighting anybody. I want to encourage us. He's faithful. You make up your mind that this year, we are done with the one CD, two CD, five CD, ten CD. I'm stretching my faith, Father. Fifty CD of a tree. You just say it to faithful God. He won't fail you. He will do whatever He says. He will do. I've always been saying the story that my father sees a bare ground. Then he uses his leg to do. This is where the kitchen will be. <laughs> this is where the hall will be. This is where this will be. He's not, there's nothing happening though. There's no blocks. There are no cements. No ironing rods. Hey, hey, iron, iron rods. What again? Roofing tiles. Nothing. It's bare ground. Bare compound. He's not even seeing man. It's not like, oh, maybe I have a friend who's a, a contractor that might give me some blocks, some sand, you know, nothing. He just steps out one morning and says, This is it, this is how I want. I want this one to be here. I want, and it has happened. He's faithful. He's faithful. He adheres to his promises. When God promises a thing, he will not fail you. So what has God told you? What has he told you? Whatever he says, he will do. God says that I have made you a prominent man. You don't believe it. So it won't happen. Not because God lied to you. You didn't believe it. He will do. God says that you will travel around the world preaching the gospel. It looks so big. But that's our faithful God. He speaks big. Whatever he says, he will do. Whatever he says, he, he will do. God is not man. Ah. I'm sure that some, I, I remember my uncle came to visit us. Then he asked us, what do we want? Everybody was saying, I want this, I want that, I want this, I want that. It's been 20, 20 something years. I don't know whether, whether that thing I asked him, it will still come. But God, God is not man. 
that he should lie. Maybe my uncle didn't plan to lie to me, but where is the taste? It's not here. But God is not man. That he should lie. Whatever he says, he will do. Whatever he says, he will do. You always come through for me. Amazing God, oh, you always come through for me. Amazing God, you always come through for me. Amazing God, oh, you always come through for me. Amazing God, amazing God. Amazing God, oh, you always come through for me. You're an amazing God. Mind blowing testimonies, jaw dropping miracles. You do, you always come through for me. Amazing God. Let's rise to our feet. Amazing God. Brother, you always come through for me. You're an amazing God. Amazing God. Amazing God. You always come through for me. Amen. Take a, a sheet of paper. A sheet of paper. You always come through for me. Amazing God. You always come through for me. Amazing God. You always come through. write today's date. Amazing God, oh, you always come through for me. Amazing God. Please, are we done? Today is 3rd, 3rd February 2024. You always come through for me. Day three in February. So write three things. Faithful God. Listen to me. Three things. Faithful God is done for you. What I'm saying, I'll explain. What I mean to say is that you've not seen it, but write it like it has happened. There's some people in there, the camera people are you writing? Family, I be writing. Write to three things he's done. Three, three. Three, he's done. He's faithful through the ages. Huh. Three, three. He 
if you remember what Osofu Saki said, says if you have not gone to the bank, you have the ATM card, but you won't cash out that money. You are doing that right now. Please, are we all done? Three, you just three. If you write too much, you are not right. Just three. Please, let's rise to our feet. I beg you. And let's leave the paper. Okay, you can lift your book. waiting for you is two minutes, two minutes, two minutes, two minutes. Family, are we through? Jesus thank you on this account of your faithfulness we have written we have written these three things in assurance that you are faithful in assurance that you do not lie assurance that whatever you have said you will do so as we gathered here we thank you that everything written in our book signed dated is done to your glory you for mind-blowing testimonies even before the month of February ends thank you for jaw-dropping miracles why because you are amazing why because you are bigger than what we wrote in our books you are greater than what we wrote in our books We have trusted you. We have believed you. We have taken this step. Thank you for honoring your word. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to sing this song before I take my seats.
faithful. Hold him. And let's trust God's word for a manifestation. One thing you've been trusting God for since you started coming here. Can you lift up your hands to God and lift up your voice and pray. also mentioned another one my Messiah he is willing to bless hey, my, my Messiah he is willing to bless he is able to bless he is able to bless my Messiah he is able to bless set a tone for prayer Dr. Dono will come in and he would lead us to pray and that is how we would wrap up this edition of a day with him hallelujah how many believe God's word I find it quite interesting when I hear that even concerning healing we are not healed because we prayed but by his stripes we were healed you know the the name Rafa actually means relax and receive <laughs> relax and receive so I ask myself that so why are we sick then it means we can't even relax then it means we don't even know how to receive because the things that are being told us they, they are scary I don't know about you I'm, I'm writing things in my notes and my hand is shaking because we need to have the experiential dimension of these realities we hear it must not be that we are in a lecture hall or we are tracing history and it is not reflective in our lives no praise God hallelujah hallelujah I'm going to challenge you a little this evening Dr. Adonu is in hallelujah a research was done on the scriptures and a total of 8,810 promises were counted. 8,810 promises were counted in the Bible you have. I want to say that again. 8,810 promises. Seven thousand four hundred and eighty-seven of these promises God himself made to man hmm. please can I take it again I want us to pray eight thousand eight hundred and ten promises are found in the scriptures Seven thousand four hundred and eighty-seven 
of these promises God himself gave them to man percentage wise 85 percent of all the promises in the Bible were actually made by God himself there are 290 promises made by man 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 made to God mm. I said 290 of these promises man made to God please I, I hope you are with me I said 7487 promises God made to man 290 promises man made those promises to God this is interesting majority of the 290 promises specifically 235 of them are found in the Psalms you find David make majority of those promises I'm trying to prove to you that the promises established in scripture are God himself presenting those promises to man God himself oh so like what you find in Psalm Psalm 51 verse 15 he says oh Lord open down my lips and my mouth shall show forth thy praise promises like that were what man made he said God if you open my, my lips I'm making you a promise I will praise you so those are the category of promises that fall within the context of the, the, the ones men made 28 of the promises in the Bible were made by angels 28 most of them 23 of those promises are found in Luke and I'm sure you can get why it's in Luke <laughs> hallelujah praise God one of such promises is in Matthew chapter 28 and verse 7 when the angel said that he goeth before you into Galilee there you shall see him he gives a word that you shall see him then he adds I have told you hallelujah there are nine promises made by Satan nine nine the example of that is in chapter 4 chapter 4 and verse 9 I just put in your heart he said all these things I will give you if you fall down and you worship me he was giving an offer he was making a promise hallelujah praise God two of those promises were made by an evil spirit like what we find in 2nd Chronicles 1 20 and 21 he said then there came out a spirit and stood before the Lord and said I would entice him that, that's a serious one hallelujah then two of those promises were made by God the Father to God the Son One of 
the books of the Bible has no promise at all. The book is Titus. Hmm. Hallelujah. Now, watch it. The New Testament has a thousand one hundred and four promises. Thousand one hundred and four. The New Testament. Then the Old Testament presents seven thousand seven hundred and six promises of God. The New Testament has thousand one hundred and four. The Old Testament has seven thousand. 706 promises of God. This will tell you that don't, don't say you will not read the Old Testament. This actually means that 7 out of every 8 promises are found in the Old Testament. Mm. Mm. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, have over a thousand promises in there. Hmm. A total of 3,086 in these three books. Of all the promises in the Bible. Thank you, Jesus. Most of them most of them like what is in Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14 he says behold a virgin shall conceive oh and bear a son and call his name Emmanuel it's interesting that most of them have already been fulfilled thank you Jesus there are some verses in the Bible that has about four promises in a verse like what we find in Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 31 thank you Jesus the chapter with the most promises is Deuteronomy chapter 28 it has the most promises in the Bible 133 promises refer to the blessings and cursings God promised Israel when they would reach Canaan according to whether they would obey or disobey his commandment thank you Jesus holding on to your promise I won't let you go oh I'm holding on to your promises I won't let you go Holding on to your promises, I won't let you go. Lord, I'm holding on to your promises. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Praise God. Come with me to First Kings chapter eight and verse fifty-six. First Kings chapter 8 and verse 56. He says, Blessed be the Lord who has given rest to his people Israel according to all that he promised. So he references the rest and he speaks and says that this is in accordance with what God has said. Now look at what he says next. He says, there has not failed one word. Oh my God. Sometimes we doubt even his sentences. But <laughs> scripture is saying something profound. He says, there has not failed even one word of all his good promises. Not even one word has failed. I need some people to leave this meeting today and go and find the word God has given which he promised through his servant Moses. He says, not even a word has failed. Not even a word. Not even a word. Not even a word has failed. Hallelujah. 
let me wrap up with 2 Corinthians chapter 1 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and please come with me to verse 18 verse 17 I'll do 17, 18 and I'll please jump to verse 20 now he says can, can I get it in the amplified if you, you, you have it he says therefore when I was planning this God bless you now because I changed my original plan was I being unstable or capricious or what I plan do I plan according to the flesh like the worldly man ready to say yes yes when it may mean no no 18 he says as surely as God is trustworthy and faithful and means what he says <laughs> the man of God is revealing a very serious dimension of God he says just as this God in, in, in one particular verse he brings out all the meanings of God's faithfulness he says as surely as God is trustworthy one and faithful and he says and means what he says our speech and message to you have not been yes no like we are not sure our message has not been like that our message is clear because what we are speaking is the truth we are not choosing a neutral ground so we can say it is well with you we are not saying that let's let's check and see we are not guessing your future we are not guessing what god has said we are not looking at the weather we are looking at the one who has spoken When you are not too sure of what you are saying sometimes you can you can say that about around uh, I'll be there around right because you are not sure but the one we are talking about he's so sure of what he says he knows what he's saying nothing takes him by surprise so his word to us it's not yes and no or maybe no no please come to verse 20 and let me end look at it this thing is quite serious kindly note this scripture and use it as a weapon he says for as many as are the promises of God they all find their yes and he's speaking about their answer in Christ all their answer is in Christ for this reason we also utter our amen to God through him now he's telling us about the promises of God he's telling us that in Christ in Christ all the answers are there do you get it so it's not like God is saying it and in Christ he will give an excuse or he will disappoint us Ruby everything he says in Christ the answer is there There wouldn't be any time God will invite you to his boardroom to give you an excuse or an explanation as to why he can't fulfill what he did. He said, no. This is the God we are talking about. This is the one we are serving. So family, I believe that today we ought to crucify doubt. Today, we ought to crucify certain things that shake us. Because in reality, 
our fears don't exist so we can say because he lives we can face tomorrow because he said it our end is his glory that is why I can tell you I am excited about your future I don't need to step into tomorrow first I can start I can stand in today and speak about next year I can stand in today and speak about 20 years to come that's why I've been telling you what our lives our end will be glorious that's why I've been telling you you have to research us because God will do what he has said he's not going to lie those of you who have been following our journey this year this has been a major emphasis God has given us the reality that he is faithful so in those days whenever they said this is the word of God they didn't argue they didn't create room for intellectual debates they said thanks be to God I need some people in this meeting who are saying that it is so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word just to rest upon his promise just to know to know that says Jesus Jesus you are leaving this place with that word be more and more Jesus Jesus precious Jesus oh oh for grace to try so do you know what we do On his word we don't sit on it in English they are not the same if you are sitting on it you are not doing anything with it if you are standing on it it means that it has become your platform it has become your way of expression it means that this is how we are going to face life this is how we are going to do life oh I've started researching this golden book I am finding the promises that are relating to me and I am taking them I am not letting anyone go why he has revealed to us that he who gave us the word is faithful I said it means he's reliable he is true he doesn't change before you can say he's faithful you have to do a mixture of, of his omnipotence his omnipresence his omniscience you have to add all of it together because God must not say I said it but I didn't know that these things will come up no 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 so forever oh Lord thy word is settled let's pick this word Everything is right here in the word. The promises we are looking for. The prophecies we are looking for. They have been given. God bless us. Trust you, oh, how I, I prove you more and more. Hey, Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust. Hey, Jesus. Jesus, 
Can you please be on your feet? Let's pray a little bit. Yeah. I prove you more. She deserves Jesus. Jesus. Precious Jesus. Yeah. For, for grace. Alama Nasahanai. Sing it out. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, yeah. oh, my God, I, I prove you more, Jesus, 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 pray. Holy Spirit for your faithfulness. Oh, I, I prove you more. Jesus, Jesus. All we need grace, grace to trust His word. Oh, for grace, for grace to trust in His faithfulness. Hey, for grace, Hallelujah. Now, now, there is a local song I love. <laughs> it's a powerful song. It says, Now I shall born. Now I shall born. Now I shall born. Oh, you're no quaffle. That's all the song. Now I shall born. Now I shall born. Sing it. Sing it again. Hey, now I shall bow. Hey, now I shall bow. We are talking about Jesus. Dava dava loa sa. Hey, oh, now I shall bow. No, now I shall bow. Hey, 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 hey. Now I shall bow. No. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Sing it again. Sing, sing it to yourself. Hey, now I shall bow. Now I shall bow. Oh, now I shall bow. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, now I shall bow. No, now I shall bow. Yes, way, yeah. Oh, no, 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 Thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Obey, obey, oh. Sing it again. Oh, now I shall be born. Oh, now I shall be born. Yes, we. Yes, we. Zalala, Hassan, and I. Oh, now I say, me bono, now I say, 
Oh la 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 hey. Oh thank you sir thank you sir Adaya Eh wa kana be be bo wa wa kana wa kana wa kana irade wa wa kana be be bo hey wa kana Say, oh no, yes, say, my say, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, Oh no, now I call. Hey, 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 ah, hey, ah, my ah. I love that part. Hey, radio, no, no, be that yo. Na na, apa na na na, so na pi na na na. Good job. Eni pa ni na, be unu wa ubi sega. Ama me ni na ya ya. Hey, join me. That's all you me on the now I can't on the now I saw Oh best I am Oh best I am Mama Mama Hey Hey Radin and Yonya A Padua side Hey I'm on Senina I'm on Senina I'm on Senina and more you know be who and from across the we join your me and our car on our now can now go na 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 samana samana no no say baba bobo aya hey wa kanu e bebe mo thank you jesus hey o nya me wa kanu Yes, you are Kano. Here are the accounts. He did not tell me I'm a curse. I am a blessing. Hey, oh, Messi, oh, oh, oh. Oh, what can a baby mouth say? It is your word, man, what I am. Hey, hello, hello. Wakano, Wakano, eh, here are the cars. Oh, no, 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 I can say be pwe only pen. Can I hear your voice? Say, hey ma la la. If you say okay, then hey, yes I hear you. Ah, I can say be pwe only pen the soul. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 
Sembio, Sembio, Sing it for us all. Fiantula, Hela, 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 He's a faithful God. He's a faithful God. Yeah. Well, it's a prayer. It's a prayer. Yes, well, yes, well, yes, well, yes, well, yes, well, yes, Oh, 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 hey. He's faithful, Nadine. 
is forevermore. Is forevermore. Is forevermore. Is forevermore. Is forevermore. Is always assured. Assured. His faithfulness is guaranteed. Is forevermore. It's forevermore. It's forevermore. It's forevermore. Faithfulness. Faithfulness. It's forevermore. 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 Well, a little low, say ya. It's forevermore. Oh, all power belongs to you. Hello, hey, all power. All power. The reason why you cannot fail. We can trust you because of power, all power, all blessings, all favor, all favor, all the answers. Check it. All the answers, all the answers below. It is with him. All answers, all answers, all answers. Sing it. All blessings. All blessings. All blessings. The blessing you are looking for. It is with Jesus. I don't know why you know that. All power. Do it. Yeah, yeah. All power. For why? You have one, you have one. twice. I have heard, I know, I know, I don't know. For once, you have twice, you have. up your voice and bless the name of Jesus right now all the power all the answers all the glory all the honor all the all the blessings everything that man could ever have need of they all belong to him lift up your voice lift up your voice lift up your voice praise the one who is ever faithful praise the one who cannot lie praise the one in whom there is light and in that light there is no darkness of a soul lift up your voice let praise arise bless the faithful one bless the faithful one bless the ever faithful God to Melai Radadaba Dua Pinanos Ikon Lebrede Ayayayaba Sunaba Aron Lebrede Thank you Lord Adadai Amenofola Renene Mesuada Okevenenai Ibadu Sabrad Adada Brantaya Omeneva Dwan Tulele Wela Losa Manono Wele Laliata Ayo Ayo Oyo Lolo Holo Wele Quemanata Nanama Blasu Maneala Wela Lana Manute Feko Manafaya Wemanaya 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 We call Lobo Bron Sibele Antana we give him an offer, no money and tie. Will a labran to make a balata, yo lo. Will a la lula lo. Oh, Anna, Massa, Manua, Talalea. Oh, come, Manivale, Taya, la, ya, la, la, ya, Tala. Will a la, Panama, Bran, Tule, la, Lusa, Nae. Will Makufa, Naya, la. You are faithful, O Lord. 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 You are faithful, O oh 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 Lord. 
You are faithful, O Lord. I come in a fire, Lord Sanama. Anama Rasulele Ala ya foka. Ayo ayo yo tamira na ayaya tuambe. Waya waya ya kuambe ne ne na anonse manu ampola. We. We come in a fire, Luantana, Nina non sele. We are low, we are low, we are low. We come on a fella lie, a run to Nena mana, who are men and non semen and then a non to low. Well, I look on manaya, why I am a nifele, Umena no namanata no nena, we pana no akumena to anaya, Umana to nara tule, ayo yo yo. Aya banta na na branta, uma na fia nule, akune na ni ato la bolsa ya. Oh, koko la koko ni ma, ume na na mi ato fimi ni ato apaya. Iyo loto no dinara dinanos, hula la ya kuna no sa manana na, akuma na fio lo la lo e a o aya na no sa. Ayo yo lo lo na le ata. Okema, 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 okema. O manana fie, o panina nona, aratuna na, o amvena manana, o mena tuna ma, aratana na na, o akane na non se na. Uela lo, uela lo taya, 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 uela lo taya. You are faithful, Lord. You are faithful. Lord, you are faithful, Lord. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There is a song. Now you can help me. You've been faithful, Lord. Through the ages past, that is why I Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. It's a prayer. You've been faithful, Lord. Hey, hey. From the ages past, I. That is why we bless you. Sing it out, sing it out. That is why I'm there. Look, the truth of the matter is that in the generations of our lineage as children of God, not everybody that God exemplified to us might, 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 uh, might, might talk about God as a, as a merciful one. You know, the guys who were killed trying to save the altar. They may not necessarily, I don't know, but if we should ever meet them in heaven, say, Charlie, how is God? Say, Charlie, ask for God. If you don't mess, if you don't do the right thing, he can strike you. Now, we, you move from one generation to the other, and people might have their own reflections of what God is and who he is. <laughs> Maybe for Moses, the most ideal thing is that, God is a way maker. Maybe Moses will tell all the others. What we sing? you sing? Way maker. As for that one, let me sing it because I saw it with my eyes. But generation to generation, every man that walked with God, they cannot but say one thing. That one thing runs from Abraham to Isaac to Jacob to all the brothers that will meet in heaven to the assembly of just men made perfect. All the song we can all sing together when we appear to him is that you've been faithful, Lord. For what? Through the ages past That is why I am That is why you are here You know, I will preach But I want us to pray the other time, We want to thank God for his faithfulness The other time I was reading the scripture I was, I was studying my Bible and then the Holy Spirit, I mean, I, I don't know if it's the Holy Spirit asking me or I asking him. Now, imagine David meets with Uriah in heaven. And 
and we and we get to heaven and God says that among the people on earth that I love this guy my heart was at time and you will be sitting in the in the congregation and say hey God this one dear when there is time for me to agree this guy David he killed me no that would have been enough but he took my wife after he took my wife he killed me on top of it how I want to imagine how God will explain to this guy called Uriah. How, what would he say? But one thing. So different people have different reflections of God. But one thing is, one thing cannot be doubted. It is the faithfulness of the Lord. You've been faithful, Lord. Help me sing it, sing it, sing it. Through the ages past. Hey, that is why I'm here. It's forever. I want you to help me sing it to him. Oh, you've been faithful. Thank you, faithful God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. We love you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Please take your seat and let's study something. <laughs> now, how many of us can share at least one testimony of God's faithfulness? One. You just have one. From the time of your birth till now, you have one testimony of God's faithfulness. Now, all those who, who may not have, we declare that after this, after this session of time spent with Jesus, may you have a testimony of God's faithfulness in your life. Now, you should not be wary or tired of receiving the promises of God. That's what the man of God was teaching us about. The promises of God. The Bible says that it is through the promises that we get an entrance into God. And, and every promise of God is an opening for us to get an entrance into him. I'm saying that before this, this session of a life with him, receive a testimony of God's faithfulness. Yeah. 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 And so I know that by now, by the grace of God, all our fathers who came, our brothers who spoke, everybody who have mounted this platform, we bless God for their lives. We thank God for the life of the, for the man of God. And we know we've learned a lot about the faithfulness of God. But I want to share with you briefly as we pray and we finish this session, I want to share with you the mechanisms that propel the faithfulness of God. God's faithfulness as a nature is propelled by some mechanisms, spiritual intelligence, mechanisms around him that makes it impossible for him to be unfaithful. Now, it is important that we understand these mechanisms so that God is faithful will not be an anthem alone. It will not be a cliche. We will be able to know what in the spirit we have to plug to in order to, to command God's faithfulness because it is my responsibility as a husband to be faithful. But I'm not supposed to be faithful to everybody. I mean, I'm talking about with marriage. As for faithfulness, I have to be to everybody. I have a right to be I have a responsibility to be faithful to my wife. As for that one, I have no excuse. Now, it is my, it, it is my, it is, it is, it is a task. 
Faithfulness is now, is for me as a husband man in marriage, because of the, of the covenant of marriage, faithfulness to her is not an option for me. Because I am, I am covenanted in this phenomenon called marriage. And that is what I want to bring to your notice that if we are able to find the mechanisms that makes that that propel God's faithfulness, God will be faithful to you. Or better still, He's faithful to all, but you will be able to access His faithfulness. Hallelujah. So, so it's important that we understand the mechanisms, the intelligence that makes God faithfulness relevant and and uh, accessible to us the mechanisms that makes God God's faithfulness relevant and accessible to us the mechanisms that make God's faithfulness relevant and accessible to us now I will go through the anchor scriptures for the theme God is faithful I'll go through it and then we'll discuss there are three scriptures we discussed in this you know session of a life with him number one Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 9 number two we'll read all Number two, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 1 to 9. Number three, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13. Now, Deuteronomy says that know, recognize, and understand. Know, recognize, and understand. Therefore, the Lord your God, He is God, the faithful 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 God. The faithful God, the faithful God, He is God, the faithful. Who keeps His covenant and steadfast love and mercies with those who love Him and keep His commandments to a thousand generations. Aye, what a promise. Some of you, you may not know why God is favoring you so much. Somebody may have done something thousand generations away and you benefit of it. But I thank God that these your, your dedication to God is paving a path for your thousandth generation. Why? Because God, your God, He is faithful. He is a faithful God. So we understand from the Deuteronomy that God is faithful and His faithfulness does not end on with us. It doesn't end with our grandchildren or great-grandchildren. The Bible says that His faithfulness is to a thousand generation. That is fulfilling. The next scripture. Now, now, First Corinthians 1, 9, I mean, First Corinthians 1, 1 to 9. These are the, 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 the quotations we have. So let's read them and then we'll go to our discussions. Paul, called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and the softness, softness. Somebody, somebody say amen for me. I didn't practice this before coming to church, but I've said the word. Our brother, continue. To the church of God, which it which is at Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, with all who in every place call on the name. What we are talking about is not only to the brothers who are in Corinth. The Bible says that this word concerns us as well. Why? Because the word the word is for all those who are called to be saints, with all, all who are in every place. This place is part of every place. Africa is part. Asia is part, America is part, Accra is part, Absidy Chapel is part. On the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both this and ours. Continue. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's go. I thank God always concerning you for the grace of God which was given to you by Christ Jesus. That you were enriched. You were enriched. In everything by him in all utterances and in all knowledge let me announce to you that you are rich in knowledge you, you are enriched yeah the amount of that you have it especially those of us who are students I mean those who are students receive the practicality and the demonstration of this enrichness in the name of Jesus it was given you you were enriched in knowledge and in understanding even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you so that you come short in no gift, eagerly waiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will also confirm you 
to the end that you may be blameless in the day of our, of, of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, God is faithful. By whom you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. God is faithful. God is faithful. The mechanisms that makes the faithfulness of God a practicality to you and accessible to you. The last scripture. Holy Spirit, help us. The last scripture. Now I plead with you. The last scripture, please. 2 Timothy 2 verse 13. Kindly follow me. 2 Timothy 2. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. Why? He cannot deny himself. It is him. It is, it is his nature to be faithful. And he cannot deny himself. So, so we, 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 we understand in all these scriptures that God is faithful. But like I said earlier on, my engagement with you is to, is to help us to know what to plug around the faithfulness of God so that we will be able to get an entrance. It will be real for us and we can benefit of his faithfulness. A couple of things, I mean, a, a, a good number of things may be the, the mechanisms around God's faithfulness. But I want to share two of them with you. That I believe that any day and any time when it is propelled, it will cause God's faithfulness to run to you. Or better still, it will cause you to be opened to God's faithfulness. Now, we start our discussions from the Old Testament. Interestingly, God speaks about a portion of himself. God reveals a, a face of him. That is a blessing to us. Isaiah chapter 42 verse 8. The Bible says that, please follow me. The Bible says that I am the Lord. That is my name, follow me. I will share my glory with no other or my praise with idols. Please follow me. God is giving us an entrance into him. He's giving us a particular level of understanding of his, his nature. And he says that I, I am the Lord. My name is the Lord. I am the Lord. That is my name. Now, the next version tells us something crucial about God. He says, in all the things that identify me as God, there is one thing, follow me, there is one thing I will not share. Very soon we'll understand why this is very important. But God is telling us that, look, and, and I may have said this to your hearing before, but it's important I repeat it. God is able to share almost everything of His. God shares his creation. Now, God is so generous that in the book of Genesis 1, the Bible said after God created all things, he brought the thing to Adam. And whatever Adam called the thing, that was the name. That was what the thing became. God did not name fish or tiger. The Bible says God brought the things. He, he's so generous with his creation that he brought the things he had made to Adam. He says, I trust you. Name them. You know? Name the things. Name them. And whatever you call them, I have, have decreed it. It's cleared. So God shares his air. God shares the, the, the seas. God shares the, the waters above and the waters below. God shares the beds. God shares, shares the ground, the earth. He shares gold somebody said that I mean for some people the motivation to go to heaven is that we walk on gold now if the motivation is gold be careful yeah, because if you don't take care gold will attract you and you will forget the master is still there so, so he shares his earth God shares his son in no particular order I'm telling you some of the things that God can share God can share his only son God can share his spirit. For God is spirit. 
them that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth and God can share his spirit God can share his power God can share his blessings God can even give us a seat the, the, the ministry of reconciliation was given to us but it was the ministry of Jesus God shares his ministry God shares everything that he owns now he has even promised that he will share his own house his home his heaven with us he will not leave us here our ah, friends he will not leave us here friends I said he will not leave us here no this is a good message I'm telling you he will not leave us here he will be faithful to us on earth we are going to enjoy here on earth but he will not leave us here there is a song I love he says I have another world in view in view I have another world in view. I have another world in view. In view, I have another world in view. My Savior has come to prepare me a place. I I have another world in view. It's a good, it's a good message. My Savior has come to prepare me a place. I have another world. When we were going to get married, I remember, you know, I remember the kind. I mean, for about. Some of the ladies do it more than I and my wife got the opportunity to do. My wife was heavily, heavily packed with work. I think that she was now doing her house, housemanship or so. And whatever we meet, we'll be planning uh, how many people will come. I remember that was one of the first times I had a great time with our, with our father and our leader. And he just did a powerful, 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 powerful blessing to my to my wedding. It was, I saw them moving up and down, moving up and down. So, so, oh, when I saw him in the video, I said, I, I never knew that this brother would become a good brother to me. Like I would have hugged him some more than those days. And you know, now you were coming to eat our jollof. You were coming to listen to our music. You were coming to drink our our. Those of you who are going to get married this year. For God is faithful. Men ever than the high Adelos. Man of God, this year, this year, I said, this year, oh, somebody, this year. Now, some of you, you are, you are so wonderful. You know that God is going to be faithful to you. You are hoping for God's faithfulness about marriage. I'm talking about God's faithfulness to you this year, and you are still sitting. Up. I said, this year, in this family, somebody. Somebody is uh, finding Kunto. So, finding for me. Finding for me. This year. How many believe that God is going to be faithful to us in that way? Yeah. It's going to be awesome. But you realize that when you start planning, you'll be planning for people who may, you may never have even seen. Be planning for them. You plan what they will eat. You be planning for their comfort. Your own wedding. You be planning for their comfort. You be planning for what I mean. How you 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 fix ushers. You fix the food. You are talking to the food vendor now. The decor, especially the ladies, they are so much into the decor. I want this place. One of the things that I bought that I still today. I still. How can I say I regret? I don't regret. Do I regret? I don't regret. I cannot even regret. But I something I don't I really don't have a word for that. So my wife says, I want a fresh, fresh flowers rose. I said, Oh, babes, Charlie, the flower you hold it for like six minutes or maximum six hours. That's for them. And she she doesn't want one rose flower. Now has three hundred Ghana cities. She wants the ones that they've packed a lot of roses. She will hold like this. I said, how much? She, she gave me a bill. I said, ah, this, let me invest this money into your future. She says, no, I want to hold it. I bought the flower. We married. I was so careful. In, I was observing the flower every day. I, I counted the days, three days, exactly all the flowers died. I said, ah, this is a waste of my investment. That one, I, I, I don't regret, but still, there's something in there for that flower. Maybe I'll, re, I'll recoup my money later. Now, what I'm saying is that you will be planning for people. You will be making arrangements for people. You will be you you would want the place to be beautiful not only for yourself but for us as well who are coming. Now God is so good. He's given us. He shares everything. Now He shares His Son. 
as a groom to the church as a bride. And just the same way we plan our weddings and we take months to plan. I tell you, God is in heaven planning our wedding with his son and, and he's planning a place we will stay with our son, the bridegroom and with the bride. And God is fixing the, the marriage feast of the, of, the, of the lamb. God is preparing. He's preparing. I look at you how much you can plan. You can imagine how much God is putting into the details. The diamonds and the flowers. You know Rosalinda, the flower here. Yeah, put, I call it Rosalinda flower. God is preparing some to put at a gentleman's here. He said, ah, my wife. Wow! Now you see the man of God in heaven with a flower here. Who gave it to you? My beloved gave it to me. God gave it to me. So God shares. God shares his power. God shares his nature. His nature. His nature. God is love. He shares. You, there are some people you meet them, you see the way they, 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 the way they think, how they, you, everything about, about them, you, you sense God. God shares his nature. But there is one thing. God does not share. And the Bible says that clearly he tells us here that now follow me, please follow me, follow me. He says that I will share everything with you, but one thing I will not share. What is that thing? Oh, the church is not my enemy. What would God share with any man? His glory. God will not share his glory with any man, for glory is a currency in the spirit. God does not share his glory with any man. What caused Lucifer to have a problem is that he targeted God's glory. He said, I will ascend and become like God. God says, oh, as for this one alone, I can't allow you to stay here. God does not share his glory. I'm talking to you about the mechanisms that makes God's faithfulness available to you and accessible to you. And my foundation is that, the, don't forget this because the foundation we are using is that God shares everything. God can share anything. But one thing he will not share, clearly stated in scripture, he will not share is his glory. Is that understandable? Now, on this, on this understanding, we realize that we realize that God's glory is an access into his faithfulness. God's glory which is unshareable, he contends for his glory, is, is, is a principle of one of the mechanisms around God that we at any time, any day can tap into to be able to access at will. His faithfulness. How? 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 Let's go to the book of Philippians. Our principle, our foundation is that God shares everything, but one thing he will not share. And what is that thing, church? God bless you. Now, now, in the book of Philippians chapter 2, let's start from the verse five please follow me please follow me the foundation we've had is that and you don't have to forget this because we'll come back to it we will come back to the book of isaiah that says that god can share everything with man he can share everything with anything but his glory he will not share now we are learning that this is a principle it's a mechanism that allows us entrance into god's faithfulness we actually are talking about god's faithfulness but there are mechanisms that makes the faithfulness of god accessible a mechanism making the faithfulness of god accessible to us at will and we can benefit of it. Now, follow. The Bible says that, let this mind be in you. Follow me, follow me. Please, follow me. Let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. Verse 6. Who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. 7. But made himself of no reputation now we may read this thing so simply but it's not that simple God becoming man is the deepest revelation that a man can find a man can get and a man can understand about God this this mystery but 
I am not so focused about the mystery because I want to use the mystery to, to, to open up this issue of the glory of God so that we can have access into the faithfulness of God at will. For God is faithful and he'll be faithful to you. All right. But he made himself of no reputation. If you understand what that means, it means that God who... Now, I mean, if I had any kind of reputation at all with you, if you had any kind of respect for me at all with you, then imagine that I came to the service and I'm preaching and, and, and as I'm preaching, I, I take off my shoes, I hang them around my neck, I take off my trousers and I, I, I hang my trousers around my neck, I take off my shirt and, and everything that could have caused you to respect me is gone. The Bible says that that is what he made himself, he made himself of no reputation. Taking the form of a born servant, Jesus, taking the form of a born servant and coming in the likeness of men. Verse 8. And being found in the appearance as a man, he still humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death so that the creator, he's been killed by the creator. Like I have an argument with Kobe and we are trying to, I'm trying to bring his understanding to something and, and for some reason I say, you have won. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death. Even in death on the cross, of the cross. Verse 9. Now, now, the next verse is so important for me. He says, Therefore, what is the wherefore? The wherefore is all that Jesus has done. All the things that Jesus had to go through. Every pain that he, every disrespect, I mean, every disrepute that he had to, to bear for all that he had done. The Bible says, for all those prices he paid. Therefore, 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 God also has highly ex what am I doing? I'm bringing your attention into this phenomenon of God. This mystery of God called glory. Of which you will not share. So that we can have a perpetual access. A perpetual access. Relevance. You know, the, the faithfulness of God. So that the faithfulness of God will be applicable. It will be evidential in our lives. And we are explaining. The Bible says, therefore, follow me. Just follow me. Therefore, God has also highly exalted him. Wherefore, the wherefore is that all the things that Jesus did for coming on earth, God becoming man, dying, they, somebody slapping him, somebody spitting on him, everything that Jesus did, this is the reward he receives. He said, God has also highly exalted him and given him the name, not a name. When God was giving the Ten Commandments, there was one commandment that was very dangerous. Now, even, even murder, the Bible never said that God will not forgive a person who murders. But there's one commandment that God says, Thou shalt not mention the name of the Lord in vain, for God will not hold guiltless anyone who mentions his name. Now, that, when it comes to murder, he says, That shall not murder, that shall not lie. That shall not commit adultery. That shall not. But what there is one, one, one particular commandment. That one. The Bible said, God shall not hold you guiltless. If you do that, it means that one. If you do it, there's a punishment for you. And it what which one is that? It says, Thou shalt not mention the name of the Lord in vain. Ah, just that. There was the name. The Bible said, so it means that there was a particular name stored in heaven. It was a trophy. The Bible says, For God has given Jesus the name, which is above all every name. That at the name of Jesus. Now, 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 really, this is the emphasis. The glory of God that grants us access into God's faithfulness. So that you, at will, at will, any day, any time, 
you know what, what you can do to propel God's faithfulness for you. I pray that the Lord gives us understanding. Please. What you can do to propel God's faithfulness for you any day, any time, anywhere, anyhow, any who, anywhere. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth. Verse 11. And that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. Unfortunately, many people, when they are quoting that scripture, they end it here. And every time confess. In fact, many people, when they are quoting this scripture, all they say is that, now, 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 for, therefore he has been given a name that is above all names. Now they mention the name, every name shall bow and every time shall confess. No, 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 no. He says that every time shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, that Jesus Christ is Lord, that Jesus Christ is Lord, not full stop, comma, and the, what follows is the best. He said, every time I confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Why? Now, the church, who, who are able to read, can you read with me? Why? Why? To what? To the glory of God, the Father. The Lord help me. Now, man of God, Jesus pays a price. Jesus comes on earth. And Jesus is ridiculed. God becoming flesh and allowing himself to go through so much and the Bible says that God gave Jesus a reward the reward God gave to Jesus was not land God did not give Jesus cars he didn't give Jesus seven virgins he did not give him <laughs> somebody's laughing about the seven virgins you don't know what people are doing for seven virgins eh? it's wonderful God did not give Jesus power. He gave him a name. And the Bible says that, now, the name that God gave Jesus, God instructed that. At the mention of the name, something should happen. And God tied the requirement of, now, the demand of those things happening to something he has told us earlier on. To the only thing God will not share. God intentionally tied the action of the glory to, I mean, the, the, the action of the name of Jesus. Actions to the name of Jesus. God intentionally tied it. He tied it to the only thing he will not share. Ay, ay, ay. And he says that because if I tie the glory in this name to, to my mercy, I may have mercy one day. If I tie it to my love, something, my, my love might, might cause me to, you know, I, I, may, I may relook. But I tie it to one thing that I have vowed. While I tell I, I have vowed that as for this one, take everything. You take, share everything with me. But let me keep one thing. That is my glory. God tied the name of Jesus to that one thing that he will not share. And that one thing is his glory. Now, what this means is that, Holy Spirit, help me. Please, can I have, man of God, please, can I have, can I request for, for three chairs? Three chairs. Now, we are talking about the glory of God, which is an entrance into the mechanisms that will make, that will make the faithfulness of God work any day at any time. Put one of the chairs High, high up here. Please follow me. After this, a life with him. You receive a mechanism that will let the faithfulness of God work at you at will in the name of Jesus. Principle number one we've learned is that God can share his son, right? He can share his cash. He can share his gold. He can share his power. What can God share? Oh, I'm sorry, name Wamio. What can God share? Now, what can God share? One thing he will not share. And now he sends his son. Now, now, can I get somebody who wants to be with God one day to act as God? Man of God, may you be with God one day. We will meet in heaven. Now, take this address. Abraham East. Um, mansion 46 is on the right. Look for me there. 
right by Abraham's place. Man of God, me mouth, me mouth, me mouth, house be over. But oh, Jina, hope you please. Abraham is my is one forty three, is one forty four. Kunto, I thought you were coming to look for a house in this place. You are late. We've shared those blocks already. So we have God. Papa, and your beard quite tells that you can be God. Because we are told that God has a beard. Please sit down. Now, so follow me, please. This is God. Clap for God. Clap for God. Clap for God. This is God. And God sent his only son. Can we have somebody who wants to spend time with Jesus? Clap for Jesus. Jesus Kunto. Wow. It's a powerful name. You know, Jesus was a very slim, nice, tall guy. I'm doing free advert for you. Yeah, clap for Jesus. Now, let me, let me talk about this brother. <laughs> you didn't sit down, Jesus. <laughs> now, now, the Bible says that after all the things that Jesus did, hallelujah, do you have another, another cloth here, another shirt here that you can wear later? That's why you are my friend, so I can do many, many things with you. Do I have the permission to do something with you? I also need a bottle of water. By the way, please, Kunto is my friend. And so it's okay if, if we flow. Any, any, it must not be full, full bottle. Now, look at the, this sweet, wonderful man of God. Follow me. With your permission, sir. Now, this wonderful man of God, dressed, powerful. He was that one playing the, the, the thing. How, how do you call it? The what? She, shekere. Yeah, as we're singing. So it's, it's, you heard how nice the shekere meant. And how it sounded. This good man of God comes to God, comes to F. There's so so many wonderful things. And after that, he is he is disrespected. I don't know if I should point or I shouldn't point. I don't know if I should point or I shouldn't point. I should point. Like Jesus said, that father, crucify me. The man Kunto came to church with some repute, and for no, this is not even an anointing service. It's just simple, simple explanation. Simple. He said, say, "What kind of preaching is this? But you are preaching and pouring water on people. You are disgracing them in front of all the audience in the world." Look at Kunto now. I wish I had coke or sobolo because I'm told that blood is thicker than sobolo. It's a, it's a mystery. And the man, Kunto, who is representing Jesus, came into this church with some form of honor. Look at him. Now, water has been, has been poured on him, disgracing his nature. Kunto, can you remove your, your shoe? And put the shoes on your head. The man who, a pastor of God. A man of God. Do you mind removing your socks as well? Now, his father is seated though. He's watching everything. Can you put your sauce? After all this preaching, I will explain. We, I will, I will apologize. Can you put one of your socks? I was going to say put it in your mouth, but I am having mercy on you. How many think that he could also put a socks in his mouth? Now, if you believe that it's a good way to preach, say amen. Man of God. They need mercy. But you put just one of your socks in your mouth. When we say wash your socks, you think we are saying we are, we are worrying you. And carry your shoes. I'm looking for any other way I can make Kunto a man of no repute. Now, Kakra Impo. This is, this is okay. This is really, this is, this is, this is, it's mild. I want to call one person who wants to slap Kunto. For the sake of preaching, it's for free. Come. The, the man of the house has told you, I will train. But you know what? Now, follow me. Follow me. You see, God was seated in heaven. Now, all these things we are talking about, it was being acted before him. He could have told the Roman soldiers, I will train. I will train. This is just, it is, I'm trying to do something like take your time. You know why Eja is telling the guy to take his time? Because he cares for him. 
He, can, he loves Kunto. Some of you are even saying, ah, this is just a preaching. Why are you letting him go through all this? This is, you can just say it. And, and the angels were saying the same things to God. Say, ah, God, this is just a, you, you, you can do everything. Why would you have to make Jesus go through what he's going? Our, our leader could not allow the gentleman to try. To try. Just try. Slap it. He will not allow. But God sat in heaven and allowed it. I want one lady with this preaching. This one, I'm going to ask the man of God to give me the permission. Just one lady, come and spit on Kunto's head or on his face. He's preaching. He, 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 will not, he, will not, he will not hold this against you. How many of us can do that? How many can try it? Okay, don't spit. Put water in your mouth and, you know, spit the water. How many of us can try it? Should I choose somebody in this house today? Can I have a volunteer? You know, as human as you are, you can't allow it to happen to Kunto. Even though you know that it's just, it is just, it is just for, for, you know, for, for practice sake, you will not allow it. But God sat in heaven and allowed all that on Kunto, on, on Jesus. And so the Bible says after, because God allowed these things and because all these things happened to Jesus, God rewarded Jesus with a name. Follow me. And he said that at the mention of this name, every knee shall bow. I'm saying that after this, a life with him, you will receive access into the faithfulness of God. You will have the plugs so that when at will, at will, God's faithfulness will, will open. At will. The Bible says that therefore, after all these things that you, you, are, you have been graced not to have gone through by the man of God, you, have been, you would have been slapped. Somebody would have spat on you. You would have felt it a bit. All of us could have, could have had a sense of it. The Bible says, God also gave him a name. That is well preached and well understood. The Bible says, at the mention of that name, all knees, knees in heaven, Knees kotoje on earth and kotoje under the earth must bow. Because you wanted to slap, you will be a knee under the earth. Glory, glory, glory. So, man of God, a knee under the earth. Come, please follow me. Come here. We need a knee on the earth, my brother. You help me with the chair. And a knee in heaven, sweetheart. Please come. All these are knees, knees in kotoje. And every tongue must confess and bring the scriptures back. It says, and every time should confess that Jesus is Lord, but it did not end there. He says, when they confess that Jesus is Lord, when they confess that Jesus is Lord, there is a glory that must emanate from the sins. And that glory must, he says, to the glory, not to a glory of God. He said, to the glory of the Father. Now, meanwhile, that glory, the Father has announced that I will share my son. You can treat him any way you want. But one thing I will not share. It is my glory, my pride. What makes me God, I will not share it. So what happens is that when there is a Christian, Prayer warrior, please come. Follow me. When there is a Christian, you may sit. You are receiving access into the faithfulness of God right now. When there is a Christian, please what's your name? Ruby, are you a Christian? Now, Chris, Ruby is a Christian. And Ruby is, is praying. Praying. And the knees under the earth demons Ruby maybe when you stand it will be better demons like some people preach demons in your mother's home demons in your I don't subscribe to those things but demons in your father's home uncle your hometown whatever now these demons let's say that they are they are tormenting with Ruby they are Ruby I don't know what is the request of you? I don't know what, what is your request of your heart. I don't know what you need God's faithfulness to act on for you. I don't know. But let's say that whatever it is, it has been what 
just for, for by an example, it has been captured by by the knees under the earth, and these knees are fighting with Ruby. Can you try and fight with her? You break her down. You 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 handle her with care. Now, you for the account. Knees on the earth. What are some of the knees on earth? Sicknesses, examination. Help me. Examination. What else? Depression, poverty. What else? Breakups. What else? What? Delays. What else? Depression. What else? Control says hunger. What a Jesus. Fasting. What else? What else? Failure. What else? Financial issues. And there are knees in the heavens, whatever they may be. Now, they are fighting Ruby as a Christian. Ruby, you may be here. Now, all of you, try to battle here. Be gentle. Now, this is a picture of what happens in our everyday life. You know, truth is that one way or the other, we all face little, little things that we want God's faithfulness to appear for, right? So, all these things are fighting Ruby. Ruby, can I get a microphone for Ruby? You're going to be praying. And the whole of a, a life with him will be praying with you. There is something about the glory of God. If we are able to tap into it, we can access the faithfulness of God at will. So, Ruby is praying. And all these things are fighting her. Many, many things are fighting her. Fight her. Fight her. Fight her. Fight her. And Ruby is praying. She's praying. Oh God, help me. Oh the Lord. Lord, help me. And, and she goes for a life with him. And, and, and Eja is praying for her. And the entire team is praying. All, the, all those of us who love Ruby, can you pray with Ruby right now? We, if we love Ruby, let's pray with her right now. Let's pray. Megava. Do, do you really love Ruby? Do, do you want a miracle to happen to Ruby? Now, now pray for Ruby. Pray for Ruby. Pray for Ruby. Pray for Ruby. And as Ruby is praying, she now shouts, pay attention. The Bible says that Papa God has given his son a name. At the men who mentions the name? Jesus is not sitting in heaven mentioning Jesus. Jesus, he's not doing that. The name Jesus has been given to Ruby as a weapon. The weapon of the name of Jesus is supposed not to defeat demons. It's a lesser part of the whole equation. The weapon, the name of Jesus has been given to her so that it will propel the faithfulness of God. Now, faithfulness means that God will not lie. He will not change. So, there is a mechanism that should work around here. There is something between the Father, Nana being the glory. Now, what is the glory? It is one thing God will not share, right? So, between the Father, who made Jesus go through all he went through, and the glory... The father has promised before Jesus came in Isaiah that this one I will not share. As for glory, I will not share. And the father has said that I have given, I've tied the glory to my son's name. So that at the mention of the name, who mentions the name? And who is Ruby? Oh church, who is Ruby? Who is Ruby? I wish that you said it's me. Who is Ruby? It's me, you, the Christian. And so the father says that whenever Ruby mentions the name, the glory that should come, for instance, if it's sickness, if sickness is tackling Ruby and Ruby mentions the name, the name is supposed to bring a glory. What's the glory? The glory is that Ruby should be healed and that should bring glory to the name. So I'm sick. In the name of Jesus, I'm well. Now, now, once I said in the name of Jesus and I became well, the, the name Jesus has received the glory, true or false? But that glory, the Father says that that glory should not, the glory attached to the name should not go to the man of God. It should not go to the prayer warriors. It should not come to Ruby. The glory should not even come to Jesus. The glory is the soul preserved of the Father. And for this glory, the Father says, well, I, tell I, I will not share with anybody. So as Ruby is fighting and praying, and all of us are praying with, with her, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray with Ruby. And sicknesses, di diseases, delays, and problems are worrying. I don't hear the prayer warriors, so I don't, I don't hear them. They are worrying Ruby and all the... <laughs> 
<laughs> and all these things are one ruby. And ruby shout in the name of. Do you know what happens? As soon as ruby shouts, the father gets up to defend his glory. The father looks at sicknesses. At this point in time, then the 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 glory, the glory about healing is not for Ruby. That Ruby is a powerful lady. No, the glory is not to the man of God, Apostle Chumesi. He prayed for me and I got well. No, no, the glory about healing that comes through the name of Jesus does not go to the man of God. The glory about, about, about liberation in your financial life. That comes when you mention the name of Jesus. It does not come to, to, the, to, 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 to the church. The glory is something that is the soul preserve of the father. And the father says that for that one, I will not share. So anything that tries to share the glory, like the sickness says, I will not go. Do you know what the father does? The father looks at sickness and says, how dare you? How dare you contend my glory to you? How dare you? How dare you, malaria? How dare you? How dare you? How dare you? How dare you, marriage? How dare you? How dare you, financial issue? How dare you? And let me ask you one question. Can demons contend the glory of God? <laughs> Can delay contend the glory of God? Can sicknesses contend the glory of God? Hence, the glory of God opens us to one first mechanism. And that mechanism is the name of Jesus. At the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the... And the Father says, my glory I will not share with anybody. When you mention the name of Jesus, the faithfulness of God is pricked. He must prove he's faithful. Not even for you. For his own glory. Is somebody understanding something in this year today? I said, bring that scripture back. We'll all read it. And right now, we'll act it. After you act it. Now, at some point, when you pray, finish your prayer by shouting, in the name of Jesus. When he shouts in the name of Jesus, some of you should fall. Some of you should stand. Father, would you defend your glory? Then you stand and try to fight those ones who don't. Do you understand what we are doing? I want more problems. Ruby, do you have more problems or less problems? You have none. I love that. Clap for Jesus. I have none. But whatever, sicknesses, diseases, whatever, come. It's just an act. act. And come and worry Ruby right now. Come and worry her. And when you are praying, you see, that's the reason why the Bible says that when you are praying, pray in the name of Jesus. There are, there are about 13 scriptures that, that, that gives us a mandate. Say, ask, when you are asked, ask everything in my name. Salvation is in the name of Jesus. That is the reason why many things have been tied to the name of because at the mention of the name of Jesus, somebody's glory is being contended. Ruby, pray. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, now you see that sometimes when you mention the name of Jesus, it looks like some of the symptoms are still there. When it happens like that, call on the glory of Jesus and tell God to contend. Now, let's see the Father in action. 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 Father, act. Amen. <laughs> Father, this, you have power. I don't even think this guy should be able to stand before. But do, do you understand what we are talking about? At the mention of the name of Jesus, the Father's glory is in contention. But I'm here to tell you this evening, God's glory, he will not share with anyone. Now, now hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. When you mention the name of Jesus, the glory is not yours. You'll be healed from today when you mention the name of Jesus, not because you are powerful. Now, a judge may see is indeed powerful, but he doesn't have to be powerful for the name of Jesus to work. I said, the man of God is powerful. But when it comes to the name of Jesus, he doesn't have to be powerful. 
The Bible didn't say that, that at the name of Jesus, those who are powerful will cause the glory to work. No, it said, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess to the glory of the Father. And his glory, he will not share. So, so you don't even have to feel powerful. All you need to mention is the name. Somebody, all you need to mention is the name. Why? 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 Because the name is tied to the glory of the and the glory he will not it is one of the mechanisms of accessing the faithfulness of God. You see, when you understand the name of Jesus, the faithfulness of God will always arise for you. I said, when you understand the power and the mechanism that works around that name, Jesus, the faithfulness of God will always arise for you. In a space of five minutes, I want to give you time. Five minutes to contend with anything that has contended with you with the power. You know, now let me correct this. You know, some brothers, they will be praying. They are so hot in, in, the, in prayer. And somebody says, and they all stop. You have not prayed. You did not pray. There is no seal. There is no reason why the Father should act. Amen. No. The Bible says, when you pray, pray in the name of Jesus. What causes heaven, what causes the Father to act on the things you have said is one name. What will cause that sickness to move is not because you shouted. It's because you mentioned the name. What you cause the answer to come is not because you're a powerful guy. It's because you mention the name and that name is tied to his glory. Do you understand what we are teaching this evening? The power in the name of Jesus is one of the mechanisms that grants you continuous and wavering access into the faithfulness of the Lord. I want to give you five minutes as we pack the chairs back. Five minutes, you are lifting up prayer right now to contend with anything that contends with the faithfulness of God by using the name of Jesus. Lift up prayer right now. Wherever you are, you may want to be on your feet. You may want to be on your feet and lift up prayer right now. Baraka Sambele Hai. Enneve Gadi. Prata Tala Vragonse. Menene. Brigadia. Fanonamai. Atenevelebe. Activate the faithfulness of God through the name of Jesus. Activate. 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 Don't, don't make the name of Jesus redundant. Don't. Don't. Oh my God, oh my God. Don't underutilize the name. Don't underutilize the name. Don't be fighting on the, on the power of your own strength. No, no, no. Contend through the power of the name of Jesus. For at the mention of the name, at the mention of the name, at the mention of the name, lift it up, 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 lift it up. Do war, do war with the name of Jesus. You have a powerful weapon in your hands. You have a powerful weapon in your hands. You have a powerful weapon in your hands. The name of Jesus is your weapon. Lift up prayer. Lift up prayer. Lift up prayer. The name of Jesus is a mechanism for, for availing of the faithfulness of Jesus. For it is time to his glory. Lift it up. Lift it up. Lift it up. Men of I who run to Mecca attende bregoda zebedebedebe bregopaya atumbelele asaya igonzi badadai arantunele igombrende badus vredede bregova abasaya branda Maswamba Dabalaba, a Rada die, a Rada die, a Rada die, a Rada die, who are P, 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 do battle with the name of Jesus. Don't fight, don't pray on your own accord, pray on the accord and the authority 
invested in the name of Jesus. Maratula, Epelele Masua, Natam Rakumana, Uapio, Uapio, lift up prayer, lift up prayer. Opaya, Opaya, Enemene Krunaya, Arantu Lebele, Asola Brakande, Araba Dabaraba, Asola Brengai, Opandi Briado, in the name of Jesus, 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 you like the power you have. Grodo, Grom Minifia, Adobadai, Okom Menemene. Utilize the power, utilize the mechanisms, the mechanisms around the faithfulness of God, the mechanisms around the faithfulness of God. Deploy the name of Jesus, 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 deploy the name of Jesus. Deploy the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Don't stop praying. Pray, 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 pray. In the name of Jesus, we, we, we should be careful we don't lose the power. Let me read a few things to you. Now, it, we, many of us, we have thought that when we shout in the name of Jesus, it's, uh, it's one of the customs and the gimmicks in prayer and uh, when you come to a charisma. No, 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 no. No. The Bible says in the book of John, chapter 14, verse 30, it says, and I will do whatever you ask me in my name. It was Jesus speaking. I will not do whatever you ask me for because you shouted. In my name, in my name, I will do it. In my name. Matthew 18 verse 20. The Bible says, and where two or three are gathered, what makes God come into your presence? It's not because you are wearing nice shirts. It's not because there is a keyboard. It says, it says, it says, and where two or three are gathered. Matthew 18 20. And where two or three are gathered in my name. What makes Jesus present here is because we are gathered in his name. The Bible says, for there is no life in any other name in heaven or, or, or on earth that any man can be saved with except the name of Jesus. Even our salvation is situated not on the name of the Holy Spirit or God. It's in the name of Jesus. So when we pray and we shout in the name of Jesus, it is not one of the gifts of church. We invoke a particular mechanism that causes God to arise to defend the only thing he will not share with anybody. In the name of Jesus. If I would have said anything powerful and loud enough, it wouldn't have been a shout alone. It would have been shouting the name of Jesus with understanding. And as you shout the name of Jesus, the glory of God is contending on your behalf. Every, not because the man of God is powerful not because we shout louder not for the glory of the church not for the glory of Jesus but for the glory of the father and his glory he will not share with any man in the name of Jesus 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 Yes, we abandon this evening. Yes, we Oh, 
every sorrow. Sing with me. Hey. Hey. This way, a dinori, yeah, I want where to my home. Dim be all, yeah, a dinu free. Ah, 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 yes, who did Yes, you did. I am also our wedding. I am also a yabasa. I was a new man in a rock. Say, I was a tranny. Say, I was a tranny. Say, I was a can you put it on me? Yes, you did. I am also our wedding. Oh, yeah, best say, do you understand the name? Say, understand the name, understand it. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. I am also saying, Yes, you did. I am also saying, Do you understand? Yeah, but say, say upon them, you I cannot hear your voice. Hey, say upon you. Say upon you. Yes, I'm ready. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Listen. Oh. Not because we are powerful, but the glory in the name. Mabo, Mabo, Eye. Etimbia Rasin, Etimbia. Somebody mention the name, mention the name, mention the name, mention the name, mention the name with understanding. Etinoma. To me, sir, Mabo, 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 Of God, I will owe him more. Oh, yes, oh, it's in the faithfulness of God, a 
is tied to his name. Hey. Oh, Edino. His name is Jesus, he's the King of Kings. His name is Jesus, he's the Lord of all. He is Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. His name is he. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Are you mentioning the name? Jesus. 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 Watch all the Juma. Watch all the you. Yes, you. Yes, you. Are you mentioning the name? The name. The name. Your friend is sinner, your friend, oh. Jesus. Your friend, oh. Jesus. Hey, your friend, oh. Hey. Your friend, oh, yeah. Hey, I told you. Now mention the name Jesus, Jesus, your friend. Oh, understand the power in the name. What's him order? The faithfulness of the Lord is tied to this name. The faithfulness of God. Understand the power of the name Jesus. Yes, sing it out. I 
Be crazy. Hey, one If you are standing, I don't know. Wamra, 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 sing. Wamra, Mesano. Wamra, Mesano. Wamra, Mesano. Mumbro, Mumbro, Mumbra. Mumbro, Mumbra. Hey, oh, yeah, yeah. Your friend is saying, Hey, oh, your son. Yes, you could so yes, 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 Do you know the name you are mentioning? There is power in that name. Hey. Yes, yes, oh, yes, 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 
Jeremiah and Isaiah
Jesus, over anything that contends with your destiny, your ministry, your life, your assignment, your purpose, God's will for your life. As you mention the name, every knee in heaven, every knee on earth, every knee under the earth that fights against your ministry, fights against your purpose, your assignment, they are falling because there is a glory attached to the name. God's faithfulness is attached to the name. In the name of Jesus. The fifth one, we are mentioning the name of Jesus that brings forth the operationality of the faithfulness of God. Now, from today, anytime you pray and you mention the name of Jesus, not to your glory, not to the glory of the pastor, not even to the glory of Jesus, but the faithfulness of God, which is connected to his glory. Every time that word comes out from your mouth, it shall cause wonders. It's a cause miracles. Whenever that word comes from your mouth, the name of Jesus, it will bring signs and wonders. It will bring a change in the name of Jesus. Yes. Number six, we are shouting the name of Jesus over this land, Ghana. The name of Jesus over the land of Ghana. Ah, you didn't hear me. I said the name of Jesus over the land of Ghana. Northern region, Upper West, Upper East, Tamale. Sunyane, Brongahafu, Kumasi Asante. We are coming down to Cape Coast, Takrade, Accra, Tema. Everywhere, part of this country, we are shouting the name of Jesus over the land of Ghana. Ghana will not see war. Ghana will not see coup. We will not go into fight. We will not go into civil wars. We will have peace. 
who have good leaders, prosperity, potential growth, development in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, hey, 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 I hope you caught this. You caught this revelation. I hope you caught this revelation. I hope you understand that the name of Jesus is a powerful weapon. It is a mechanism that works the faithfulness of God. Now, this is the reason why God is faithful. This is the reason why the name of Jesus. Now, are you singing a song? Edimbenia Mutremio Mutremio. No, no, sing it, sing it. Edimbenia Mutremio Mutremio. Edimbenia Mutremio. Ah. Edimbenia Mutremio. Edimbenia Mutremio. Ah. Edimbenia Mutremio Mutremio. Ah. Thank you. Now we are mentioning the seventh name. The Bible says that at the mention of the name Jesus. Now, this seven mentioning, I will not put what will happen. You will put it. The first one, I commanded what will happen. Second one, I command. Look, the name of Jesus works without the stature of a man. At the, of all the things that Jesus did, God gave him a name. Many Christians are misusing the name. Now, we are praying like people who don't know how to pray. Let me tell you a story. After this, I will give you one minute, two minutes, and you will speak what that name of Jesus will do. You will pray for one, two, three minutes, and after that, I will say, in the name of, and the seventh time, don't think we are doing church as usual. It is not something we've learned from people who, who shall so that people will not attend church either. No, this is where the power lies. This is where God's faithfulness is rekindled. For he will not deny himself. He will not sit down. To allow that small sickness to fight with his glory. He will not. One day, man of God, I've been teaching my little boy to pray. Now, all the prayer I've taught him, I did not even know. That's how many Christians act. I told him that, I mean, we, we teach him, when you are going to pray, when you are going to eat, pray. So he will pray. We, we teach him to pray. Jesus, please bless Kobe's food. He is your dear son. Amen. Now you see that if the food he likes it, he, he likes juice and whatever. The mother doesn't allow him to pray, so he likes when he sees juice and he says, Pray, Jesus, pray. bless God, he is Amen. If he's going to eat breakfast, he hates breakfast. You can fight for two hours before he prays. So the prayer, unknown to me, the prayer I had taught him was, Jesus, please bless Kobe's food. He is your dear son. Amen. Then one day he came to me. And he said, Daddy, is, my, my son hates heat. So he gets heat itch. So he just came and said, it's itching me. And I thought, mm, this is an opportunity I can teach him to pray. If something itches you, pray. One day I came for one of the meetings at Legon. And he just said, as for us, all we know is to pray. Our welcome is pray. How are you is pray. Eat, pray. Drink, pray. How, how, are you fine? Pray. I'm fine. Pray. I, I, I am swagging, pray. Everything is. So I said, I can teach this boy to pray. So he said, it's itching me. I said, pray. He didn't get it. He said, I think he wanted me to scratch for him. I said, pray. He said, daddy, it's itching me. I said, Kobe, pray. Then for about five minutes or so, he accepted to pray. I said, put your hand at the place where it's itching and pray. So he put his hand at the place where it's itching. And the prayer he prayed, it caused me to know that many Christians pray amiss. As soon as I said, I said, pray. He put his hand there. He said, Jesus, please bless Kobe's food. He is your dear son. Amen. I said, God, help me to teach this boy well. The only prayer he knew to pray was, Jesus, please bless Kobe's food. He is your dear son. Amen. So even when it is itching, all he knows is Jesus. But you know, this, this evening, 
the Holy Spirit is telling me that even if Kobe puts his hand at a place he's sick and all the prayer he knows is Jesus, please bless Kobe's food. He is your dear son in the name of Jesus. Now, even if you pray a, 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 a nonsensical prayer and he mentions the name of Jesus, the prayer may not sound well, but, but there is something that causes the prayer to have momentum. There is something that makes the prayer a good prayer. It is not about the sound or the niceness of the word. It is about the seal, the power in the name. What affirms the prayer is the name of Jesus. Now, I'm giving you two minutes. Now, for the seventh prayer, for the seventh amen, you determine what that amen should do. You determine what that, that name of Jesus should do. I'm giving you two minutes, three minutes. Lift up your voice. What should the name of Jesus do? What should the name of Jesus do? The faithfulness of God. The faithfulness of God is tied to the name of Jesus. Now get ready for the seventh time. We are about to mention the name that causes the faithfulness of God to work. Get ready, get ready, get ready. For the last time, you have the opportunity to mention the name that has been given. That is above all names in heaven, on earth, under the earth. That every knee must bow to the glory of God and entrance into the faithfulness of God. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? You mention the name and prolong it. It will cause things to change. Are you ready? In the name of Jesus. It is working for you. The faithfulness of God is working for you. Because he will not sit down to anybody for anybody to share his glory. His faithfulness is working for you right now. Now, if you are watching us, somewhere out there, we bring to you the power in the name of Jesus. Now, in the name of Jesus, I instruct every sickness. Sicknesses of the blood. Diseases of bones. Eye problems. I hear somebody with an eye problem right now. In the name of Jesus, you are healed right now. You are healed right now. Right now. Somebody, you have a back problem. Back problem. Right now, in the name of Jesus, healing is touching your back right now. Somebody, you have an issue of the blood. An issue of the blood. An issue of the blood. Unstable blood. Right now, in the name of Jesus, receive healing. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now take your seat. I told you I will teach you two mechanisms that causes the faithfulness. Somebody, are you blessed in the house of God this evening? You have known one thing that will always cause the faithfulness of God to speak for you. Do you know it? Oh, church, do you know it? What is it? What is it? It propels the faithfulness of God. For his glory is always at stake when his name is mentioned. And that one he will not share with anybody. Quickly before we take the communion, I want to share with you the second mechanism. That will make the faithfulness of God come and work for you at will. Any day, any time, everywhere, anyhow, anywho. Wasem ye me de Wasem ye me do Ye ye Wasem ye me de Wasem ye me de Ye me do Wasem ye me de Ye ye Wasem ye me de Osuma na se Asasi so, oh my, 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 oh
en ce moment, oh, en ce moment, la 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 verse 2 the intelligence and the mechanisms that will cause God's faithfulness to always avail for you number one God's name I mean Jesus' name Jesus' name number two that will be the last I, I, will, I will not I will not bother on this too much I will just finish soon number two the Bible says in Psalm 38 verse 2 follow me please follow me it says I will worship towards your holy temple and I will praise your name for you are for your loving kindness and your truth. Aye. <laughs> Asuma, Just breathe your word upon me. Breathe. breathe. Hey. Just, Just breathe, breathe your word, word upon, upon me. Upon me. Breathe. Breathe. Uh, yeah, I I breathe, Lord. Just breathe your word. Just breathe your word upon me. Bring that scripture. I will worship. Bring it back. Principle number two. It will always avail the faithfulness of God. Always. 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 I will worship towards your holy temple. I will praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth. Why? For you, God, have magnified your word above your name. Ah, man of God, I've used one hour to try to, to excavate the debris over your mind to understand what the name of God is, the name of Jesus is. And I'm blown. Because there is something that is magnified above the name. For the name, his glory is kindled. And he will not share his glory with any man. But there is another principle here. He says that there is something about the name. When God hears the name of Jesus, he must act because his glory is at stake. But there is something above the name of Jesus. And the Bible says that for you have magnified your word above your name. Second mechanism that will always evoke it will at, command the faithfulness of God at work for you is the word God. <laughs> I have I. The word of God. Now, the, the, the depth of revelation about the word of God is, is huge. But if you want to start, perhaps, perhaps, just for today's discussion, we may want to touch. Hmm. Actually, <clears throat> the Bible says that in the beginning, Genesis, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was void and without shape. And darkness was over the surface of the deep. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Genesis chapter 1, 2, and 3. We may have the impression that, I've said this before, maybe you, um, you may have heard it before. You may, we may have the impression that when God said, let there be light, he was talking about the sun and the moon. But no, because the sun and the moon appears in verse 16 of chapter 1 of the book of Genesis. 
So there was a light that propelled energy for creation. That light that God called for was not the sun nor the moon, but there was light. Jesus appears and he says, I am the light of the world. Now, what was light? Light was the word that came. That You know, light was not a phenomenon. It was the word in the beginning, God. We know that God is triune. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. In the beginning, God, we, we see God the Father appear. God created, da 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 And God said, actually, in the beginning, God, God created heaven and earth and earth was, was void. And the spirit of the Lord hovered over the surface of the deep. So we, we have a sense that the, the, the other person of the Trinity had appeared. So we have God, we have the spirit. But we don't see the son anywhere in Genesis. We don't hear Jesus. What we know is that God said, what do men say? Men speak words. When God spoke, somebody came out. The person who came out is called the word. First John says that for there are three things that bear witness in heaven. It says the father, the word, and the spirit. When you go to heaven, the man we call Jesus, he's called the word. Jesus is the word of God. One scripture. Isaiah 34 verse 16. The second mechanism that propels the faithfulness of God. The word of God. He says, search through the book of the Lord and read. 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 Number one, search. Search. Do you have a challenge? Search. Do you have an issue? Search. Are you looking for an answer? Search. Do you want a revelation? Search. 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 Sit down and search. Search through the book of the Lord and read. Search. God's faithfulness are tied with mechanisms and principles. Search and read. Why? Because not one of these words shall fail. No, shall one lack a mate. For my mouth, God says, my mouth has commanded it. And his spirits. Have. The word of God you see like this. God spoke it. And the Spirit of God gathered it, gathered it, gathered it for you. I'm reading the book of Matthew, and I'm learning that it's amazing. From chapter 2 of the book of Matthew, you see amazing things, even chapter 1. Bible says that one day, a girl was in the, her room. She receives an angelic visitation. The angel says, look at how my sister... Sit there very quiet. Pen and one Yes, and, you, and you, you, you have a dream. And in the dream, or in the visitation, the encounter you had, you are pregnant. You, you like, if I imagine you pregnant, it would be very, very nice. And then you come and tell all of us at a life with him that, my friends, by the grace of God, I have been impregnated by the Holy Spirit. I'm pregnant. I, I look. I, 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 I promise you, I did not do anything. But the Holy Spirit, there is. <laughs> I heard from somebody that God is holy. I think in the morning it was uh, Bishop Adam who was preaching. He says God is holy, but we don't call him holy, holy God. Jesus is also holy, but we don't call him holy Jesus. There is something about the Holy Spirit that instructs that you call this one Holy Spirit. <laughs> and that one, that very one who is holy interestingly breaks one of the mo most sensitive laws very very sensitive they say I've impregnated the Holy Spirit has impregnated a girl now look at the discomfort this girl 
even some of us can't, maybe you yourself may not trust yourself. Look at the discomfort she will go through. Nine months of pregnancy. Uh, receive, now, myself and my brother, Azaria's father, will understand what it means. I will eat Osu Wache at 9 p.m. or 11 p.m. Man of God, I feel like eating fried plantain. The baby wants to eat jollof rice. What pregnancy brings? The discomfort that this lady goes through. Now, one person who has not been preached much in the Bible is Joseph. Now, this Joseph receives some dream. An angel is saying that the, the baby is for me. So, take it. Marry this girl. And look at the discomfort that the entire family, the families go through. The Bible says that it is to fulfill the word of God. So, all that God will make, he will make traditions be broken for one thing that his word be fulfilled. One thing. Now, 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 the king killed all children two years and below. Can you imagine people whose children were dying? Also that the word of God, once God spoke it, it must be fulfilled. Peter is saying that, I will never deny you. I will never deny you. Peter says, you don't know what you're talking about. There is a principle in heaven. It will, it will have to work with you. I know your, 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 it, within you, your passion is that you know not deny me. But there is a principle that works beyond your passion. And it's that the word of God. So, so before Peter denied Jesus, he didn't even know. But the Bible says, so that the word of God will be fulfilled. Do you know that God will go every height for his word to be fulfilled? That is the reason why you must have a word. Are you looking for academic excellence? Get a word. Do you want marriage? Get a word. Do you want healing? Get a word. When I say it, you tell yourself, get a word. Do you want prosperity? It will be, somebody is not with me. The second mechanism that will cause God's faithfulness every day to be availed for you is that there is, you, now you understand the power of the, of the name of Jesus, right? But there is something above the name of Jesus. And what is it? The word of God. Look, you can join us to pray for 100 years if you don't have a word. I'm sorry. I can't guarantee. You may fast for so long a time if there is no word for you. If you don't hold a word. Now, we are in the first week of February. If you don't have a word for 2024, you are heading for distraction. Get a... Do you need healing? Get a... Preach with me, preach with me, preach with me. Do you want revival in Ghana? Get a, get a word. Are you looking for a change, a turnaround in your ministry? No, no. Kakra, do you want a change in your ministry? Get a, prophecies are good. Inspirations are okay. But get a word. Get a word. Get a word. Now, as you are seated, what is the word of God concerning your life for 2024? What is the word of God? They in the radia catch up. What have you searched the word? You see, the, what, when God tells us, He says, said, it means that you yourself, you can go, no, no, you don't have to receive it in a dream. You can go and search for it. You can say that concerning my prosperity, man of God, I will search and I will read and I will get. You can go excavate scripture and get the word for yourself concerning an area of your word and, and hold on to the word. Now, pardon my fellow. Now, things are hitting you here and there. He said, I will not go. I am standing by this word. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were trained in diplomacy. They were taken to the court of, of the king and they were trained how to, how to be diplomats. But on the issues of a word, he says, king, let it be known to you for these issues, we are not careful. We have a word. You have been crying and talking for too long a time. You have been jumping from here to here and, 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 and moving, fluctuating in emotions for too long a time. Some of you are coming because you want a prophecy. There is no prophecy that is more than a sure word. Get a word. Get because above the name of Jesus is one mechanism. I will worship towards your holy temple. <laughs> ah, for your kindness and your faithfulness. For you have magnified your word above your name. When you have a word, 
it might take one day it might take two it might take ten days it might take six months maybe one year I don't know sometimes even ten years but I can assure you even if it takes as long as that of Abraham and his wife Sarah I can assure you once there is a word planted in your life I can assure you God will not forfeit his own word get a word get a word get a word I say this as a joke but it's not a joke anymore in church I mean in this day and age there are still people in church who may not be able to recite at will 10 scriptures concerning their life they can't what are you doing here 24 hours for what the promises of God are premised on his word one thing is above his name is a word what is your word concerning your own prosperity what is your word Thank you, Barry. Get a word. Do you, you have a ministry? What is God's word for your ministry? Passionate PA. Get a word. Get a word. Get a word. Get, get a word. Set school. You can, I mean, it, now can we have Google? Set. You set whatever it is. Set and hold on to the word. Hold on. When it's raining, hold on. When it's shining, hold on. When you are weak, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. For we have fished through the night. We caught nothing but at thy word. Get a word. Get a word. Many Christians are praying. Very few have word. Many people are prayerful. Very few are scriptural. There are many prayers, prayers arising. But very few of the prayers are scriptural. But that's one of the things I love about our man of God. Premises prayer on scripture. Friends, if you can get a word. Men think in boxes. We know that this is my financial life. This is my emotional life. This is my academic life. This is my whatever life. Men every aspect of your life get a word the reason why I'll be prosperous because the word of God says A, B, C, D I will have a beautiful marriage regardless of the guy I'm a lady I'm a why? because I have A, B it is a word for me get a word get a word for you have magnified your word above your name Get a word. Be on your feet and let's pray as we bring this session to a close. Wasem ye no quarry mammy oh Amen. When I mean was sem ye no quarry mammy oh sing with me. Amen. Me me was sem ye no quarry mammy oh I cannot hear your voice. Amen. Here I do Here I do what Sam ye no quarry man me o Here I do what Sam ye no quarry man me o Me ye what Sam ye no quarry man me o What's your friend when you're me What Sam ye no quarry man me o Sing 
chapter 1 I'm reading the verse 16 through to the verse 18 it says verse 16 I stop thanking God for you I don't cease to give thanks for you making mention of you now this prayer I want you to pray with intent I don't cease to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayer the next verse that my prayer is that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the father of all glory may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him the next verse that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? We are praying a prayer. Open the eyes of my understanding. Many people, you may be watching me online, but as soon as you pick the word, you want to sleep. Others, the, the word of God is like graphic. What you read, you don't understand. You don't understand. You, 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 I didn't inform now. You are praying. Open the eyes of my understanding. That I will know what is the depth, the width, the riches of our inheritance. In. This, this is just one prayer. Lift up prayer. Pray for the spirit of wisdom and understanding in the knowledge of him. Pray for revelations. When you open the word, you will meet revelations. Pray, 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 pray. This is our last prayer. Lift up prayer. You are praying for yourself. The faithfulness of God is tied to His word. Two mechanisms that will work concerning the faithfulness of God. The name of Jesus. The word of God. The word of God. The word of God. Open the eyes of my understanding. Then I'll behold the wondrous truth of your word. Open the eyes of my understanding. Then I will know what is freely given me of your word. Psalm 119 verse 19 
He said that, open my eyes that I will see the wondrous truth of your Lord. You know, hide your word from me, from a stranger in this land. Pray, 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 pray. Come and manifest our gross. Early men and children do not lie. Oh, men and children are sad. Sabada bablaski pen ne bele bele. Reme me sku folle brandi na. Oh, lenge nera anos gefele. Huli minati a branku fire. The word of God. Open the eyes of my understanding. Izul Adai. Marada da brasku fende menene. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Now, with all due respect and all with all humility, may I instruct you to be on your feet as we partake of the communion. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. For I give unto you what I received from the Lord Himself. First Corinthians, the chapter 11, the verse 23. One of the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread. Can I have one? He took bread. Thank you. And said, he gave thanks. Father, we give thanks on behalf of all who are joining us, who are taking bread, and our brothers and sisters who will take with us. He gave thanks. We give 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 thanks. For putting in our hands mechanisms that will cause the faithfulness to always come and work for us. The Bible says, it says, and he broke it into pieces and said, this is my body which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after the supper saying, this is the new covenant, the cup of the new covenant between God and his people. An arrangement and an agreement confirmed by his blood. Do this to remember me as often as you drink. For everyone and every time that you eat and you drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until, his, until he comes again. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus as we participate and partake in your divinity. Please share. Man of oh, the blood that gives, gives me strength from day to day. Yeah, it will never lose its power. Sing it. The blood that Jesus
Jesus, please take the bread. The Lord bless you. Please pick the, the cup of the wine of his blood. We participate in the, in the blood of Jesus. A covenant to remember is that. Please take the wine. Kindly sing the song. As you lift up your voice in prayer and in thanksgiving to Jesus for the opportunity, bless you, sir. Lift up your voice, people of God. Bless Jesus right now in this house. Can I hear your voice? Give him glory. Give him glory. Give him praise in the entire house. Somebody give God some glory. Give him praise. Give him honor. He's been good. He's been faithful. He's been good. He's been faithful. He's been good. He's been faithful. The week is being faithful. The month is being faithful. The year is being faithful. For God is faithful in the name of Jesus. Please be on your feet and let's sing the song for the last time as we bring our service to a close. And we invite the man of God over this house and our apostle as we lift up your voice and bless Jesus as he comes. Bless you. 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 Can we lift up our voice and thank God for Doctor? I don't know. Please lift up your voice with me. Let's let's thank God for His life. What a blessing! What a blessing! Father, we thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Only you can do this to a man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the life of your man's servant. Thank you for the supply of the spirit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your presence with him. Thank you even for the refreshing. Thank you for his family. Thank you. We bless you, Lord. We honor you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can we please put our hands together? Can we add a shout of praise and acknowledge the Lord? Oh, is this is this is this how you are shouting? Oh, 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 God is good. The Lord is Glory. good. Hallelujah. Can we shout once again? Can you give God a Glory. shout? Shout unto the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We we thank God for what he has done once again. We bless him. Has it been a good time? Has it been a blessing? God bless you so much for being here. Those that connected online, it's an honor to have you. God bless you and the Lord honor you. To all the men and the women of God who were on to minister, God bless you. Thank you. To the teams that have been working, seeing to it that this happens, the Lord sees and the Lord is your reward. God bless everyone, all those that made it here. God bless you. Thank you. You know, I was sharing earlier that at a point I realized that people were seriously tired, seriously tired, but to still have you stay through till now. I know that it can only be God. So God, refresh you. Hallelujah. 
Because of that, tomorrow morning at five, we'll not meet. Hallelujah. 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 It is an hour given that you redeem. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. <laughs> God, God bless you. God bless you. Next month, we'll be back here and we'll be on, God willing, on the 8th and 9th of March. Hallelujah. It's going to be a good time. It's of God. Beautiful time. It's going to be a good time. So, somebody about it, invite someone. Please call on others to join us and let's do this together in honor of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's receive the Lord to close us. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Probably want to say a prayer for the gift of God, the man of God. Hallelujah. I want to pray for him. And I want to make this prayer for him. You know, we have been speaking about God's faithfulness. How that God is faithful. I want to pray that in his life, let this be one of the testimonies of his life. That he is a man that experienced God's faithfulness in fullness. Hallelujah. We, we are praying that like he would experience the fullness of God's faithfulness in every area of his life, in every facet of his life. We are praying for him that God's faithfulness plays out strongly in his life. He reaps every blessing in engaging the faithfulness of God. He walks in God's faithfulness. He sees God's faithfulness all around him, all about him. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I want to lift our voices and make this prayer. In the name of Jesus, it wouldn't be that we came to speak about his faithfulness and then he would not enjoy the faithfulness of God. We are praying that in the name of Jesus, let God's faithfulness, let it be strong over him. Let him experience the faithfulness of God all around him in the name of Jesus. Barada bashele bregadele yade, rada babele vende bregadele yade, yajele bregadele te, rada bashele dele yade bregadele yade, rada bashala davai, garada bashele dele, eveli gadele yade berede beshanda bai, avada laga dala varada bashele dele yade, rada babile. God's faithfulness in preserving and protecting him. God's faithfulness in granting him grace to run his race. God's faithfulness in keeping and preserving his life. God's faithfulness oh, in fulfilling every promise, every word he has spoken over him. God's faithfulness. Oh, Gadan de Lieta, Rada Bashalanai, Avaliga Telene Telia de la Bregadelia, Rada Bashelen Eliade, Reda Vilica Vai, Gaten de Brenda Vende, Reda Besheleme, Imanda Paliata, Arada Gada, Rada Bashele de Lia de la Bregadelia, Rada Bashele Bregadelia, Rada Babili Bregadelia de la Bregadelia, Rada Bashelen. Evelene medolo valiga deliata, rada basha de brega deliata, rada babelia de le brega deliata, le brega deliata, rada basha de deliata, rada babili brega deliata, le brega deliata, rada de le vende brega deliata, le de, rada basha de me le brega deliata, rada babili brega deliata, le brega deliata, rada basha de, rada babili brega deliata, me de. 
faithful God show up in his life on every day in every occasion oh let the faithfulness of God prevail let the faithfulness of God be his testimony in the name of Jesus Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Everyone, last assignment. We are done. Hallelujah. Please, how many of us can attest to the truth that the man of God has been a blessing? Like one way or another. Like he has been a blessing to us. No, you don't have to raise your hand because someone raised his hand. Like, if you can truly attest to the truth that he has been a blessing to you in any way. How many of us? Those online, I can't see your hand, but it's a blessing. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm, 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 I want to give a very important announcement. Hallelujah. And it's a blessing. Hallelujah. I know the man of God is not aware of what I'm coming to say, but... I just believe that it's a blessing. Hallelujah. So, by God's grace, on the 14th of February is the birthday of, of, of the man of God. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, many, many years ago, on the 14th of February, God gave us this gift. Hallelujah. And he has been a great blessing to us. He has been a great blessing to us. So we want to do a few things, you know. Uh, we want to actually honor God for the life of this gift of God given to us. And by reason of that, one of the things we want to do is that we want to stand in prayer for him. Hallelujah. Stand in prayer for him. He has prayed for us many times. Like there are many people here, we might even not know he has prayed for us, but he has. Hallelujah. And, and I believe that it is not too much for us to also stand in prayer for him. Hallelujah. So we want to pray for him, want to dedicate the whole month to pray for him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. And, and so from tomorrow, that's Sunday, from tomorrow, Sunday, at 10 p.m., each day of this month want to come together and then pray for the gift of God. We want to pray for him from tomorrow to the end of the month. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I, I believe that God would by his spirit help us to engage him in prayer for his gifts and then he would watch over every word concerning his life and perform it hallelujah and one other thing you know one of the things that you can attest to about this ministry is that this ministry has has never been a ministry that has laid demands of money on anyone hallelujah like it, it has never done that on any day in any way like burdened anyone with demands of money or finances in any way but we have also come to learn that in as much as we are not being burdened we are not being pushed to give anything in in any way we are encouraged to so that we are blessed and all as much as we are not being coerced or forced to do any of such things it's doesn't also mean that we should just leave things as they are because there's a blessing in, in giving 
And if we don't partake in that, we also don't enjoy the blessing thereof. And I, I know that for the man of God, uh, reading from 1 Corinthians 9, Apostle Paul makes a case there about how that it is just right for the men who are laboring for God to receive the fruit of their labor in, in sharing with us spiritual things. It is not too much that we share with them material things. But Apostle Paul continues to say that he has not, even though he has that right, he has not laid any demand on them in, in that regard. Just because he doesn't want his gospel to have any, any issues of such kind. So, like, so that it doesn't become like he's making demands on the people and taking advantage of them. Even though he, he's at a place where it is right for them to bless him in, in that manner. And from where I stand and from what I know, I know that the man of God identifies with that also. And that is why in many times he has never asked anyone to give money, come and sow seed, whatever. He, he has never done that. But we want to take advantage of this opportunity God has also given us to be blessed. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. We want to take advantage of this to be blessed. So please, if you don't understand it, if you don't, you know, there is nothing within that moves you to identify with what we are saying. Feel free and don't do it. Because whatever we are doing, we are doing it from a place of revelation and understanding. So you will not be blessed if you are doing it just to save name or to save face. You will not be blessed. Hallelujah. And so what we want to do is that we want to give a gift to him. We want to, we want to give a gift to him. So what we are going to do is that the ministry's account details are here. We want to send anything that God lays on your heart to the account. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, it, it looks like you, you were not excited about it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. And so, anything, any amount God lays on your heart to, to give, you want to send it to the account details of the ministry. You can reference it as maybe Eja, my blessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think, I think it's a good reference. Hallelujah. So we can reference it as such. So whatever you have, you want to give, please give it. Praise God. And if by any means you would want, let's say you might, you might say that you might forget. So you'd want someone to remind you. By any means, you'd want someone to remind you. You can pick these same numbers and then you can reach out. Although I want to do this. But please remind me on the 10th of February. Remind me on the 9th of February. So that we know that you want to do this and then you want to be reminded, perhaps. Hallelujah. Praise God. But what we are doing is that we want to, we want to take advantage of this opportunity and then be blessed by God by giving to the gift of God. So family, this, this is what we want to do. We are praying the rest of the month. We are dedicating 10 p.m. to 11 p.m started from tomorrow to pray for him and then whoever the lord lays on your heart to give something please send it to the account details of the ministry and reference it as Ija, my blessing hallelujah praise god oh it's, it's a good place to clap it's a good place to clap hallelujah hallelujah Praise God. So we want to close. So we want to be on our feet as we close.
Father, you've done it again. You've done it again. You have purposed and willed in yourself to gather a people to do as well. Thank you for bringing us together under your feet to bless us. Lord, we give you praise. Right from the preparations, even up until now, you have graced us and you have been faithful to your word. You have been with us and you have shown yourself strong in our midst. Thank you, Lord, for everyone who has waited. Thank you, Lord, for every prayer that has gone into this. Thank you, Lord, for every labor of love. In the name of the Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord, for anyone who stood here to be used by your spirit to deliver to us your word. Anyone who stood here to be used by your spirit to lead us in a time of worship, in a time of praise, to be used by your spirit to minister on, on the keyboard, to minister on the drums, to minister in serving, to minister in various ways. Lord, we give you praise for all these people that you have engineered in them a desire to save in the name of the Lord Jesus thank you for your faithfulness Lord watching over your word and seeing to it that once again a day with you in the edition of February has been a blessing we give you praise we give you glory thank you for the seeds of faith sown in our hearts Thank you, Lord, for your spirit who is a quickening spirit, who is stirring us up onto this reality and truth that indeed you are eternally faithful. Thank you for showing us your ways to engage your faithfulness that will reap of the blessings and the benefits of you being faithful. We pray in the name of Jesus that as we depart from here, Lord, now more than ever, may we go out there engaging your word cause us to abound in thanksgiving in gratitude and in joy in the name of the lord jesus increase our prayer increase our prayer in the name of the lord jesus reveal yourself the more to us in the name of jesus and we pray committing the days ahead of us into your hands we pray that let every day be a testimony of your faithfulness in reality, in its tangibility, even before us. Let heart desires be met, even according to your will. In the name of the Lord Jesus, that as we lift up your name, as we mention your name, and we engage your word, let us see the faithful God step onto the scene and do what he does at best in the name of the lord jesus we commit our man our, your man servant to in, into your hands our gift you have given to us we pray that lord you would watch over him jealously guard and preserve him keep him even in your bosom and lord watch over your word over his life and perform it even by your hand and according to your will and love in the name of the lord jesus we pray for this church the up city international church and we pray your grace for them we pray your blessings over this house in the name of the lord jesus for, for we pray for the leadership and for anyone in this church who have given us the opportunity to have a time of fellowship with you in this place we pray that lord you would bless them abundantly you would watch over your word and honor it let their reward never be denied them in the name of the lord jesus we give you praise we give you glory for those who connected online lord we thank you for their lives and we bless you that lord you have caused them to experience this glorious encounter with you in the name of the Lord Jesus. We give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you, Lord, that you are faithful and you forever remain faithful in Jesus' mighty name. We have prayed with much thanksgiving. Amen. So, family, shall we share the grace together? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, the Lord's goodness and mercy has found us all the days of our lives, even as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Family, this 
is very important. The man of God loves us so much. He believes in us and is very much excited about our future. Please, when you pray, remember to say a prayer for him because he needs it. He needs it. So family, please, we have some food at the back. Some food at the back. You can get one for yourself. And please, we are going to set down. Help us to set down. Help us to set down. Let's all come on board and do this so that in, in a few minutes we'll be done and we'll be out of here.